just kidding. Uh, consumer spending and PCE data on a month over month basis down 0.2% versus down 0.1% expected. So lower on the uh, reading there. U.S. consumer spending month over month again negative 0.2. Uh, versus negative 0.1. This 5% versus 5% coming in line with expectation on the year over year number. We mentioned this yesterday again. Uh, this is the preferred inflation reading for the Fed. So uh, again, if you missed it there, the month over month number 0.2 versus uh, or sorry, negative 0.3 on the real personal consumption number versus negative 0.1. Uh, expected core PCE price index on a month over month basis also in line 0.3 versus 0.3 uh, on that number as we work our way through that PCE price index on the month over month uh, 0.1 to the upside versus a flat reading expected so overall in line on uh, personal consumption and personal prices. So we'll have a look at the overall market on that move. Uh, keep in mind, coming up at 10 o'clock this morning, University of Michigan sentiment coming through as well. That also has an inflation portion to it. So uh, the past couple of months, that University of Michigan number has been a market moving event. A ton of things to talk about for Friday, including uh, chip makers all to the downside off that Intel report, ugly. Unexpected forecast of a loss coming through from INTC dragging down the entire group, NASDAQ under pressure as a result. Tesla, though, trying to save the day here. Back to the upside, at least initially this morning for Tesla. Going to be a fun day here. It's Friday, uh, January 27th. I almost said July. Uh, January 27th, 2023. TraderTV.live starts now. action there for the overall market as we uh, get these numbers digested the both the S&P and the Nasdaq still in negative territory here but uh, an initial move down pops right back to the upside so uh, again if you missed it kind of in line there to a little bit lower uh, for the month over month PCE number year over year though exactly what they were expecting 5% versus 5% yeah and I've been seeing a lot of rumblings lately about the, the Fed really wanting to uh, squeeze out the optimism in this market Brendo with respect to this recent bull run we've been having uh, but if things are coming in line I mean uh, do they divert from the plan that's the question so uh, let, let's watch and see what today brings we got more numbers yeah I mean it's uh, obviously moving in the right direction as far as what they want to see happen going forward again if you missed it 10 a.m. this morning the next uh, time stamp you'll need today. Uh, we'll get that University of Michigan sentiment number at 10 o'clock. And there is another inflation portion to that for a Friday. Good morning, guys. A uh, volatile start here, but still negative overall as the market trying to bounce here a little. Yeah, look, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a pretty exciting day. Um, I'm already in a couple of positions. One, probably mattered when the, we had that PC number come out that's going to be Intel and then the other one maybe it doesn't BuzzFeed up at that top when they got that news yesterday but uh, I'm going to start with uh, the fact that we're over 12,000 on the Nasdaq so let's get that one out of the way like there's going to be some opportunities for some longs above this number and then you know it's not all doom and gloom um, with regards to Intel the best way to sum it up is they could have saved everybody a lot of time and just said worst possible quarter ever that's it. Then we don't have to read articles. We don't have to look at comps and all that other nonsense. Uh, so it's, it's ugly for them. I'll probably take a few shots at this to the short side, kind of off of these, uh, the huge gap down. It's down 10%. So it's actually going to open SSR when the market opens up. Everything about it was bad, and the guide was even worse. And, and the guide, when you start talking about adjusted loss guiding forward, right, and you, want, you know when you do the magic accounting so that your adjusted EPS is uh, magically good? That's, that's essentially what they're saying is going to come out negative. So uh, next quarter, so the full year not looking very good for them. They didn't, they, there's basically, I couldn't find anything that was, uh, uh, that was very positive in the report. However, the last time I said it was a garbage quarter, the last one, it ran the next day. So I do understand that if it starts breaking out the pre-market highs, you get really patient. I just stop out and then look for other opportunities out there. That's you got to be willing to do that or you just completely run over. And I remember when this ran on me uh, after the last quarter, it caught a bit of a bit. Some of the other chip names, this could be an opportunity to pick them up. The market is actually trying to go higher at this moment. So it's not necessarily all doom and gloom when I start here. And uh, I actually just 
got out of BuzzFeed. I'm going to go scalping on this stock uh, very quickly because I wanted to see if it could make that double top breakout. For now, it looks like it wants to fade back in, and I don't think there's support till about 250. So I was looking for the double top break. There's still a chance it can go three, but I wanted to be out in front of three. So I grabbed like 88s, risking to, you know, like 75s, right? Like, so pretty tight stop there. But I do like the chance to bounce off that 250. There's going to be a lot to watch here today, and hopefully, hopefully we get this run right, right with Intel after what happened last earnings. Yeah, I was going to say shout out uh, to you, Jackie Tucker. We talked about that uh, a little bit. And it's pretty sad that if you've been, Intel is at the same price today, Prad, as it was in 1998. So, I mean, if, if you've been invested in this name, you've collected, you know, 4% a year, which is obviously well underperformed the market. And then today, obviously, you don't get great news again. So thanks for bringing that up. I didn't fact check that. But, I mean, we had I had looked back before and was like, you know, like you would have got AMD at a I mean, it wouldn't have been around then, but a dollar, two dollars, and uh, that exploded upside to to be where it is today. Completely different names, and of course, like Neil said, it might be a great opportunity to fade some of the other chips because Intel's PC, right? They're all talking about all PC demand, things like that. I don't know if the short is going to be right today. I feel like if you're not short already, you might have missed the boat. But down 10% here, it's going to be a fun one to trade. Uh, yesterday, Tesla. You know, was fun to trade, not really, uh, but it was fun, but not, not profitable. We'll see today if we can get that profit uh, going here as Tesla. Wow, what a monster that this name is. I was just talking with uh, Randy there the other, just, just this morning, and it was like, oh my God, like Tesla's now up to 163 and still going? Like, it's absolutely insane. And yesterday we had a pretty wild day on it. Uh, oh, darn it, we have some of these... Um, Wix in here, it's not going to show you the true move for Tesla yesterday. Uh, but yeah, wild, wild times there, and uh, we'll see today. So I'm going to be trying to go long and ahead of this 160. Let's just see if it holds that. That's a pretty key level. If Tesla dips down, I want to be a buyer of this one today. But we're not going to go back and forth, back and forth on this. We're just going to, you know, we looked at some charts. You just got to calm down trade it properly, trade it off big levels, and we'll see if we can get Tesla moving around again here today. I mean, it's yesterday was 100 million shares or more than that, 220 million, I think it was, maybe something like that. You already done six or seven million here today for Tesla. Let's see if it wants to continue to climb, uh, hopefully through this 165 area. But again, we're not punching tops or anything. We wrote down on the sticky note that we're gonna try to support 160. Now, obviously, some of these numbers are coming to the upside here. Maybe 160 is a little too low. We'll maybe look at 161. One, but let's analyze this a little bit better as we get open uh, and more to the close. Nice to see that number coming as expected. You can see the market, and we'll have Michael Noss coming up soon. You see the market just going back and forth up, then back down, and kind of retraces right to where we were before the market. So oil up 1.4% today. That's moving around as well. Chevron on, on the move. Exxon seems to always be on the move. There's so many names to trade, man, uh, and we'll hope to give you a couple guides on a few of them. All right, uh, a few people mentioning... What is PC? What is PC? Let's get a look. Uh, for anyone just joining a little bit late there this morning, uh, in line, exactly in line, as Sean was mentioning there, with expectations year over year number 5%, month over month number in line as well, 0.2 versus 0.2. Uh, the consumption or consumer spending number was 0.2 negative versus 0.1, so a little bit more than expected on that. But uh, overall, basically a flat print there. We were just talking a little bit about uh, Tesla as well, I was saying it was uh, at our gym, there's underground parking and in that underground parking, there's, I don't even, I haven't counted, but there's gotta be 10 uh, <laughs> charging stations that they've taken up like individual spots now have charging stations and only EVs can park there. Every single one of them last night was a Tesla. Yeah, they, they dominate the resale market. Anytime that I look for EVs, I, don't, I mean, rarely see Hyundais. I rarely see Volkswagens, always Tesla. But we see a big expansion, too, in our city, at least, uh, where all the public parkings are going to actually have EV charging stations. So you're seeing a big shift towards that, and I'm sure that the consumer picks up with that. Yeah, great move in the right direction, I think, as far as uh, even condos now in Toronto. Uh, they have to, they won't issue a building license unless you include... Uh, one level at least of paid parking that has to now have those EV charging stations included in it. So uh, yeah, good move in the right direction as far as the environment is concerned. Let's talk uh, chips, guys, because it might be the only spot of the market today, hopefully anyways, uh, that could be an issue coming off this Intel report. There might be some places, let's start with uh, maybe some positive 
positive news, or maybe not news, but necessarily like places you can go for kernels of strength, because you know the, you could get dragged down here. And the last, by the way, the last time you know when Intel reported and they had a bad report, it wasn't as if uh, everybody else came out as doom and gloom. I mean, in, in, uh, Nvidia and AMD both caught some pretty decent bottoms. I'm looking at TSM here at 91. I mean, if there's any strength, that's a decent area to find some support in. Um, another name out there, and this is the one we're, you know, looking for longs the last couple of days on was NVIDIA. And NVIDIA still cleanly above that 193, still in front of that support in the midst of a bit of breakout. Now it gets beneath 193 and it's failing this break, to be sure. So you look at that 192 and a half. And uh, yeah, I don't think necessarily this has to be a day where it's only short for the chips, but you're not gonna ignore how bad this report is. It's gonna be dragging them down a little bit. You do have what would traditionally be a pretty bearish, on the daily, a pretty bearish looking candle there for an NVIDIA, but as long as it's above the support level, that 192 and a half, 193, it's got something that it can bounce off of. You know, and that's all I can look forward to. Um, as, far as, as far as Intel goes, you have to remember, and I was, I was actually telling, telling this one to Prad, like, it's a in some ways it's a lot like Oracle was a couple of years ago. Like you have you have a scenario where you have a company which is trying to play a little bit of catch up and spending a lot to do so, right? So a they're catching up in their core business because they've been beat on technology, and then they're trying to compete with TSM on the on, on the fab side and, and Samsung and trying to build that out. I think that's going to be good for them, especially with the whole build in America and the, and the government being behind that. That's a positive for them. However the environment to be drastically catching up when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, technology development and trying to build out your fab gets expensive in a raising rate environment. And that's why their margins are crap and they're getting worse. And it's gonna take some time and they're probably gonna be a little bit better when the Fed eases up. So I think it's in a downward spiral. It doesn't mean the short has to work today. And that's, you know, we break the highs, I get it, fine. I'm taking a shot in this consolidation here short because overall I just think this, I'll go to the daily here. Overall, I think this room, this move has room in the next few, you know, days and weeks, weeks, I guess, because it's Friday today, down to that 25 support area. It doesn't have to go there today, but I think that's kind of where we are headed. But if we break out the pre-market highs, I just want to get out. I might even stop out tighter than that so that I can re-enter or take half out, but this is one I want to go for the shorts in. I think there will be dip buying opportunities and great ones, however, in names like TSM and NVIDIA, uh, the ones I'm looking at. What's up, Tease Trade? Yeah, the People's Traders locked in uh, right now. Um, okay, AMD, look, I think this is a short today and until we get, get above this bottom yesterday. That's 74, 74, 50. I think we're going to try to go short uh, on, well, we are going to go short. I already have the order out there for 73.80. We're just going to try to play the momentum to the downside. The NASDAQ, of course, is down today, but not by much. And AMD is continuing to fall down. So, I, I, you know, I like this into that 74.20. But we're not going to play games. We're going to try to go short here. If it gets out to 74, we're just going to get out and regroup, right? So yesterday, like I said, a little bit caught up in all that nonsense. Uh, but AMD here, even on the 20 minute, there's 74. Goes back a couple days you know so maybe on, on a bad you know release there by Intel we can see AMD get to the downside but like Neil just mentioned there I am I've written down I mean we had Nvidia in 195 for a while we talked about that a couple days ago and we really hit it really good Nvidia was the number one name for me yesterday as well buying these bottoms at 194 and being able to take some advantage of that right and so there's yesterday's trade Here's where we were buying. Unfortunately, our trades aren't in here, but we, we had these moves yesterday. And I just think it's pretty strong. You have a great base here of 194, 193. So for me, it's almost the opposite way around here. I want to take NVIDIA long through 195. It's already through there, but on a big earnings day like today for, for the chips, I don't, let's just let it settle down, right? If we stay above 195, then we'll continue with the long. But for now, that's something that's on my radar. It's not on the sticky note. AMD is on here. But the more and more that I look at this, I really like uh, NVIDIA above 195. It's just got to, it's got to hang out there. You know, it came back in, it touched 194 again. We love the 194 long, uh, but right here, 195 might even be a much better place uh, to put your chips in. So again, chips in NVIDIA. That Pun was, intended. Yeah, that was not, but that was it. Yeah, the thing it was. Is, that I don't wasn't, that I don't, wasn't on purpose? 
No, see, the thing is, I don't know if it just naturally flies <laughs> out now, but like some puns you actually think about. Okay. I, you I, know, I, like if I would say space, for example, if Virgin Galactic was moving higher, I would say, oh, this stock is rocketing up today or something. Or more you like know, it's falling back to us. Right, but I think it's just the word. <laughs> like someone was, what's up to Sky Ferry, uh, used, used the word chips there, and I think that was just on my mind, and now we're talking about it all. Speaking of space, there was a meteor that just uh, passed I, I heard it. Uh, yeah, it was uh, in our atmosphere i don't know if it was yeah, well, that close, it wasn't close enough to burn up yeah but, uh, apparently it was a, gigantic if you had a telescope you could see it like but, nasa um, and all that that's uh, we got to give a lot of respect like boeing and all these guys that are working on you know these mass weapons of destruction to attack these asteroids i mean that's going to be key i feel like coming up at one point in our lifetime neil because wait till we mine them i mean maybe not ours and that's the other thing like i just feel there's so much happening there it all comes back from that movie don't look up that's a great movie. Uh, I, I think that was a really fun one there as well. Oh, that was it. It was the size of a size of a. It was a like a truck. Bus? It was the size of a pickup. Oh, that's not that big, is it? Or maybe bigger than that. Like, but the damage it can do because of the speed it would. It would have broken up. That size, it'll break up in the atmosphere. Oh, okay. So yeah. then, all right, forget about it. It was more than was cool. About those ones that are coming, like that are double the size of Earth or something like well, that. Well, if that happens, like, we got uh, then we got then we got some yeah, more problems. We'll but anyways, I think Nvidia has some strength in it. Let's see if it holds. That's why we're not in it. Like you see how it's dipping around right now. It's just we we need to let the market open up here for me uh, today, and we're just going to be patient. So. So let's be patient off the open. We do know we want Tesla. We do know Microsoft, Apple. But for the chip names, I think the best thing to do is let Intel and all that kind of settle down. Let the market give us the trade. And uh, don't look up, traders. Uh, first segment of the show, as always, guys, brought to you by Surge Trader, where traders can get a funded trading account up to a million dollars and keep 90% of the profits, trade stocks, indices, Forex, crypto, whatever you want. Uh, the program has simple rules, no time limits. Go to searchtrader.com forward slash TTV. Use the promo code TTV. Get 10% off. Shout out to Search Trader. Uh, a couple other noteworthy names here on the earnings front this morning. Uh, Sharif and I were just uh, making the uh, point that they're kind of tied a little bit. Mm -hmm. One's paying for the other one <laughs> in a weird way. Uh, here's AXP up nicely here so far this morning. 17% quarterly revenue increase. Up here, though, this number jumped off the page for me. 413 mm. billion total network volume in three months versus 368 billion expected. Uh, Hasbro downside, though, on the forecast. Yeah, we have a bit of a retail dichotomy uh, brewing here, Brendo. On one, on one end of it, we have Hasbro basically saying demand for their products was down. Consumer spending during the uh, Christmas holiday was down. And at the same time, you have American Express coming out and saying they're seeing record uh, amounts of uh, network traffic as well as uh, you know, money being spent. I think it may have something to do with the fact that people are not spending as much on goods as they are on experiences. And uh, Amex obviously t stands to benefit from that, a traveler's card. Experiences and gas, probably. Making up. <laughs> it would be interesting to see what the percentages are. Uh, Michael Moss is with us, CMT from Trade Ideas, on a Friday to uh, have a discussion as to how we can better our trading, as always. Great to see you, Michael. Welcome to... Good to see um, you. What has been an interesting week? I mean, obviously, next week's going to be just bananas with the Fed, with uh, all the big ones coming through with earnings. But we're going to talk a little bit about something that's kind of been in the back of my mind. I even messaged you yesterday regarding this, and that is on days when maybe the market is a little choppy, maybe the market's kind of flat back and forth, testing highs, testing lows. Is there a way we can dig in and find individual names that are making strong trends, whether it's news-based, whether it's for whatever reason, but is there a way that in a day where the overall market's not really doing a heck of a lot, we can find stocks that are really, really trending well? Yeah, and that's, you know, as traders, that's our goal. You know, we, we want to find stuff that's going from the bottom left to the upper right. And the smoother that that's happening and the the more continuous that that's doing it, the better it's going to be for us. Right? It just makes our life easier as opposed to trying to pick tops and pick bottoms in, in things that are, are more volatile. So, yeah, so Brendan messaged me, and again, you guys can always message me on Twitter. It's just Michael Noss CMT, or you can email in at info at trade-ideas.com, and you can ask for scans like this, and we'll try to figure out what we can get that will work for you. But Brendan basically asked just that. He said, you know, I'm trying to find some, something that's doing a smooth trend intraday 
to kind of play with because if the market's choppy, but I can find a couple trending names, you know, at least I can I can ride those in hopefully the direction of what the overall market will be. And, you know, I thought about it for a bit and I actually thought about the moving average ribbon as a way because when we're talking about this stuff, we have to say, OK, this is the picture that I want, but how do I use mathematics in order to to help the system that's just a computer find those things? So. I just have a picture here of, of what a moving average ribbon is. And it's essentially just a lot of different moving averages from short term to long term. And the idea being just the way a moving average works and the way the mathematic works, if the short term period moving average is over the next period above it, which is over the next period above it, you get these kind of um, these gaps between the moving average. And it's a simple way to use math to say, okay, this thing's trending. If you look at this chart, you can pretty easily see when those moving averages are stacked on top of each other, it's trending up. When they're chopping around sideways, it's kind of basing. And when they're um, all below each other, then it's trending down. So uh, the next slide here is basically a snapshot of some of the moving average scans that we have within trade ideas. So I just basically went through and I said, I want all of the moving averages uh, for Brendan on an intraday basis to be on top of each other and then show me the stuff that's doing the most volume that has that condition. And scanning through it, I found a, a couple pretty good ones. So the next chart here is just Foot Locker yesterday. And you can see the moving averages are kind of on top of each other all throughout the day. But it really gave a good opportunity around about noon Eastern where I have this circle where the moving averages start to kind of uh, coalesce and, and combine, making a really tight, interesting tightening pattern. But they're still on top of each other, so you know the trend is still intact. And then if you just buy the breakout there, you have a nice little trend into the end of the day. So as always, I want to look at this on the daily chart as well. We have LVS here on the next chart. And you can see kind of the exact same pattern. So Las Vegas stand was moving up when we had all these moving averages on top of each other for a very long time. And then they started to kind of combine and we had this tightening pattern and then a breakout of that tightening pattern led for some good continuation. So as always, both the intraday version of the scan and the daily version of the scan, you can reach out to me or, or info at trade-ideas.com. And I've given them the link to that so you can have access to that scan. But I always want to give you guys some examples. So here are some four trades that I found from this scan that actually look pretty nice to me. And the first one is four. You guys were talking about how sometimes these puns just flow. Uh, it seems to be that case here. So four had a nice move from kind of 40 bucks to about 60. Again, you can see the stacking of these moving averages, just a simple way to kind of quantify a trend. And now it's been kind of consolidating sideways around the 60 to 65 area, putting in a bull flag. So if we can get over 65, that's where I'm interested. If we get back below 60, it's probably where I'm wrong. It's time to go. Next one here is Geo. Uh, they're a prison REIT, I guess. This is the one that Michael Burry sold all of his portfolio and invested the whole thing in. I don't know if that's still the case, but I remember reading that. And again, you can see for a while there, from about 8 to 12, it had that fraying of the moving averages. Then they start to come back together, and it's just showing us that it's consolidating here. So this one, you know, it's like you could buy a break of 12, I think, and that would be a little breakout of this area. Uh, next one is DKX, DKS, Dick Sporting Goods. Um, same thing, right? We had a, a strong push up there from about 110 to 130, and now we're consolidating. It seems like 120 is the area on this one. You can see I noted on the chart. Over 120, I'm interested. If it breaks under 120, then it's probably reversing. Time to go. And last but not least is VTYX, which is an interesting one that came up on this scan. Again, the same thing, the moving average splaying or, or or splitting up right now as it's stacking above and just a nice looking little smiley face so again i've said it a number of times on this show i've been trained to buy smiley faces and sell frowny faces so this one looks like it could be something to run to new eyes i like this concept simply because it's so simple and it's so basic in in the sense that you know we're not saying by any means you have to have 17 different moving averages on your charts on a daily basis but just the the principle of that if they are all above or if they are all below price is therefore most likely likely below and on a day when the overall market's not really doing anything kind of choppy makes the overall picture of a move uh much clearer uh great stuff as always michael moss cmt over at trade ideas uh trader tv 20 guys get you uh 20 off yeah. over at trade ideas 
Uh, shout out to uh, Trade Ideas. We'll uh, see Michael in-house coming up next month. Exactly. I think the 15th, 16th. We're looking forward to see it. You. Have a great weekend. You too now. Bye-bye. Yeah, we're definitely looking forward to having Michael in the house, to be sure. We love getting those ideas. I love that you guys are all over it, listening in and learning something. Because, you know, we're going to day trade, but there's always these swing opportunities out yeah. there to learn uh, learn about what you can do. Like, you know, an example, when he's talking about Dix there as a day trader, you know, it's hard to catch those fills on Dix. And ultimately, you know, as a swing stock, when it breaks out from where it is, there's opportunities for you, for you to get it. And I was talking about that with Mobileye, you know, that it's you might not ever be able to find great trades in that on, on an intraday basis because you have to have wider stops, you have to look for longer trends, um, and that can be, that's par for the course. So, you know, thank you to Michael for all of that. However, it's not over yet. But it's weird about it because I, I remember that the worst day I actually had on Intel in the last, I want to say, six months was on earnings day last time. However, I'm trying to learn from that. And so one of the things I just did is to, to sort of trim off some of this, okay, there's all these wicks here. Come to my chart for a second. So there's, there's some weird data stuff happening. Um, and I think in a lot of, it's almost like e-signal has as well. If we come to my charts for a second, guys, you're going to see all these crazy wicks up here. Like the stock is trading at like 27, 25. Like it hasn't actually broken the top. But I took, a, I took some off because I don't want to be all in if it breaks the high before the open. So I want to see what happens. I want to only have a little, bit, a little bit less on board, get an opportunity that if it doesn't break the high, I can get myself a better price at that open. These are weirdly all coming off at the pre-market top here at 27.40, but I'm seeing them all across the board. Like even, you know, like Tesla's got all these weird things and they're actually occurring on other platforms too. So, you know, just make sure when you're looking at a level two, you know where price is actually going off. But I'm going to, I trimmed Intel just so that I'm not dug in too deep here because it can not squeeze off the open because it's not heavily shorted or anything like that. But I guess like, what do you call it? Like a dead cat bounce, like that kind of a thing can come into play. Short covering as well. Although I think the shorts don't have as much, the long-term shorts don't have as much of a reason to cover. Trim, sure. Cover, not necessarily. All right. Oh I yeah, mean, it was still on the. Yeah. It was bullish. I, I'm not. I, we're gonna. I'm gonna turn into a bear. I mean, we didn't really discuss this, but Jinx. I'm gonna turn into a bear just because of, you know, where we are right now. Ain't no free fall Friday, Pratt. You don't worry about that. Uh, but um, right now, we'll just we'll turn it bearish and we'll see what happens. But I do want to give another shout out, of course, to Michael Noss because honestly, the Noss boss. That's a shout out to Pratt. Uh, look, the thing is, there's so many different ways to trade. And whether or not you're going to be like us and, or like me anyways, make 300 trades in a day or something, uh, I'm going to try to calm that down a bit as well. And I, I think that it was, I think Brennan introduced him, you know, it's just, it's adding more weapons to your arsenal, trying to look at different things. Brendan asked for that, what was it, the moving average ribbons there? Like, what the hell? Like, I never heard of some of these things before. And he's always bringing new ideas. So whether or not you'll use those, uh, you know, technical indicators or some of those ideas, it, it's, it's, just, it's just adding more to, to, to what is a very, you know, sometimes complex, not sometimes, all the time, complex technical analysis you know, in this business, and you can't look at too many things, but when you find something that works, you know, stick with it, and then start to alter it, start to fit it towards your personality, your trading style, and whatnot, and I think that's, you know, if you want to catch every, Michael, I think he's been here for a couple of years, I feel like, it's been uh, a while. maybe two, I don't know, a year and a half, two years, every Friday morning, pretty much right on the knot at 8.45, so you can go back and see every single thing that he's said, it's been great, we should almost put like a compilation uh, together, but then, yeah, I think it was the 16th and 17th, I think, for Michael, uh, when he'll be here, so if there are any specific questions that anybody has, uh, of course, save them for the show and or message him right away but we will be going for uh hopefully like a little bit of a segment with michael there uh when he comes in he can get to the desk with brendan and maybe we'll do like an ask michael half hour or like something that. like that uh whether or not we do it on the midday show maybe we'll do both for that i think that'll be awesome so ask michael anything yeah am ask mike it's almost like AMA was perfect for him. and Like Mike, you know, maybe else. someone's already used that. Oh, let's not talk about Like Mike. That's a terrible movie. Well, that was, I mean, Fahad's over there. Let's not insult little Bow Wow or anything no, like let's, that. No, let's, so. let's actually. Uh, all right, let's go uh, over there to Brendan. It's 9 o'clock, and we're getting ready to rock and roll. We might as well go, uh-oh. What did I just get in here right now? Tesla? How did I get into Tesla already? All right, uh, oh, bad wick. All right, I got to get out of Tesla. All right, I'll talk to you in a minute. Oh, the, yeah, you can't have... All right, that's actually a really good idea, guys. And, and he's totally open to, even on Fridays, just normally on Fridays, if you have 
an idea. If you have you know, a question, send it to him on Twitter. He'll put together an entire segment. I'm volunteering him to do this without him knowing, but yeah. trust me, he'll do it. Uh, send him a question, send him an idea. He'll put it together as a segment and then come join us on Friday. I'm going to message him about that. Uh, quickly, here is a look at some upgrades and downgrades for you this morning. Uh, we mentioned some of the payment uh, names. AXP also I saw getting a couple of price target increases off earnings today. There's MasterCard and Visa on this side of the board today. Mobileye we talked about earlier in the week. AAL here as well. Uh, is that a last skin? Airlines? Alaskan, yeah, oops. Yeah, uh, got cut off there a little bit, but uh, Alaskan Airlines, downside. Datadog, uh, I just, I hadn't seen their logo, I think is more. Uh, Ralph Lauren, downside as well on a, on a price target cut. Arun is standing by. We'll bring him in, have a look at the overall market for a Friday coming up in, uh, what is it? An hour, I guess, Arun. We get that University of Michigan sentiment number. It's been a mover the past couple of months. Uh, PCE, however, seems to be positive. Yeah, I mean, we're just going to go from number to number and see whether it helps the current situation and uh, where we're trying to go up. If we can find a number and a reason to go up, we're going to go up, it seems. Uh, we did that the other day, and now we're waiting on the Michigan sentiment. Attached to that sentiment number is going to be the uh, the CIE, uh, or the Consumer Infl Inflation Expectation number as well. That's been consistent at 3%. Let's see if that changes. Uh, it seems to be in line, but for now, uh, let's low, wait till 10 o'clock to figure this out. But at the same time, this market is not giving any indications. I, I'm kind of lost at this point on what to do here because although we are we are in the same resistance area that I, I mentioned yesterday, and the market needs to clear 12.1 on the Nasdaq above here, above 60.65, and stay consistent on the S and P. We seem to be resisting it, but at the same time, we're not going that far away from it. So we we sold off yesterday for a little bit, and then came right back up in the afternoon and now here we are we're in that zone and we're not going up we're not going down we're just waiting it seems so if the market's going to wait we're going to have to wait too because at this point the market can decide whether we're actually going to again this is an infl inflection point right so if we get above and actually start to clear these resistance levels then the oil long side really does open up so i would just wait on that marker if we are going to go up flip side is if there's a decent sell side read that you have up here probably a low risk short if you have one for me, I'm just going to have to wait. It seems like I'm going to end up waiting until 10 o'clock. Maybe that number does get us going in one of these directions. But we do have a couple levels here. 40.15 still in play from yesterday. Uh, on the on the dip, it seems like anywhere below 40.40 seems to be a buy zone. So let's see if this market is going to catch another bid down there. It's going to be a tricky long, though, because of the uh, ceiling that you have up here. The easier trade, of course, is if we get above 12.1, we get above the uh, overnight high or not even overnight yesterday's highs about 40.75 on the S&P, that activates the long, and that's probably the easier trade of the two. So we'll just keep an eye on how this market wants to either break out of either the, one of those bands, initiate either the long to the upside towards 4,100, or possibly a breakdown through 40.15, which would actually confirm the longer term short as well. So it seems, like, seems like this is going to be a waiting uh, period until 10 a.m. there, Brent. Great stuff. Thanks, Arun. Have a great weekend. Let's jump into everything else we need to know heading towards the Open so far this morning. That's the link to the watch list, guys, if you haven't done so. It's very, very easy, and we do all your homework for you. Just hit that link, enter your email, and then it just shows up for you every single day. Top of that list is Tesla. I want to talk about uh, these chip makers, though, first, and then we'll get to Tesla. Uh, there was uh, a couple of price target uh, changes there I just saw on uh, Intel coming through. But uh, Intel, obviously, the one with uh, the earnings report, uh, forecast of a loss, which came out of nowhere, it seems. So not good here. Here's uh, AMD, 2.5% downside. NVIDIA looks about the same. Uh, Qualcomm looks about the same. Pick one. They're all going to be in or around this kind of a, a number. So not great here. Yeah, an interesting story developing on Intel. I'm looking at it from the dividend perspective, guys. They spent $6 billion in 2022 paying out dividends. But analysts um, estimate that they need $20 billion in order to go ahead with some of their expansion. Um, so, you know, they're looking to cut $3 billion. $6 billion will come a long way for that. Do we buy this dip, guys, on some of these? I think, you, look, I think you're going to get, you're going to want to buy some dips on some of the, the un, unaffected names directly. That's not Intel, right? So I like TSM at 91. Um, I like NVIDIA at 193 for a bit of a dip buy. And I, and I acknowledge that you can get a break. Someone's like, yeah, well, won't Intel go up first? Down 10%, it very well might. It might break out 
get back above like this 2740, pull a little squeeze play on, and then get up to like 28. Now, will I short at 28? Yeah. Will I hold this till 28? No. So I want to be short in the range in case it just free falls right away and I want to have a piece of it. But if it breaks a high, I want to re-engage this one at 28. Even if it breaks that, I'd probably take a third swing at this range here. I can't see it above 28.75 today, 28.75 to 80. I just cannot see it above that number. And I will take three shots shorting at it first in front of pre-market highs here, then at $28, and then at 27, sorry, 28.80. That's going to be the other one. I do like... Like, NVIDIA, to me, just has not broken down. Only down 1.5%. The market is only down a half percent, but, you know, kind of holding on to the lows right now. So you want to have some ideas that work to the long side, even if it's going to be a chip name when they're depressed. And, you know, I just, you look at the gap up, you look at it holding this 93 area, and I know if it's beneath here, you got a big gap to fill. So I like the longs to 92.5, but it has to dip down a little bit first. You know, it's trading all the way up at 195, and I think when we saw yesterday in terms of the whipsaw action at the open, you could easily see that. So I want to be very picky about the price that I pick here. If this dumps down, I'm looking at that 193 area with a stop around that 192.5. Um, that's going to be the bottom pick for me. I think that's more likely to get for it to come down there and fill at the open than, than TSM per se. Um, but, you know, if TSM gets to 91, I'm there as well. I... <clears throat> Look, we talked about AMD. AMD's on the sticky note today. I, I think this is a great <laughs> trade. It's below, bless you. It's below the 74 level right now. Um, we, we, I'm pretty confident in shorting some of these names until they break. And I just, I want to be there. I'm, I'm not going to, I traded Intel yesterday. I'll probably trade it again today at some point. But for me, AMD, like we have that 7450 right here, that kind of bottom. So I think it's worth starting a short. You know, I'm going to start at 7380. I'm going to get out at 74. I don't, so like what I've decided to do is use more share. This is why yesterday was bad on Tesla because I'm using more shares now at key levels. So it's just like I want to be patient and I actually want to scalp less into the position and scalp more out of the position, right? So I'm going to have to try to be patient with some of these plays because the problem is like if I go short here 7350 and I already have whatever, a couple hundred shares or whatever it's going to be, then by the time it gets to 74 and then 7450, now you've dug in because I've averaged up and when it breaks, then I get run over and then it's like, oh God, okay, now I got to make it back and then you know, whatever, that's the life of a trader. You know, we, we've all been there and done that. But for me, yesterday, AMD, relatively weak. It's been relatively weak, I feel like, for a couple days now. When it gets going, it gets going, and you can really tell. Like, it's, it's yesterday we had, it's too bad that the trades aren't showing up. Remember we were trying to go long above 75 here, and that just kept on banging its head against VWAP, and then all of a sudden it broke down, and look how easy that short was there in the afternoon, and we had this move all, pretty much all the way down into the close yesterday. Um, so that was a great trade for us, right? And then at 350, you guys remember, uh, the imbalance came out, and that's where everything went back up to the upside. So it was so easy to fall down there yesterday, and it took a while to get going. It couldn't even break above 75. So if Intel's going to start this day as weak, obviously, and so is AMD down two and a half right here, then I think fading this play is the right thing to do. But I don't want to do it here. I want to start it right around here. Let's take out, I mean, again, this 200 period, when it's during the day, I'll respect it a lot more than I would in the pre-market. So I'm just going to try to short starting right here, like 73.80. We'll give it to 74. We'll get out at 74. If we climb into this area, 75-ish, then we... I mean, I will try, unless the market's screaming, which I don't think that's going to happen, I want to try a short around 75. So for me, let's build the short. It had to 74, breaks, we gone. One, one name that I am not shorting today, Nepa, NVIDIA. We're going to go long on NVIDIA through 195. I really like that trade. I would already be long now. But again, just because of the day, let's hold off on that. We have 194.50. Looks really good uh, here as a hold for NVIDIA. I really like these low dips. If, if the market really does tank, like I said, we're going to wait down here for this play. But I like NVIDIA's strength today. It's only down one and a half. The other names are down. I mean, you just saw it. Intel down 10 or 9 or whatever it is now. Um, and AMD down two and, and a half, half, three. 
TSM, Micron, they're all there. But NVIDIA for me only being down one and a half. I like this name. I think you're going to break 200. It could even happen today on Intel strength if Intel rebounds a bit. So let's watch out for NVIDIA today. Let's have it on our radar. It's just, it's not a trade yet. Hopefully it can hang out around 195. Then if we start to see the market go, yesterday we called the market bottom at 11,900. Right, 11,900 was the bottom yesterday. We talked about that early, came right into this area, bounce and then rip. That would have given you that Nvidia long at 193. If something happens like that again today, let's sit there and buy some Nvidia. Just before we go back, uh, ne pas means not. It's, a, it's French. Because uh, I know you say it a lot, and some people ask the question. We're in Canada. Um, I don't know much French, but Sean does. <laughs> Looks it's like the Kembe ne Pombo. Ne pas. Ne pas. Yeah. Not in my house, baby. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's go over to Brendo. Uh, get ready for a whole slew of these little teeny tiny small cap stocks coming through with AI headlines. Here's Remark Holdings, uh, the latest. Thank you, Pratt. Uh, Remark Holdings saying they'll uh, partner up with this Aeon to simplify the delivery of AI driven video analytics. So um, I'm sure this will be a daily thing or every other day, maybe. Let's talk about Tesla. Uh, nothing really new as far as headlines for today for Tesla, but already 1.3% to the upside I saw. 1% uh, now coming in a little bit, but uh, extending this rally from yesterday, it was 11% and heavy, heavy options as well. Yeah, so guys, 3 million options change hands a day, contracts change hands a day. That's up from a, a year ago where it was a million and a half. It's only outpaced by options wagering on the Spider 500 ETF. It, actually um, outpaces the, the queues on the NASDAQ. So uh, one, of the most, uh, one of the most heavily traded. The interest obviously very, very high. It was, I, I saw late in the day, it was like 180 million shares traded or something yesterday on Tesla. So uh, interest still very, very high here up again today, guys. I actually, I actually think it was like 225 or something. I mean, I know yeah, you said late was... in the day. I think it got going there at the end. Wow, uh, you Tesla. Did. Um, all right, I'll just talk about we'll just talk about what happened to me. You saw me get into it early. We had that spike go to the downside. I had a trigger stop order. I wish I still had it, but we got out. I told you, as soon as we got in, we got out. So we lost a couple bucks there. So it's going to show us negative on, or me negative on Tesla. But that's not the trade that we want. We want the 160 long. So if it comes in, we saw it yesterday. Unfortunately, there's all these, some of these wicks aren't even, they're not just on our platform. They're on a lot of platforms this morning. So I don't know what's going on. But yesterday we did hold, uh, let me see if I can, yeah, I still can't get it. Yesterday we held 155, but it's just this 160 top right here that, you know, it, it had a problem breaking it until the end of the day where it kind of got going a little bit up to one, I mean, not really, 160, 50. Just got back to these levels. And that's what I was saying that yesterday, you know, we lost pretty much our whole day on Tesla, um, which was, we didn't lose that much. Like I told you, we lost about 20% of what our shutdown would have been. But, you know, right, right into there, it, it, it got going. It went down. It tested the 50, sorry, the 200 period. Then it kind of just, like, bounced off 155 a couple times. And then you really just got shaken out in here. I felt like it was really hard to trade between 158 and 160 unless you were really just super patient and scalping it. It didn't have the run in it that I thought it would have yesterday. Like, for it to open at 160 and close at 160 yesterday just se seems to me a little fishy. Uh, not fishy, but just it didn't have much trade in it yesterday. So we're going to do the same thing today. If it comes back down to 160, let's just play the range on this name. I don't want to play the range short because I don't know where that, where that top is unless it's at 165 and it's just obvious. But I want to play a dip down in Tesla. So that's why I got triggered in. It's because I was sitting here to get along. And then if I got run over in the open, open I wanted to get out if it did trigger below 159 so let's uh or I think it was 159.50 something like that so we got a bad trigger in there so let's see if we can figure something out now a 160 dip buy for Tesla yesterday's top and bottom uh won't come into play the bottom but hopefully that 160 will be today's bottom coinciding with yesterday's top I like Tesla I don't know where my chart went but it's up 1.3 percent here so I'm going to play that long off 160 and sit on my hands until that comes through. Yeah, that was my mistake yesterday. I mean, Tesla wasn't, I don't, it was a tricky long for just about anybody. Well, I'm looking at the, ah, that's where my wrong trade ideas went. I wanted to come here uh, and just have a quick look because Tesla, 
on the daily split adjusted. Like it gets back. I think there's going to be some resistance around like the 170, 175. But it feels like it wants to get there. Like you, you look at this, you look at this impressive dip that we've had, and I think there's some room for it to come even higher than that. So, you know, I want to give it a chance. However, chasing the long and chasing the breakout, I'm not going to do it. You know, yesterday I liked 156 for a dip, and I was buying in front of it, and way too far in front of it. So, you know, I. One of the first things I did when I came in was sort of put that bid in there. Uh, watch, it broke out, and I'm like, crap, that was too early. It was right at 7 a.m. It took that 160. If it comes back down there, I'm going to get it. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Sean. I only want to buy the dip, and I'm trying not to chase Tesla, even if I think there's more room to go to the upside. I just want to go one other name here because it's not the only EV name in the world. Um, Lucid, which is still NASDAQ. Neil, it's still a NASDAQ stock. I always do this. It's crazy. No, no, it changed. It changed overnight. I know. It's like, yeah, they never change it. Uh, that $9 level on Lucid is still pretty valid. I actually didn't pay for any locates today, so I have to remember to go do that if I want to go short. But Lucid didn't really follow Tesla strongly back into the upside, but it's got this nice $9 level, which is sitting up here. And I think if it breaks it, it's been trying to go off this price. Ooh, the daily's messed up. But there's room to 10. The 50 period looms at that $10 level. If Tesla really starts going, I can see this at least breaking 9 and getting to the 30 level, which sets up a pretty good sort of risk to reward trade, 9 to 10, 20s, and 30s. Scalp some of that out in that range. So Lucid's the other one I'm watching. The key thing about taking a break on Lucid is it's easy to get like 1s and 2s long. And if you don't like it, just get out at like 95 or 96. And it's not like Tesla where it could just float ten a dollar on you lucid's gonna let you out pretty easily in that range so i do like the break on lucid at nine that's just one of those even dollar trades uh let's talk about buzzfeed uh we we're just discussing some uh, ai news once again this morning nothing new uh when it comes to buzzfeed but uh, up here anyways regardless uh 30 percent call it at this point we came up to three dollars which was that high uh we got to yesterday or thereabouts 290 uh, for BZFD, if you missed it late in the day yesterday, or I guess it was during the midday, they came out and said they're going to use ChatGPT to create content uh, for their site. And that was after 10 million uh, mm -hmm. last year in uh, funding came through from Meta to create content and move creators of content to uh, Instagram and Facebook. One question comes to mind, why doesn't Meta just use a ChatGPT? No, I'm Tongue in cheek, of course, I'm sure it's how you use it. I'm looking at the chart here, guys, and I'm seeing a nice 250 support level. Uh, we, we had some consolidation there in the pre-market. We also had that as a resistance level yesterday. Yeah, I broke it, but it immediately retraced. So I'm looking for myself here at either short below VWAP or a dip off 250, Brendo. There's a cost cutting aspect to this, obviously, for them, but it's a free service. Anyone can use it. Is that worth whatever it was yesterday, more than 100% to the upside? I mean, nothing's worth it on these stocks, right? Probably I mean, not. But does that ma is, does that matter? Is the question, and, and the answer is no. And then might yeah, exactly for a stock like this, it probably doesn't matter. I think this is probably overstated how much it's going to affect. I thought the meta news is bigger news than the chat GPT news. Maybe we're wrong. But I think it, customization for you know things like quizzes and whatnot, I think is definitely something uh, that for a while it can be a bit of an advantage for them. But af but after a while, anybody's using this service. I don't think the it's not going to be free, and it's certainly you know. That's going to evolve how people use ChatGPT, and it's going to evolve very quickly. Uh, but for now, I do still like the notion of the long here, and it's not... I know I said 250, that, you know, we're getting a lot of dark pool wicks down here, the late reporting prints that Sean was talking about. So it actually hasn't gone back down. Otherwise, I think I would have been trying to play this bounce off the 250 level. I did try to swing for the breakout. It couldn't get past three. I don't want to be taking a three break. I'd rather try to be in something long if it breaks three, already be in a position. So that might just be the dip off of 250. In terms of where it is in the daily, you got to go pretty far back to find levels if this will even give it to me there you go so like you're kind of already clearing out of all of the key sort of resistance once you got past two and a quarter and that 250 level and that's why i think if it breaks three you got room into the mid threes there so i think there's room for this to go before you get into some bag holder levels and i want to be trying to get longs off that 250 into three break instead of trying to get that absolute top break after the open i find i don't like top breaks on these names after the open when I think it's already gone a bit far. Hot break. Yeah, no, look, uh, BuzzFeed, like I said, 
it's it, it's rare to make money on these names like day after day after day. So you got to make sure that you trade it when the volume is there. And I just feel like, I mean, it's going to be there again today. But like you guys were talking about in the chat, this AI stuff, honestly, it's just people are talking about it now because it's a public free thing. This chat uh, GPT. Um, and I just don't, I mean, it's been around forever. I would assume that a lot of these, you know, BuzzFeed or even ESPN, like some of these other uh, writers of articles or ideas and things like that, uh, content creators, I guess is the word I'm looking for, now just have a free way of using it. But I feel like a lot of these major companies uh, have probably been using it for years and probably have a much better program than that uh, available to them as well. So I don't really know if, if that story is going to last for very long. I wouldn't be long BuzzFeed uh, unless it was a swing trade and, I, and then I'd get out if, if it did break that $2 to the downside and get rid of it. I, I look at Meta today a little bit stronger than the market but still you know in the pocket and honestly this one to me looks like it may want to fall down. I mean we just we've had here's the 20 minute chart we're up here at 147 it's it's just chilling out like if it doesn't break this 147.50, then I would think on a negative day today, which you know we're trying to break lower uh, on the Nasdaq as well right now. I wonder about this 146 holding. This is the 200 period on a three minute. It's all you know mashed up here on a one minute chart. So I'm just going to spread this out a little bit. You're right here at 146. It's actually 145.75. It's that yesterday. Yesterday's bottoms are at the open, but we held that 146. I just wonder if we break it down. This has nothing to do with BuzzFeed whatsoever. It's just a meta trade. So there's yesterday's top, 146. There's it held 146, and it's 145.75. So I would think if you're going to go long 146 there, you got to get out, and I would think about a short through that 145.75 area there on meta. So although I only have one short idea written on here, AMD, I'm actually thinking about pushing this short on meta. It's just I don't want to do it right off the open again because... I could see, we, we, how many days have we seen Meta or any of these names just kind of off the open? Like, here's yesterday's open. So, you know, like 140, 143.50 all the way to 146, like $2.50 instantly, um, and then within five minutes comes right back in and gives you that bottom again. So let's see if Meta wants to get cute with that. Like, I could see it breaking 146, finding a bottom here somewhere around 145. If it gets into 144, then we buy it. But I just can see Meta breaking, and there's the level right here on a one minute. I could see this getting taken out on the downside. And if it does, then I think you want to buy it back around 144, which would be $1.50, $1.80 in the money. So let's look at Meta on a break lower. Uh, I like that play. All right, if you were with us late in the day yesterday, it was a pretty exciting move in Bed Bath & Beyond to the downside. They came out with uh, this statement uh, talking about a whole bunch of cost-cutting measures that they're going to attempt after they said basically they don't have enough money to pay current credit obligations. Uh, the last sentence here, worth noting though, uh, these measures may not be successful. <laughs> so they're more or less saying they're they're in trouble. Uh, this was the huge move to the downside that we saw yesterday. It's not really doing much here, guys. Actually supporting uh, 250, but uh, not good for BBBY. Yeah, Brendo, and they ba blame some of their creditors actually for some of their demise, basically saying when they ran into trouble, creditors tightened limits, asked for earlier payments, and they weren't able to stock their shelves and kind of boost their way out of this uh, through the Christmas and, and the holiday season. Brendo, they owe 500 million, 550 million to J.P. Morgan and 375 to a bank called Sixth Street, and 1.2 billion dollars in unsecured notes. Brendo. And it was J.P. Morgan, if you remember, that came out almost immediately after that statement, saying, uh, or with a warning, essentially a credit warning on them, saying they missed the payment. So uh, we'll see what happens with uh, Bed Bath and Beyond today. Uh, Sean was just mentioning you got to trade these things when the volume is there and the volatility is there. Neither seem to be present in Bed Bath & Beyond so far this morning. No. You know, obviously, look, the move yesterday was, it was pretty spectacular. I, I, I get it. It's not fun for everybody because if you're long the stock, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing enjoyable about that experience. But as a day trader, hey, man, those are the, the things stock. that you look forward to. And it was just an unbelievable opportunity to grab some shorts in there. You got a flat bottom break, which is setting up at 250. And it's SSR, given how far it was down, shorts are restricted. So if it breaks out of the range of the downside, do I want the short? Sure. You know, when that level breaks, I'll try to be short. However, there's no guarantee for Phil because you need an uptick in order to hit the bid to go short. 
So when it goes through that level, there's no guarantee what, where you're able to get in or if you're able to get in. Sometimes it does that. It'll break a level like that. That's my 15 minutes so you can see a bit better, but this is what it looks like on a three minute. It's just an absolute wall at 250. So yeah, do I want the flat bottom break? Yes. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to touch it if it goes to the upside until it gets closer to three. I might consider shorting that. But you have to remember what happened to Revlon and I think a few others in a similar situation where you did find some strength, you know, and you got a bit of a, like a short covering squeeze rally. And if that happens, I want to be there for it. So you just can't get too stubborn about these. Uh, just an update. I started scalping Intel, so getting short in front of this 40 level. I can't do anything about these Lake Dark Pool pricks, uh, prints. I just, um, these late dark pool prints. So I started scalping it, like getting some in the mid 30s and getting out in front of like 10s. And I'll try to do that into the open, just trying to be a little more nimble with this trade. Yeah, but I'm, I'm there for the 250 break. Hopefully we get a fill if it breaks on Bed Bath & Beyond. Yeah, we shorted Bed Bath & Beyond yesterday. It was a great trade. And like I said, just make sure that you're there when the volume is there. That's, that's the key. I've paid for shorts on that. We'll look to see. I'm just, honestly, I probably don't trade Bed Bath & Beyond until I get an update from Brendan or if it hits one of our trade idea scanners that it's kind of going parabolic or there's a volume spike in Bed Bath & Beyond. So, excuse me, for me, I'm going to stay away from that uh, as we go. I was just saying to Fahad there that it's like, we're not coughing. It's like we're sneezing. And I know that we're making some changes around it's here. It's my bad. And I'm just wondering, <laughs> no, it's not your bad. Fahad said he's sneezing more. I've been, yeah. I warned people of sneezes. Because remember yesterday, Mark and uh, Rob, they're putting up all these different TVs and many different things around here. So I'm just wondering if some of the dust uh, from above maybe okay, first falling of all, down. And, and, the and cleaners to... are not dusting up there. You know that. That's so. what I'm saying. So I just feel like there's just some more... When they were doing the green screen and had the tarp up, yeah. I, it was, it was, that was a problem. Was yes, like, we do need a HEPA filter. A what? Let's go. Uh, it's just a filter there. Uh, it's just like one of those. Um, should I know what that air. is already? Yeah, I don't know if you should know if, if you should or not. Uh, nice move up right here. What the hell? Something's happened with Meta. Uh, Meta just went up four dollars straight up. In the, oh, wow, Meta is ripping right now. News. News. One fifty, one fifty-two. Meta. There has to be news here about Meta. Meta just goes one forty-seven to one fifty-two and absolutely ripping. Use of AI for ad targeting. Okay, I was gonna say, is it bye-bye TikTok? But use of AI for ad targeting. Meta now, we are just looking at it. It's on the radar. We talked about that. Some of those shorts, not anymore. It's a nice long year for Meta as it's starting to rip up. Yeah, Ramp City here. I just I saw one tweet. It says Meta ramps up for use of AI in ad targeting. You mean they're not doing that already? Is that what we're supposed to believe? That that they're not doing that already? I mean, I liked it for the longs, so I don't mind. I don't mind playing longs on Meta today, but I find it hard to believe that that's all that should matter. We should be looking at some sympathy plays here. What could move a little bit late on this? Uh, is Snapchat through ten dollars. Is Snapchat through ten dollars? Yes, Snapchat's already through ten. Okay, never mind. I, mean, I just knew I liked the 10 on Snapchat. This might give an opportunity here where I can get a late play here at a reasonable price instead of chasing Meta too far. So if I can get Snap in the 20s off the $10 level, that was a little more reasonable than chasing 150 whatever that I'm seeing on Meta. Yeah, just reading through this. There's a Wall Street Journal uh, reporting this, guys. Uh, there's some other numbers coming out uh, with regards to the privacy changes that Apple made in Q4 of last year as well, hitting uh, some numbers for Meta. But who cares, because they're using AI, so that's all that matters apparently today. Uh, yeah, nice look for Meta back to the upside. I'll keep an eye out for that actual posting from, again, it's the Wall Street Journal reporting that. Uh, here's CRM, we'll wrap up the board here quickly. Uh, new board members appointed, there was rumblings of this yesterday. Elliott Management, remember earlier in the week, taking a huge stake in CRM. They come through this morning with three new board members. So this thing was super strong yesterday, all day long. In fact, closing at day highs here for yeah. Salesforce. Looks like a proxy fight is in the works, Brendo. Um, like you said, um, Salesforce adding the chief uh, financial chief of MasterCard as well as uh, uh, the v value uh, value app capital chief as well as the former executive chief of Carnival. So some big names thrown into that board mix. Guys. Yeah, CRM, not doing a lot right now, but maybe we put it on a, uh, a watch list today, guys. See if we get to move through that high from yesterday. Yeah, like 20 months had a set. Maybe I put that one on ice for you there, um, Salazar. Uh, but so CRM, 200 period moving average, sits at 167.50. 170 is obviously a big level. I think it's probably, if the market doesn't turn green today, I'm not sure CRM can get through that. Here. But uh, um, this is weird because I thought we were going upside just now. And I'm not, I'm not complaining about it, but Intel just keeps on giving this trade over and over. So I'm going to keep ringing the register here. I acknowledge it could go up, but that just dropped back down to 27. And I know Meta is definitely the big piece of news here. It just rejected 150. That's why I didn't want to chase this. 
Like, come on, like, really? We know they're using, of course they're using AI for targeted advertising. Like, come on. I do still think it's a long today, though. You know, and now you're above this 147 breakout or 147 half breakout. That's where I want to try to buy the dips and just go for the long shot here yeah. uh, on Meta. And I was saying Snapchat as well. It was an opportunity there, but you know, you you kind of want it off that $10 level. It's already starting to come back in here. I might just play Meta because it's a better stock. And I don't want to forget one name. We didn't talk about this, but we mentioned this one minute, yesterday. One minute. Uh, Amazon 100. Uh, so Amazon's at 99.60 yes, and a 100 that. break. Oh, he's wicks on the We're chart. We're already short AMD. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, no, like I was going to say 100, look, 100 break, Amazon. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, with only, I saw Katrine here, so we got a new bell ringer. Let's go uh, today. Thanks for coming out uh, for that, Katrine. We got short AMD right now. That's exactly what we wanted at 74. We talked about that. We don't like to get in too early, but it's almost the open right now. Short AMD, long Apple right now. Uh, let's see if both of those trades can come in. We're already 10 cents in the money, but let, let's wait. Apple, we'll see if it can go back to the upside as well. As we're getting ready to rock and roll, and it's funny because Neil and I said yesterday, sitting right here, I said, now anybody that releases anything with the word AI in it, and it's going to go parabolic. It's like back in the day when we had Long Island Ice Tea, went turned into Long Island Blockchain, blockchain. Company, uh, and the next thing you knew, uh, the, the stock was up like 800%. So that's going to be happening. Get used to it. Um, and, you know, if you didn't think they were using AI before, then you're in the clouds. Okay, uh, right now, here we go. It's only five, four... She, she can't reach that. Two jump, and one. Jump. Ah, there we go. There Thank we you. Go. We open. Let's go. AMD right now trying to get through. Uh, there it is. Yes. Nice little take right there. We'll spin that. Alert, alert, alert. Apple to the upside as well. We running this right here. Let's go. Apple. Nice upside move to Apple to 155. We take 50 cents on Apple. We're 50 cents in the money on Apple. And we're 50 cents in the money on AMD. So let's keep this party going. Yeah, we're right. At, oh, my God. I got the lucid break at 2. Sorry, at 9, at 9.02s. I just got that. But 100 is right here on Amazon. Intel's back Jeez. in the money, so I don't really have to worry about that. But the big level brewing here at that Amazon 100 level should be huge. Tesla's starting to come back in, so that 160 could come into play really quickly. As always, Jeez, I, tried to get I am that. not going to mess around. I'm going to scalp immediately out of half of a 100 break. Pay myself because remember the rug pull that they did on the breakouts yesterday. I don't want to have that same thing happen to me. So if we grab some profit there. If I see 101s or anywhere close to it, I'm going to get another leg out there on Amazon. But that break so far working pretty nicely. Uh, I'm going to go to Lucid because I got the break at 9 even. The key thing about a Lucid break is I can throw a nice little stop. It's not going to go too crazy. I shouldn't be risking more than 10 pennies on that Lucid break. And to get my stop order in because I didn't have it in already. Apple, dollar in the money. Let's go. Uh, we just took that one. Nice little trade there for Apple. We got out some 83s right here. Let's see if we can go a little bit higher uh, right now on Apple. Bye-bye, AMD. Uh, that touched it, and then it went back to the downside. So let's see if it will continue. I feel like taking some profit again here on AMD uh, as it's just bouncing out. We, we have some shares. Let's do that. Um, this is why I said, you know, take a little bit more shares on your trades and just calm down. Make sure you can grab them. I didn't have the Amazon. Great thing that Neil had that because that's a trigger that I should have had as well. Uh, but I didn't have that up for me on Amazon. So I had to get in a little bit late. Small amount of shares right now. Let's see if it does hold that hundy. Um, and then we'll just move on from there. So that, that's going to be that trade there for Amazon. Apple's still trying to go. I like this trade. We turned it into a bear. But look at this market right now. It is booming. Starting to metro booming to the upside right here. Um, Apple going. Amazon going. AMD in a little bit of trouble, but let's get another piece out then in the 70s. So, <coughs> excuse me, we'll hold on to Apple and AMD and Amazon as I think we got a great start here to the morning, much different than yesterday as we were battling Tesla. Oh, new trade alert here, guys. <coughs> I, I said excuse this me. in the chat, but I forgot to mention this one, and this is on, that's on me. Uh, Pinduo Duo was super strong yesterday's trade. You can see all the way up to 105, rejected 105. I'm going to quickly explain this as fast as I can here. Uh, on the daily chart, Big monster levels from 2021 around that 100 in terms of resistance, 105 and 110. It rejected 105 yesterday, break down at 104 here. I'm into the short thinking it's a monstrous gap to be filled here on PDD to said downside. So we'll give it back to like 104 uh, 50s and then see if it can't continue to flush. Meta, we picked up the long on the dip. It's not going to look like a dip buy on the 15-minute chart, but it is a dip buy uh, on the way back in when we pull up to three. I just want to see this one whole 147 half and off to the race. I think we're along today on Meta, and we're already ringing the register as it just bounced. I mean, that, that's, that's almost like a quick dollar there yeah, on Meta. Yeah. I'm going to continue to buy the dip. So I'm going to get back on this bid and rinse and repeat. Yeah, huge moves upside there. We got stopped out of our AMD, but honestly, man, 
Like, when we're writing down on the sticky note today, if you're not part of Sticky Note Nation, cool, fine. I, I'm down with that. You don't have to be. But we have 143 long written on here for Apple. I mean, it just went up huge. Uh, so we're, we're really happy with that. Let's take advantage as the market is blasting here. Let's get something out there at 10 again uh, and then hold for the dream. So in, out, 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 out. We still have 20% of this name. Uh, AMD did fail there, though, at 74. So this was a name that we got in and out of. We said we would do that pretty quick. This is why we take profit, right? Um, now it's booming. Though now that now now it's going to the upside here uh, with AMD. So again, out some, out the rest, and that's that, right? So it's a flat trade for us on AMD. Wish we had a little bit more to, to talk about on that one. Amazon, nice move to the upside. I feel like we obviously we missed that break of 100. That was a great call. Um, we're gonna get some out right there at 69. So we'll take that in uh, right now for that trade. Just a smooth 40 cents on that to start. Let's see if it can continue to go up. We do like that name. Everything else we had on here, Tesla long, Apple long, Microsoft long. Um, they're all, we'll, we'll have to check them out. Let's check out Google, uh, which has been relatively weak. Intel broke 27. Oh, and is that to the upside or to the down? no, downside? No, downside. All right, how high did it get up there? It today? got 2740s, but okay. it it then did a bit of a fail. It's weird because I just hit arrows down and, and I'm showing you guys Amazon. Sorry, guys. Uh, Amazon did get out in front of 101. I still have some long, but I told you I'd scalp some out in front of 101. Uh, Intel, that's heading to the... Now I got this stupid wick here, too. Uh, Intel headed toward the lows. I'm trying to rinse and repeat off that uh, the 2740 pre-market highs. I'll take another leg out in front of the actual low of the day and try to hold on for dodge. It's this and Pinduo Duo that I like to the short side for the gap fill. Uh, Lucid is starting to work on that 9 break, but I have not taken anything out. I'll get some out in front of 10s, just a little bit of a scalp trade. Uh, we'll go 10, 20, 30 on the way to yesterday's tops on Intel. So we're going to get another leg out yeah. there in front of 20s. Just want to make sure that you're paying yourself on the way to the upside on those moves. Two shorts, one working. I guess PDD decided it wanted to be too strong. It just wicked me out. I don't want to give Pinduo do a full dollar just because it was so strong yesterday. So I tried the breakdown trade. It might still reject 105. I can make that trade uh, a little bit later if I have to. I got a reload on Meta. So we got 149s there. I was able to reload, so 148. I'm just going to go right back in front of the offer in 149. Rinse and repeat. If it wants to give me the buck, I want to stay net long on Meta while paying myself out inside of this range. So unlike yesterday where I was, oh yeah, let's just hold on to, Tesla and Nvidia are just gonna go up forever. Let's just hold on to them and not take any profits. That turned out to be an obvious fail. Today, we're not gonna make that mistake. No, exactly. And uh, that's why we're getting in and out of some of these trades as fast as we can and making sure that we are able to capture some kind of profit on this. Um, just quickly, we're gonna let our Amazon ride a little bit. Apple's already cruising. We only still have 20% left of that one. But look at AMD. If Neil's going to, I mean, he talked about, that's why I asked him about Intel there. It's like, it's dying. If, if it's dying right now, I'm going to just try to hold on to AMD until it breaks that top again. So AMD flushed up upside there. I mean, flushed, I guess it went the other way. Uh, upside. So let's just wait to see if it kind of got going just because we know AMD can be strong. And like I said, you can really tell when AMD starts to sort of act a little bit different than, than, than what you're expecting, right? Um, it can really get ramped up, and it's about tape reading on this name. So I am going to try to watch this. If it really gets going, you know, and takes that out, then we'll, you know, we'll try to respect that. But for right now, we just shorted 7408, and I want to hold this. So I'm going to bid some down here at VWAP. Hopefully I'm there right now. Uh, cancel some other orders. I have too many orders from before still uh, on this. So there it is. Yes, sir. That's the order that we wanted. We get an 80 fill right there. So that's a nice trade, man. We're at the highest spot we've been at all day right now. Uh, holding on to this one, holding on. Amazon, though, by the way, Neil, just flushing back down a little bit. I, I don't might. know if you're out of it yet, but um, I'm it just, just I'm holding, noticing I'm holding because it, it's a red name for us right there. Okay, uh, AMD there again. And there's Amazon. We just loaded that a little, not loaded it, but got that 100 break again for Amazon. Let's see what it wants to do. And let's go over to Brandon quickly. Uh, AXP, just a uh, huge volume spike there. I was just double checking on the call for this. It was 8.30 this morning, so uh, should be wrapped up if not wrapping up but a huge volume spike at the highs there for axp yeah that's and we knew that we knew the credit card names were coming in today and i like that report and uh i'm just going to show you visa here because ramp city like this is on the Rack midst of city. A, yeah this is breaking out in a big way um already have enough longs i don't know that i will add this but 230 on a dip looks pretty good to me you're just absolutely smashing on the on the daily chart here and you're probably going every five dollars so 
on that theory, like 230 would make sense for a bit of a dip buy. Uh, why didn't I get, I didn't get an Amazon fill down there. I must not have been, that sucks. So I missed the dip on Amazon at 100. I mean, it's right here still. Yeah, it's still here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick some up. I, I, I kind of want it right at 100, and I guess I might have had it beneath that level. I'll try to grab some tens if we can catch them. Uh, Meta looking pretty good, not really concerned about that. Uh, Intel is still, still beneath that 27 level, so. I'm looking for a pop to be able to get back into some shorts here. I may, might go for that 27 level. So just in the 90s, I'll go for the short on Intel. I just made sure I got my TSM bids in because I do think that one can be good. Well, I mean, if Bed Bath & Beyond does something, I'll show it to you right now because I know some people are probably like, oh, what's going on with that stock? Not a, not a heck of a lot. It broke 250 and then slammed right back to the upside. So relieve some pressure down there. I think if it takes it a second time, that gets pretty interesting. So if it gets back beneath that 250 a second time, we'll have to go for it. But you couldn't get the fill because it was SSR the first time it broke, and then it didn't follow, follow through uh, beneath that level. All right, we're uh, just um, taking advantage of that. So we're going to go again. We'll spin it money, now because, money, yeah, this money, is what we're putting money, in our pocket money, today. So let's spin it. Money, uh, money. Right there, Amazon. We picked that up at 100 bucks. We just got out $100.50. So... Uh, first out there, 35, next out 50, as we were watching it sort of dance a little bit there at that 50 level. Let's see if it still takes it out, but we're only now holding half of what we, a little bit less than half of what we had right there. So good out so far on that name. AMD retraced back upside again. So yeah, I got to very much watch out for this name here. Uh, AMD doesn't seem like it wants to continue uh, its march lower. So we'll try another average in here, but watch out for that break of that top. We're getting out if it takes down. Uh, 7430. Uh, we're not, like I said, I don't, I don't need to be in every single name again here today, as you're seeing me only in three. And I mean, if you're, if you're looking at a sticky note name right here, this is already a dollar fifty in the money. Apple 143 is written right on here. We talked about that thanks to Ash Took, I believe, in the chat as well. That made me highlight that um, for everybody. So here we go. AMD is at that stopping point. Let's go over to Brendan. AI is going to be a thing, guys. Why not just buy? AI. 4%. Uh, heavy volume to the upside here. Not seeing anything on C3 AI. I'm paying for locates on that. I'm going to go. I'm, there, there is going to be a short on C3 AI today. Yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah that's for sure. I mean, but I'm not, you know, like we have enough. I'm, you want to stick to your plan. Yep. It's, it's 940. It's a little bit too early to just throw a name out there. It's going nuts. But I, don't, I do not see that continuing on C3 AI just because everyone goes yada, yada, yada AI. We remember yada, yada, yada blockchain. Those stocks all came back to the downside. And the same thing happened with um, the cannabis names. So, you know, at some point, I'm going to look for a fade there. Uh, I want to get back into some Lucid on this dip. It's coming back into $9. So I'm going to see if I can. These wicks are a little bit confusing because you're seeing late dark pool wicks. They're not necessarily breaking these prices and printing down there. I know it's frustrating, but for whatever reason, there's a lot of late reporting dark pool prints today. So I'm going to get out in front of that bid on Lucid, see if I can get a quick ad. I don't want to ignore. I know a lot of people are looking at the EV names. NEO is trying to break out again. Uh, it, tried, it tried to break out from these levels yesterday. Just remember, huge overhead resistance at 1250. That's the level I'd be more interested in. Uh, it needs to get through 1250 before it gets exciting. And Tesla, patience, patience, patience. Sometimes it pays, sometimes it doesn't. Still waiting at 160. I want that dip to 160. It's not even getting close to it. It just hit 165. If it doesn't hold 165, I, I think we can get a move all the way back into that 160 level. But I don't want to chase this move at all on Tesla. All right, let's buy, so there it is again. So again, we were able to take some profit on, I mean, we, it's just I'm watching AMD here, so that's why I keep talking about it. I, we, we, you know, we got out, so that was it. Like, look, we noticed again, look, when, remember I talked about it? When it starts to get ramped up, it really starts to go like crazy. So we got a piece out at 74.05, um, and then there's the average in and there's the out. So uh, AMD is not a short, we talked about that. Um, that we'll be able to watch it. If it dips back down now, I want to get long. Remember I said 195 for NVIDIA? Well, checks notes, NVIDIA, 195. Uh, now it's up to 197.50 and still going. So what a monster NVIDIA is going to be today. And looks like it wants to keep going. If we get any dips back into this area, man, we are buying uh, AMD for sure and NVIDIA. So um, we'll watch out for that if it does come through again one more time. Um, Amazon, you know, well cooking here. Tesla, just to have a quick look back. I was trying to be patient with this, and I still am being patient. We don't have a trade on it today. Uh, that's just an in and out on, on a, a trigger. But, Whoa. you know, 160, oh, maybe it is 162 uh, instead of 160. So, uh, well, what's blowing up here? You just said, Intel. Whoa, uh, Intel just made a bit of a move there. You know Upside, what, I'm gonna, probably? 
I'm gonna relieve some pressure on Intel. Like I just, I just re-entered the trade off 27s and I just got some 99s. I'm taking those shares out immediately. Uh, I'm still, I was still in a portion of it from the 40 level, but so it'll show my now price is 99. But I just took a bunch out when I saw that big spike up to 10s because the market's a bit strong. I might exit it all together and just look for the next move up. So I just got a bunch out. I, I'm going to get rid of this wick because it's skewing the chart up. But that was a, that was a move of like 20 pennies in one handle. Uh, in one little candle, and then I just got out. Some for a 10, pen, 10 cent hit, some essentially flat, but that was a very strong move. I kind of favor the longs at this particular point, so let's not fight Intel too much there. Uh, I was able to get a reload in Amazon, however, so I just finally got like a bit of, and it's not at 100 where we got the original break, but if it can start floating this 50 to 60 cent range, we'll just start scalping it inside of the range and try to hold a net long. You guys know the drill at the open. You want to pay yourself out, but you don't want to get too overly aggressive buying dips when things start to come back in. Uh, not to ignore this crazy move that's happening uh, over in, you know, the, not the chip name, sorry, uh, but in the credit card names. Like Visa, it just pulled back into 231. I do like 230 for a dip buy, so it's getting close to the range that I would like to see it. And Bed Bath & Beyond is kind of trying to squeeze here. So, if it squeezes, I said I like that $3 area. It's getting pretty close to it. Once it gets closer to that $3, I'm looking to put a short on at around that price. It's about halfway there. We wanted to short the pops, but we got to be patient with it. It has a long way to go to fill in the gap, so I want to give it a chance to fill some of that gap before I go short. All right, um, I'm going to go long again, if, if like we were talking about there with AMD. Uh, interesting to see Intel moving like that. Let's check out on Meta again. Oh, it, sh it, sh uh, it shook me. It's back down. Okay, is it? Okay, good. Well, not good, I guess, on the shakeout. But um, we're going to watch out for that play uh, there, as Neil was just talking about it. So uh, we'll do our best there uh, to, to watch out for... What was the song? AMD that I was just talking about there. So we'll do our best to watch out for that play uh, coming out soon. So, all right, uh, there's that. Now, what I really want to talk about now was... Uh, what was the name? You already you already reloaded Amazon there. Apple continuing to go upside right now. Uh, it was just AMD, and I think it, you know what I really want to talk about was that Microsoft? we were looking for a reload. Yeah, Microsoft's been pretty strong on that, but it was just like now I'm switching to long. So now that we're above the 200 period, the 50 period, and VWAP, I want to switch over to a long here on AMD. So let's see if we can get that. That would be something that we'd want to do. I really like your fade idea on that AI. I know it's not there yet, but I'm 100% with you on all of that. I think it's just a bunch of you know hogwash all this AI stuff um, you know it's been around forever uh, it's getting better and it's great that it's there and it's free for now but we already know that softy is in this um, and uh, that's that oh well, it was meta that's what it was because meta just faded out again so meta just came back in look how many times this is what I want to talk about actually it bounces there so it gets that great news up to 152 fades right back into a spot that we should have been buying I'm actually at 147.05 it only got down to 147.40 so now that I sit here and see how this is uh, bouncing around here I feel like this is a great play here for meta so you know any kind of a dip back for meta back down to 148 I think we're gonna buy that but for now we're gonna be patient we already have the trades on board but yeah meta 147 148 I like that trade and we're gonna wait for it so just one thing about C3AI That's what it was. which does change some things that uh, in terms of how, how I would trade it if you if you go short uh, it's free locates for us so for a smaller name for lack of a better term, that just means we don't have to pay to go short. Oftentimes, price being higher, less people shorting it, easier to find those shorts that don't get run over. But when everybody can short it for free, it gets to be a crowded trade. So I actually want to see it get closer to 17. That's the 200 period moving average. I just got back on the bit of meta. You were just mentioning it. Oh, it's gone now. Yeah, okay, it's gone. Yeah. So, I mean, if it gets to 150, like I don't want this, I do want to continue to buy the dips on meta. But if it gets to 150 and rejects that one again, I might get out and try to jump back into the trade. Amazon is setting up for a run at the high. Yeah. And I think this is, just, this is just one of these where it's like buy the dips in front of 100, ride it and hold a core position. So I'm going to get back on the bid in front of 100. I don't see any reason to get away from it. Intel, it might have... It shook me out, Market got back game. down to 90s. It's right back up at that high. So that 2740 level on Intel is a big wall. If it rejects that level, fantastic. I'd go into another short. If it breaks out, 28 is the next place I would play that trade uh, to the short side. I haven't gotten any more of Lucid out. Okay, so it bounces off nine. That's not doing much. Here, let me, 
get a little more aggressive scalping this because market's screaming, what's Tesla doing? Uh, and Noosa, I'd expect a little more off that last nine bounce. Not nearly as strong as I would have liked. Double checking, Te Tesla's breaking the high of the day. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm gonna get more aggressive getting out of Lucid because it should be stronger than I'm seeing. Uh, yeah, I was noticing uh, this name right here as well. Uh, Microsoft not doing anything as right now Apple is, ooh, man, Apple's a, no, no, no problems with Apple uh, today. But Microsoft is having a little bit of a problem right now. 247.68 uh, is the 200 period. That could be bought probably. But right now, Microsoft having a problem. So if you're looking for weakness, might be in this name. But weakness does not exist in this name today. Apple continuing to make new highs here as the market's booming. There goes Apple. We'll wait for their earnings report. I believe it's next week. Uh, 145, or it's the day after Fed. So yeah, next week. Uh, 145 coming into play now. For Apple, we're just gonna hold this, man. We're two dollars in the money for Apple right here, and here comes my savior. It's Mr. Rob Spracklin. Thank you so much for that. But first, oh no, coffee. Dang it. Salute. So let's go. The other uh, day, sorry, man. I, I did want one. That's my bad. I, I just we're trading live. He put a message in. Would you like a coffee? And I'm like, I didn't say yeah, yes. Yeah, that's why I said I said at nine. He asked, I'll be back around 9:45. I'm like, I'll take one then because I know there's no way thanks, uh, I'd be able to check it out. So thanks, Rob, uh, for that. Let's go. Um, all right, Tesla breaking the highs as well. 166. Wow, uh, that was a name that we had on here to try the long. If you did, congratulations. Uh, oh, right now, shoot. Nvidia 200. Like all these plays that we had were right in the pocket today. Uh, but I think you still got to fade 200 though. Uh, Nvidia coming in here pretty quickly. Intel 2750, so that's short. Temporarily wrong. I like it at 28 though, uh, Intel. Wow, but Nvidia Neal's at 200 again of course right now. Let's go back to Brennan, then we'll come back with some trade ideas. What's up? Uh, just checking on crypto, guys. Not really doing much. Still red, in fact, but Coinbase on a move here. Not seeing anything on this as well, but maybe, hey, they're using AI. Is they better be using AI. So remember, uh, nice, nice move to the upside. You knew it was going to be opportunities for dip buys. I totally forgot this. Remember Micron 63 from yesterday, that breakout that I was sitting in all afternoon? Micron 63 is broken. I'm going to try and get the first dip possible off that 63 level. This is a big breakout on the daily. You're above the 50, sorry, the 200 period moving average. There's room to 65 here. Uh, if they're going to get a reversal on the chips, then I think Micron can be one that I can chase. I'm out of Intel. Thankfully, I said it shook me out there, out of the short at 27. That saved me, getting out of the short at 27, to be honest with you. So, so it's broken 40s, 28, then 28.80. I only want to look for shorting opportunities. If I go long in a chip name, it's something else at this point. But we're just kind of letting these ride. We're above 150 now on meta. If I get another dip, then I'll consider getting more scalp trades in there. But this is off to the races up 2%. Uh, Amazon still looking pretty good at that 101 level. I haven't been able to get into Tesla. That's unfortunate, but you know, I, I wanted the 160. Part of the thing about learning from yesterday was let it get to your price. And part of that means you might miss out. You might not get it at all. But yesterday I was too aggressive on Tesla and paid the price for it. So today decided to change that tune. However, finally, Lucid decides it wants to participate here, not nearly as much as I would like, and because it hasn't been as strong as I would like, I'm gonna get more shares out here and just try to go off this $9 level. If it continues to sort of bounce nine and give you 10 cents, then maybe I'll go the five cent, 10 cent route and see how far it can go. Thank you very much. Okay, Rob, I gave him a Trader TV mug and he hands me back this. Classy, sassy, and a bit smart assy. Thanks, Rob. I feel like that should have been my cup there, Rob. Uh, but uh, nice, nice, nice cup there. We have a couple cute cups there uh, in the kitchen for sure. He never uh, hands us the right. I know, I know, I know. But I, I got the good one, man. I got the butt first coffee. So that's kind of just a statement. Um, all right, two dollars in the money on Apple still going. I am taking that two hundred break. I'm going long. I'm not going short uh, on this. So let's wait to see where oh, that wait, where that goes now to the upside. And by the way, Amazon. Like this is what we're trading with right now. We have two positions. Amazon's a dollar in the money. Apple is two dollars in the money. I told you that we're a changed man. We've done a lot of work, a lot of research. We have one trade on Apple here all the way to the upside, and we're holding. We're holding 20% of this for a $2 move. So we wrote down on the sticky note today, 143. We wanted to buy that name. It was a dip, it was the 200 period right here. So we did buy Apple on the sticky note, and now we're holding. First piece out, 50 cents. Next piece out, at that 200. Then 144, then 144, 15. And now you're up to 145. Let's see if Apple can continue. The, mar the market, 
bumping to the upside here. So there it is, man. Sticky Note Nation today reigns supreme on this Apple trade, still holding 20%. Like I said, much different style of trade. Look at Amazon, same kind of ways, man. Breaks through 100, we take it, we're out 170. Comes back in, out 150, out 150, out 150, and still holding now 20% of that trade back as we look at 101. So we're trying to get a little aggressive here as it ain't free fall Friday. It looks like we're trying to pump to the north side here as the NASDAQ Definitely right not. back up to 12, 150 right now. That 11, 900 we talked about yesterday, pretty gold. And today we're going more upside, baby. Yeah, this market is definitely screaming, hold on to your longs. It's definitely one of those types of days. And uh, like, I'm not, I don't want to ignore that C3 AI. Um, it actually started pulling back a little bit, but it's making another push to the upside. Yeah. So this is what I wanted to see. Like, be patient. That's a 200 period pretty much right here. So this would be the level. Like, if it's going to make a first significant turn, it's all green on the 15-minute chart, obviously, because it's only 9.54. Uh, but if it's going to make a first turn, I think it's at this level. And then if it breaks out from here, it, I, I would think $20 is sort of an obvious low-hanging fruit uh, for C3 AI. So I'm not going to force it. Bed Bath & Beyond is another name I'm looking to fade, Bed Bath & Beyond. But I think when the market's screaming and you have a squeeze happening in Bed Bath & Beyond, or at least maybe some short covering, you want to be patient letting it get to that $3 level. So it's not there yet. It's the same thing with Intel. It's not there yet. It's just trying to break back up. This is why you pay yourself out. This is why you have a stop. I didn't even have to stop out at 40s here. But I like this 28 level. I'm going to let it try to glide up there before I get out. And now we're through 101 on Amazon. So Amazon's really starting to push through. There's really no obvious targets here. Ooh, that's not split adjusted. Um, yeah, there's no obvious targets once we're through that 100, except for those even dollar levels. We'll continue to want to buy those dips and see how far this can ride as, oh, give me that Micron before NVIDIA breaks 200. That's going to be key. Uh, Brendo. That was super strong yesterday, guys. Chevron, day low is coming here. Uh, not a good look. 3% downside. Record numbers for them in the quarter, but still missing estimates on their earnings. So uh, down 3% after a big day yesterday. That's probably, it. I what think was that? that was Chevron. Oh, Chevron. I think you wait a bit and then, you know, there's probably going to be a good buy opportunity there. But it was just at that huge level on the daily chart that it rejected Chevron. That's sort of the problem there. I'm just adjusting my order by a few cents to get a little Chevron. bit more aggressive on Micron in front of 63s here to pick up that long. And then, as you mentioned, Sean, NVIDIA, oh, it pulled back a little bit. So we're not at that 200 level, but I'm canceling my bids at 193 because if it comes down to that price... You know, it has to drop like eight bucks or sorry, six bucks or so. So I want to make sure how I get the fill matters. And if it, has, if it drops six bucks in a couple of minutes, maybe I want to be patient with that. So no need to have that bit out there because a 200 break is looming. All right. Um, Amazon just hit nice high, man. $100, 101 25 that probably could have been an out right there. Um, let's just talk about NVIDIA. Well, I mean, I don't know. What, what other names do you guys want to talk about? Uh, are you in PDD? Oh, no, I was out I for a 50 cent hit. Okay, I saw so you I, I took the bottom break. I'll show you guys. People were just talking about it. I was going to go over it, but I didn't, I didn't know if you were no, still Look in. what happened. So, like, look, if you ever short a bottom or long a top, to me, breakouts have to have, like, a defined risk. So there's a break. There's 104 half, and then you just get out of it. Now, it did make another high. It actually looking pretty weak. And I always say this. If you, if, if you like an idea at the open, revisit it at 10 o'clock or when things start to settle down because now suddenly you've got – Failed break downside, but also a bit of a huge wick top. And if it does want to reclaim that same 104 level to the downside, that that actually becomes a trap long situation above 105, and it can still fill the gap in. So I might take another shot at this short at some point. Um, don't want to rush into it now when this market's strength. But yeah, when you take a break, you should always have defined risk. You know, I said I'd give it 50 cents. I think I lost probably about 55, 60, Ooh. something along those lines. So pretty much in there with the spread, there's always going to be slippage on a stock like this. So you might lose like an extra 10 cents, but you want to confine it to that. You don't want to hold it $2 against you. That's how you ruin your day. Yeah, oh yeah, that's for sure. Um, all right, so just real quickly, you know, a name that we were on yesterday and not today, and we probably should have been, but the market's been pretty strong. And look at this, Alibaba. I mean, we just talked about Pinduoduo, Duo, but Alibaba bouncing off 120 again today, basically, uh, all the way to one. It opened at 119.90, or sorry, 119.80, and now you're down about a buck 30 from that, almost straight to the downside. So you did have too many opportunities to get this one. I mean, it did bump up there to 119.50. So I think if we can get that kind of a bump again here on Alibaba, we're going to sit there. So 
excuse me, let's park an order on Alibaba at that level. Wow, NVIDIA really pulling back off that level as well, 200 bucks. Uh, Brennan again with something else? Let's uh, the other one with AI in their headline this morning, guys. Remark Holdings starting to get going again here. Another volume spike there through. 170 for Remark. All right. Bobble 120, man. It's like, that is the greatest But it level. broke yesterday. We, I lost on it. I know. It's, it's frustrating. The, the thing is, you have to give it like 15, 20 cents in each direction. Like, you short it in front. You have to give it some room, which makes it a tricky trade. Um, I don't have any shorts right now, which is... Usually in a screaming market like this, I've found something. And I know I'm, maybe PDD might be the one, and, and also Intel if it gets a little bit higher. I finally got the dip in uh, Micron. I got 11s here. I'll probably just get some out. The high was 63.50, so that's kind of an obvious area. Uh, we might try to get some out in front of it and then just see how far it can go. I wanted to be long this on the dip before NVIDIA took 200 because I kind of feel like NVIDIA takes 200 and, like, Things are going to hit the fan, for lack of a better term. NVIDIA takes 200. Micron could be at 63.50 already. Intel might make another leg up. I'm hoping we break 200, the and then I can short Intel up around that 28 level uh, if that happens. But just to come back to Meta, I don't want this. See, this is the problem. It's right back at that 150, and it looks like a little bit of a wick here. I might just jump out of this Meta and look to buy the next dip. You know, that's, what, that's probably what I'm going to do. If I can get 150s in here, I'm going to go ahead and take that and then see how far this move might come down. I don't mind getting shaken out because I want to sit in either this or, or Amazon, and Amazon just feels like it could be. Maybe it's not as strong, but I like that 100 level a little bit better. And, of course, as soon as I put the offer in to try to get out of Meta, it just ticks down another 20 cents. I'm not going to chase this any further, though. Uh, let's go into the 70s. I'm not going to chase it any further than the 70s. We'll get out of that and see if we can't regroup on Amazon and Meta if they get closer to that 148. I don't want to ignore Microsoft, guys. Um, obviously, it's a pretty strong name. 250 rejected. It's actually looking a little bit weak. It's setting up for a flat bottom break. That would not be good for the market. Yeah, Michigan sentiment right at 10. Is that what's happening? Is it? Yeah, so get ready. So here it is right now. Let's go, man. We go, uh, we'll go. we go to Brendan when he gets it. Uh, but let's just see what the market's going to do right now. Uh, just dancing around, Brendo. 64.9 versus 64.6 there for that uh, final uh, month over month number, University of Miss uh, Michigan sentiment. Keep in mind, there is an inflation portion to that. So higher, 64.9 versus 64.6. Okay. All right. so, so, I mean, pretty much, I was going to say as expected, yeah. pretty much. When you get numbers like that, I mean, that's pretty much uh, as expected right there. So, uh, we'll watch it. Nothing happened there. I sort of to cut everyone off there, but I knew it was 10 o'clock, so I was like watching it and then uh, watching to see, do we want to pick something up or what? What's going on here? Um, Amazon, you know, definitely slept on that. We should have got out when it broke back down below 101. We're going to wait for a little bit of a high. If we can get back going here, fine. Uh, we're going to take that out at the high if Amazon goes back there. And we're also going to reload it if it comes back to 100. So a couple different opportunities right there for Amazon. Uh, did Tesla just move down on that news? A little bit, a little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is this could be a buy area here uh, for Tesla. I was trying to still remain. It's only 10 o'clock, and I got to like keep thinking about this. I still want to wait for a lower tick here. At 160 is probably too low, but let's let Amazon flush down before we really take a serious look uh, at that name for another buy. Because for rate or for sorry uh, for Tesla uh, to come back down, I'm gonna give that one a second. What is Netflix, uh, the professor stock that, over man. here? 362 right now, um, and trying to bounce around a little bit as well. Netflix and making the move down. So Netflix today, look at that. There we go. Maybe this is the weak name that we want. Uh, Netflix, if it gets back up anywhere into some of these numbers here, 364. I think that's going to be a short uh, in for Netflix. So let's try that uh, today. Netflix on a short if we get back up and around this 364. I'm going to park an order there. I actually don't mind this trade. Uh, oh, we go, oh, sorry. I was yeah. going to go to you in case you had something to say because we do have happening. Yeah, right? I just I, you know, I, I just got a fill on Lucid in front of 9. I'm going to reload that. I'm tightening my stop on Lucid 8.95, but uh, nothing changing. We want dip buys on Amazon. And here comes 200 on yeah, NVIDIA. Just, by the way, NVIDIA's coming. Why don't you right stay now. here? Let's not stay go to, here. NVIDIA's breaking. We're not going to go to happening now, but we will go in a second. Here comes NVIDIA rate right to 200. I am taking that long. Uh, if it does go, so let's just have a quick look here. Um, I'm, I only crossed up 20 cents, just to let you guys know. So hopefully I get that. The spread can open up a lot, but there's enough liquidity here that I think 20 cents is way more than enough. Uh, so be. let's see if it holds it. Uh, back out uh, in case it does go to the upside right now. 
Three minute chart, I mean, one minute chart. I mean, it's too choppy down here. I actually don't want to hold this all the way to 198.50, so we'll probably be a little quicker on the out than, than maybe we would have normally been. Maybe like quarters or something like that back down, lose 75 cents or uh, whatever our, whatever the slippage is. Oh. So, uh, yeah, 200. So see how, see how I'm talking about getting into a position before I'm even in it, and then where am I getting out if it's wrong? So I think you got to have uh, always those ideas. Uh, there it is. So we are now in it. And by the way, Amazon is absolutely... Absolutely ripping as well. What price did uh, I get? Amazon to the upside right now going. Uh, I didn't get a great one, man. I got 17s. But like I said, I did cross up 20 cents. Oh, that's So sucks. that's the fill that I got. Anybody can get it now. Yeah. Maybe it's not that great. NVIDIA with a blast. How high did it get to there? It 80s? No, it went. No, no. My, I got I got some at 30, 30 to get out on that for initial scalp, but but I didn't get like ones or twos. I got 16s long, so um, I'm gonna hang on. Like I got out of half instantly, which is almost always the way I want to play this. Whether it doesn't work, get out half tight to like 99.75, or does work, get out half to the first push, hold the second half for the bigger end of the play here. So I'm gonna get some out in front of 201. But the other side of that coin was remember I'm like I want to get Micron long before. NVIDIA breaks 200 because things might get crazy on the chip oh, names to that price. So Micron through 6350, that's going to the upside. Ring registers there. NVIDIA also breaking out to the upside. We haven't been able to get 201s just yet, but the other thing is it's going to give that shot maybe for Intel short 28. So this, this push on NVIDIA, Micron, AMD, probably everything, uh, could give us a chance to go short Intel 28, which we are patiently waiting for because market be screaming. Okay, great. Thanks, Mark. Uh, thanks, Mark. I'll look at that again and try that. Um, all right, so yeah, man, we just money, 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 basically money, make our day money, right there money, on NVIDIA. Money, we don't even money. need too much more, but if it's going to continue to go up, uh, hell yeah, we still have half of this on board right now for a nice little move upside. We just took, I mean, here we go. Uh, why do you even get some out in the first place? But Neil explained that, and I did the same thing here. 50s, 50s, uh, 80s, 60s, now it's blasting. Let's get one more piece out. I mean, this is, this is a day maker. This could have been a week maker. That's why have we even gone to Brendan yet for happening now? I don't think we have. Did uh, we? But I don't oh, know. I, I can't. I mean, I'm all discombobulated. Uh, as we're going back up to the upside right now, I'm at 201.25. That was the high. I don't know. Let's see if we can get that fill right now uh, on a break back to the upside right now for Nvidia. But there it is, man. Wow. Uh, we waited for that trade, and it only takes one good damn trade, and it's even better when it's an awesome one. So there it is, Nvidia to the upside, man. You know, we, we talked about yesterday how we were like, you know, tilted a little bit with that early trade. That don't matter to your boy. You, we're coming back today. Two dollars in the money on Apple, dollar in the money on Amazon, dollar again here plus on Nvidia. Like we're back with the same spirit and we're back today. So let's go. Uh, Nvidia, nice one. And without any further ado. Now we go. Now we go over to Brendan who did or did not have, we'll ask him, if he had that 200 break. It's happening now with Brendan at the big desk. Uh, just checking this inflation data, guys. University of Michigan uh, data that we mentioned there at 10 o'clock. Uh, both of these uh, projections lower than expected. So we are seeing some positivity coming through in the overall market, probably because of this. 3.9% versus 4 on the one-year inflation expectation and 29 versus three on the uh, five-year expectation. So uh, a little bit of a bump to the upside, as you can see. All green right across the board now, 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.3. The Russell struggling a little bit, but uh, NASDAQ Composite and the 100 leading the way, 0 0.44, 0 0.41 to the upside. If you're with us in the pre-market, we talked about Intel, Tesla, Bed Bath & Beyond, amongst a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, not a good look for Intel. Tesla tried. Uh, but it's coming back a little bit. I just saw this one, BBBY, try to get back above some uh, key levels from yesterday, but looks to be failing, guys, at that resistance from yesterday. So far, anyways, for Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, you know what? In all of that, like the Micron and the NVIDIA at the same time, uh, I forgot about Bed Bath & Beyond that three levels. So thank you, Brendan, for reminding us. That's another reason why I absolutely love this channel. So congratulations uh, to anyone that's found us. If you like it, Stick around. Um, obviously, I, the chat has a lot of questions. We'll try to get to them, but you can see it's active trading here. But I just want to remind everybody, if you want to be active in the chat, you actually have to be a subscriber. So take a second, hit the subscribe. It's a great way to communicate with a bunch of other traders, get good ideas. I see great ideas all the time in there. I've seen people talk about, you know, the long is strong, you know, 
let's go. I've seen people talk about C3AI, which we've been ignoring a little bit. I, I, know, I know it sucks. Uh, but there's, when you get an opportunity in a market like this screaming, sometimes the big caps take advantage. I'm glad Brennan was able there to cover that last push up and fade in Bed Bath & Beyond because I was quite frankly paying for locates for that same trade and uh, was too busy with other things. And uh, I'm not going not gonna to be mad about it. We got a third dip buy off nine in uh, Lucid. So we're just going to get some out. It just broke tens again. I don't know how much more aggressive I should be like scalping this out. I was kind of mad at myself for getting some out there fives and eights. It's like, let it get to the top end of the range. Let it work. Now, if it wants to continue, I'm going to get out higher. Third time is a charm. But if it goes down here a fourth time, I don't know if I want to reload it on Lucid. Uh, because quite frankly, if it goes down there a fourth time in this market, it's probably breaking. Tesla. I'm going to cancel my, I, never, I said I was going to cancel my 160s. It's off to the races. Thankfully, I have Lucid here. But uh, Tesla, probably going to head to 170 without me. I don't want to chase this. We got some good longs here. NVIDIA, one and a half. Micron, it's about 50 in the money. Amazon, which I forgot all about, guys. That's at 101.50. Did not get the dip buy on that economic number. We'll have to look for 100 half, maybe, for the next dip. So we were, I was just literally at 202 flat there and uh, it went up to 80. So now I'm at 80 uh, on this play here for NVIDIA. It was a great trade, uh, just being patient, waiting for that 200 break. So uh, when that broke, man, big, big time to the upside. Our best out is only 201.25 though. So hopefully we can get another push upside before we drop down. But if we drop down, I'm going to be getting out around 199.50, 199.70, something like that. If it does go back into the upside right there, um, I don't. I thought you had it. Oh, you didn't get. That's right. You didn't. You, but you have Amazon again still right now. I'm still in it. Yeah. So I got out. So I got out right there at 25 when it ripped right back up to the high of the that. day. The only reason I got out there is because I'm also long two super aggressive names. Like we just tweeted it out, um, our play there, and you guys know from our sticky note, I mean, uh, here's the sticky note right here on Apple. So if you go over and you see what we're talking about, there it is right there, Apple 143 long. So it was already up in the pre-market. We have that long standing right there, and now it's $2 plus in the money. And there's the long. We took it right when it fell down, and there's the boom up, man. Our best out's 144.10, and as we watch this thing continue to go up. But just because it's continuing to go up doesn't mean that it will continue to go up. So I'm, I'm wondering about just getting out here if it takes down 145. It's dipped around a little bit there. I think this is a decent out if it, you know, if we have to take that. So let's do that, man. A 145, we'll get out of Apple if it breaks back down below that. And then just call that a day um, and take the two bucks and, 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 you know, just be happy with it and find another trade after that. So right now, so far, so good here on Apple. And there's NVIDIA, man. Uh, we're still holding on to 30% of this. So we'll see. Uh, it's good. Obviously, it's a profitable trade. That's why we're going to get out if it breaks back down below. But for right now, it's hovering around 201 again. Uh, uh, sheesh. Uh, I, well, I always like taking a dollar uh, on these plays, but we've already done that. Let's try to hold and see if NVIDIA wants to keep going to the upside here on more and more breaks. Intel was 28, right? It, oh, I was about to yeah, say how, frust short. how frustrating Intel just was because it got to, I said, be patient, wait for 28. It got to 27.90. I'm like, this is it. It's about to go in. We'll get 95s or 96s short, maybe the 94s, and then it starts peeling back. So, if it goes to 90 and pulls back to like 60, the next time it goes to 28, I'm probably going to want right at 28. Like I'm going to want a really good price there. I don't want to necessarily short 93, 94 the second time through. I'll go for it if it, if it comes to that price. But unfortunately, I unfortunately, uh, might have missed that short, which is fine. The market's screaming here. You're working your longs is, is just as valid as far as I'm concerned. Um, I do want to go back over to this. So Lucid, I just want to, I didn't show the higher time frame when I was talking about Lucid again. So if it, if it gets to the quarter, I'll take one more leg out in front of the 920 level and then just look for the high from yesterday. It was a huge rejection on Lucid at that high. And if it can't get there, I wouldn't be terribly surprised. So that breakout works. But watch out for something like Neo here. Look how strong this market is. What is NEO doing? I mean, not a heck of a lot, right? If this gets back beneath $12 and this market starts rolling over, this could be an interesting breakdown on NEO. Uh, so it's one, I'm just looking for some opportunities to go short when the longs are so good. And NEO through 12 is setting up like it could be one of those. So I just want to be ready for it just in case uh, we do get that opportunity. You have to have something going in the other direction, I do find. I'm going to go for the reload on NVIDIA here in front of 200. 
So it just got back. Well, almost there. I'm going to look for one little tiny bounce off that 200 level for reload that we can scalp that dollar off of. Uh, Micron, I think I want to hold on for dear life on this just because that level, it's a, it's a huge level break on the daily. It's not an even dollar breakout. It was just that double top 63 and then that sort of like 200 period breaking, uh, breaking the upside. And then I want to look for 65s uh, on Micron. So I want to hold on to that and NVIDIA be patient with that Intel short. I want that short. I'm just trying to be patient with it because, you know, that stock, it kind of got me bad last earnings and it was because I was too early on that short entry. This time I want to be really, really patient at 28. Yeah, Baba almost went to that 119.50, but not quite yet. So we're going to wait uh, for that one to come through. But we do have a new position alert, and we talked about going short Netflix at 164. So we have it. It did go 50 cents against us. So, I mean, our first target's 50 cents anyways. We're sitting right here at 263.50. The 50 period's right there. I'm just hoping that if we do crack lower, remember the spread, like the spread already right now is 15, 20, 30 cents when it opens up. So we are going to have to be careful if it does start to break higher here uh, on this name. And why are we picking on Netflix a little bit? Well, we're not picking on it. We're one trade. Uh, but it, it's, it's weak against the market. So right now the market's up half a percent. Netflix is here right now. If you're gonna, just going to look at it, I mean, 365, it, 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 this is just a scalp. Like realistically... You could still have room all the way up here, 370. It's just, it's bounced off 370 and today a little bit weaker. And then when we looked at it, you know, at the time, these levels were right there. So now we've sort of broken a little bit higher. I could see, you know, possibly slipping up a little bit there on Netflix. We're not gonna slip up right now. I'm at 201. Uh, it just came to 90 there on NVIDIA. Again, I have, I have a lot of shares, so I'm trying to, like, you know, get some out here as we pop back up. But if that high is going to be around 80 or 90, I'm just going to stick it at 90 uh, and not worry about it. Maybe we do get that little fade uh, higher here. Remember, if the market pulls back, I'm going to bank on, my, on uh, Netflix, but then I'm going to lose on NVIDIA. So uh, let's get another piece out here. I don't know if the market's fading or not, but it's definitely not going up right now. So uh, watch out for a possible dip down here in the market so yeah we are going to try to get some nvidia out and there goes netflix back sub 364 again so we're going to watch out for that brenda what you got uh, there's a note being circulated right now about hkd guy uh, guys regarding um uh, new movies that are coming remember this is a media company so uh hkd just did this uh from 1020 up to thanks brian uh 1120 they're on a huge move on volume as well again some new production apparently coming for a uh, hkd which is amtd right i remember you hkd just want to shout out the super chat there from mark the realtor uh we don't you know we don't ask for anything uh, likes and subscribes that's what we're all about here but appreciate the super chat meta closing above 155 Hey, that'd be nice. I'm not going to complain if Meta closed about 155. It's one of the, it's the only long that I had this morning that I'm not still in, as a matter of fact. So, you know, I'm looking for a place to get back into it. I just got my first entry short on, net, um, on Intel since it broke 2740. So it's the only thing I'm short in front of that 28 level. So it's right here right now. But I do want to get some VWAP dips if I can uh, into Meta to try to rejoin this trend. Uh, so 149.5 would loom in there. I'm seeing the market kind of get a little bit top heavy. And if it pulls back from here, you want to be patient on your reloads uh, if you can. So here is Intel right here, right now. There's a song. Oh, goodness. The last time this happened, it was in my brain all day long right here right now it's some kind of a car commercial uh, so 28 that's the big level on intel i want to give it a few pennies above i don't want this breaking wicking me out and then sort of slamming back down i don't want to go with the stop order uh, i'm going to be trading this one manually because it's been putting in these crazy wicks which can sometimes trigger your stop so if you put a 10 stop and one of these wicks happens depending on which stop order i use you, know, you might get one of those crazy it didn't break the price, but there's a dark pool work that got above it. But this is what we waited around for. Was this level? It's already starting to come back in. Uh, it so, yeah, it actually broke down. This is going to be hard to see because these happened? wicks. So it actually was at evens and then slammed a 95 there. Uh, so it went like a big five cent move. Can I just show the level too? It's going to be way better here. So it was actually at evens on the offer. It's short sell restricted, right? It it so broke. you cannot hit the bid without an uptick. So all of a sudden, so it means at those levels, basically it was buyers, so people that are long that had to sell at that 28 level when it was up there. So I just added to it when I saw yes. it go to 95. You're seeing it get down into the mid 80s. That's what we want to try to take advantage of when it gets down there. So, you know, nice move on Intel. In the grand scheme of things, it's not a huge move. It's like a 10, 15 cent move there. 
but it's the mechanics of how it happened there at that 28 level, it being SSR, that were great. So I'm going to get some out in the mid-80s. Let's see if it can't go all the way down into VWAP as well, though. Yeah, we'll go bang on that one as well. We're short Intel. I don't know. I got... I had to step away there for a second, but we were short there at 90, and I guess it broke 28. I mean... There was a dark pool print above. Yeah, I well, think maybe ones or two. So twos. we got stopped out there. Uh, apparently, we got printed at 04. So whether or not uh, that happened or not, but we just got right back in because I was like, nah, 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 pa on that. So now we're positive that again uh, on that. So um, let's wait to see now what happens with uh, Intel. So we just got an 85 out. We got some not 88s out. Hopefully this can fall back down. We are now scripted out for that order uh, to take it. If it breaks back above that level, that apparently never broke. So uh, not that it never broke, it probably No, broke. I was watching level it did, two. It did not break? No, but, uh, look, I saw it break for a second. I don't oh, okay. think I well, saw, was, so I think I saw it. O4s, though. I don't think... Yeah, it must have. I mean, I, that was my The fill, problem so. is, the, when you're looking at a level two, we visualize, like, you see it, let me just explain this, because when you're looking at a level two, like, you're seeing all these orders, like, 1,000 shares here and 2,000 shares on Let's the go. offer, but really, it's just a bunch of orders canceling and being put in. Like, it's not a wall like this. It's kind of like when you look at a wall, it's a bunch of molecules and nonsense, and it's really, like, transparent. That's what these levels are. So I can visually see something, uh, like, offers at ones and twos, but they could be gone and replaced two or three cents higher back and forth faster than I can perceive it. So it is possible, obviously on that break, that it did go to fours, and I just wasn't able to see it on my level two. So that's, that's, why, the, good, that's why you see Lucas say that it's like, um, what does he say, like uh, something warfare? It's like digital warfare is what he likes to call it. Because really what you're seeing on level two doesn't always, you can't trust right. your eyes. So, you know, you trust the fills, trust the levels. That's why we always talk about key levels, but sometimes that level two is a oh. bit deceiving. Yeah. I mean, now Intel's going to the downside again here right now. So this is a good one, man. I hope the guys behind us have this trade too. I mean, this Intel break, the Amazon break, the Nvidia break, I mean, the breaks are back, you know, like it's been a while since we've been able to trade uh, like this. But right now, I mean, here it is, downside move. This is exactly the kind of stuff we're talking about. And you know what? We talked about us being red yesterday. You know, you just, you just battle back, man. You just you battle back. And this is what hard work and like sort of trusting your abilities and being able to just know. And this is actually, and I feel bad for, for my wife because she hears me talk about this all the time. And it's like, I go home and I talk about work and even when I go outside and I take a walk around, even when I'm red, I tell her that, you know, I'm trusting the process and some days trades just aren't gonna work out for you. And honestly, this is gonna sound, you know, a little bit, you know, whatever, but like I'm not too used to having negative days. So it's like, whenever I have one, it's like, I honestly think that something I'm doing is wrong, but that's not, you know, that's not necessarily the case. The market is not gonna be friendly to every style of trade every single day. So it's like, just because something was working for you in the past may not work for you again, right? So you gotta adjust, you gotta be patient, and you just gotta like understand that the market is going to humble you so many times throughout the day, let alone the month. So um, yeah, stick with your plan, be patient uh, on that one. And then today we ring the register multiple times on multiple names. So I just feel like you guys gotta get used to the new market and the new spot. And that's what I'm doing. And I have changed a little bit strategies here. So it is gonna take a while to be able to perfect everything. So that's, that's a little talk there. Uh, we're almost gonna be at the highest spot we've been at all day. We really need Netflix to start to move to the downside. Uh, if that's gonna happen as it's still bouncing off 364 a lot. And that's where we're short. So Intel downside, Apple still holding above 145 right now. We're rocking and rolling, baby. There goes Nvidia, but look where we just took it out. 201. So we have a very small piece left on Nvidia. Doesn't look like we'll get that 20180. And then check back on Amazon. That's still ripping to the high side. So some good trades here today to be able to hold on to. Now I just need Netflix to pull an Nvidia and come back down to the downside. All oh, right. It Brendan, right. Yeah, it's already 1020, so it's some sort of a segment coming up with Brendan.
brought to you by Seeking Alpha. Seeking Alpha is the world's largest investing community and your one-stop shop for all your investing needs. Subscribe today. Unlock all of Seeking Alpha's premium features, including access to their quant system. Uh, you can now receive a one-year subscription for 50% off. Check out the link in the chat. Uh, shout out to Seeking Alpha, bringing you small cap recap this morning. A busy day. Ton of these moving around. Here's BuzzFeed from yesterday. Failed at 290, 280, 290 at the top there. So I was just working off uh, 290 and 3 at the top. It did test above, got stopped out of a little bit, but... Uh, starting to work a little bit, not really doing a heck of a lot though for BZFD. Uh, BBBY, as I mentioned, came up and tested that level from yesterday. So I just had offers sitting there. Uh, didn't even look at this until it got filled. So uh, working its way back to the downside now, three and a quarter percent still positive though for Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, QNCX, Sharif, uh, you heard mentioned this one uh, early in the pre-market this morning, came up to 140, 150. Uh, on the second push there and failed right back down. Uh, a little tiny scalp on that one. I also had that AUVI that I just noticed is starting to work back to the downside finally. Got stopped out of that one, but uh, back to 150 for AUVI, guys. Well, that's the one with the uh, sh illegal short selling investigations. That's the one. Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna be happy about today. Hell yeah. Found some mistakes that got made yesterday and sort of tried to rectify them. Uh, and that's what it's all about. You just try to get every single day, I don't care what you do, whether it's trading or just in life in general, right? Like learn from the mistakes of yesterday and try not to repeat them and try to you know, accentuate your strengths to the best of your abilities you know, and try to just limit, just limit the downside when you're, go when you're going to be wrong. Uh, because you're gonna be wrong in life, you're gonna be wrong in trading sometimes. I wanna just go over to Micron here because NVIDIA just broke 200 several times. So I'm out of in NVIDIA, but one of the things about the, the breakout on Micron that I really liked about it was that it's a huge level break, not just a, like an even dollar kind of idea, but it's a great trend sort of continuation that I think can get to 65. So because I was in it before NVIDIA broke, that means on any kind of pullback in the chips, I'd still be in the money on a dip. So I can now hold on to this. Even if NVIDIA goes from here off 200 and continues higher, I feel like I can just hold on to this one forever. I did reload Intel because, you know, was, if it's here, it's here. You know, and at 28 level, I got to try to clean up these wicks. I'll reload in front of it. I still think there's a chance at a VWAP retracement on Intel. So I'll keep shorting that 28 level over and over again. Uh, Amazon, it's trails. It's just like a trail city time because the market just did this on the ES. Like, look at the pullback we just had off the highs, like a good 15, 20 point pullback on the ES. And Amazon didn't really want to dip that far. I know the NASDAQ is pulling back as well. This one looks pretty good off that 100 level. It's kind of barcoding enough that I don't want it getting past like 101, like 40 or so, and I don't get out. But you know, I'm liking the fact that it's holding up here about a buck and a half in the money. I don't want it retracing through 101.40. So I'm going to slap a trailing stop on Amazon, give it some room to run. So if we start breaking out back higher on the market, you're already at the top and we should just be holding on to that Amazon trade. It kind of sucks to have a good day and have it not involve Tesla. But you know what? That's not the end of the world. I'm just, we said learning from mistakes. Being aggressive on Tesla was a mistake for myself yesterday. However, I did grab Lucid one, two, three times long. I said I would not reload it a fourth time because if it breaks nine this time, uh, you know, there's just no reason to get out. I don't like an even dollar break, so I kind of have my stop just underneath that nine even area. But yeah, like it wanted to go. It couldn't really get past the 15 area. Good long, but at some point, you got to be able to give it up here. So, you know, Lucid party could be over. Give it up. That's right. Let's go. Netflix gave it up pretty good right now. $1.50 in the money right now as we're smoking today. There it is. Well, not, 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 not today, not, not today. But uh, we're smoking on this, this side of trading right here uh, as we go. There's another $1.50 winner there uh, for you guys. I hope some of you had that trade there on Netflix. As we talked about it being weak, and if the market ever did fail, uh, then, yeah, we wanted to get out of Netflix, uh, or we wanted Netflix. So we did take some out out there at 50 we talked about 50 cents to the downside. There's a dollar to the downside right now. And now is a dollar 50 and breaking right now, days money, low. Money, so we'll spin money, that and we will money, also ask money, you at money, this money, time money. to please hit the like and the subscribe. We actually failed to ask that. I think on both shows yesterday pretty much. But if you can, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's get going. Adios for a Netflix. Let's see if it's that. Now it's, here we go, man. Bye-bye to 62. We're still short 64. It's a big day over here for me. So really happy that, that we're back today. Good talks uh, all over the place. We did get out of Apple when it broke 145. We talked about that was going to be our out. So, hey, 143, 145, we'll take it. Uh, so that was a good one there. And then, unfortunately, 
Well, I don't know if it's unfortunate or not, but Nvidia is still going to be. Well, actually, Apple's my number one stock, and now Netflix is. Uh, but, you know, position pending, it's Netflix. But NVIDIA still number two on the day as we really took advantage of it. We only held 20% back. And quite frankly, I'm going to nominate this trade right there as your trade of the day on NVIDIA or Amazon because, really, these breaks were really good today. So I think, like, we got to put that in um, sort of our minds here and remember that if we get such key breaks, like $100 on Amazon, like 200 on NVIDIA, it's worth taking it right now because the momentum is back in the market. It's, you know, right now it doesn't look like it. It's just we're up through some levels now and you have earnings season so there's reasons for these things to go whether or not you're a bull or a bear there's so many opportunities here in these markets like today intel like we said down huge right down eight nine percent if you were bearish on the market you could pick one of the worst names out there and short it and you would have been right with intel we've only neil's been talking about short that name for what was it? Since 1998, we talked no, about the same levels. I've been uh, saying short that. for like, it's only like four or five months. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we'll see what's happening right now. Uh, no, I was, just, I was joking about the oh. 1998. That's just where okay. this, it's at 1998 levels today. Um, so that's, that's what we're talking about. And then even meta, like what did that look like? So the problem with the meta 150 break, and I mean, that would have been just as great of a trade, I feel like, but she got that kind of, AI news, I was going to say BS AI news, but I don't know. Uh, we, you get that AI news and then it just spikes it up. So you never really got that 150. But look where we're bouncing off of now, kind of bouncing off 150 and then absorbing it down through 149.50. So, you know, key levels of bound right there. Netflix bounced off 62. So I think now we can probably put an order around 62 and just respect that and get out if it does fall back. Because look at the NASDAQ, they're bouncing off the 50 period. You can hold forever, but that sometimes... Not a great move. Well, you definitely got to take profits when they're there. Which we well, we can't hold forever, actually. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you, well, you can hold forever in your long-term account, but day traders can never Cannot. hold forever. Yeah. I just cleaned this. It was my Intel chart was actually looking really good because I just cleaned this wick and it came right back. I don't know what that is at 30, um, but I just got some out there, 75s. I was able to. That's like a 20 cent scalp trade, which I think what we have to do because it's grinding and looking like it wants to make a run here. And if this breaks 28, I just want to remind everybody: it actually holds above. You know, gets above this here, which is like 28.10 or so. The next level up is like 28.75. So you're not holding. It's just like before. Like I was out of the shorts at 27, not even holding it back to 40s. Well, I'm out of the shorts here, like 28.10 or something like that. And then waiting for 28.75. Do not hold on forever. You don't want to do that. I, and now I'm about to say that I want to be long micron Market's all day. Ripping that here. being said, I do want to try to be long micron all day. Amazon looks super strong. I got a trailing stop at 101.40. I'm just going to move it up. When we break 102, I'm just moving my trail up on Amazon. I'm really liking the long here. I just wasn't able to get the dip a third time, and that's kind of unfortunate. But uh, this one looks like it's an all-day all type of holder. Brendo, I think. The other uh, automakers benefiting from this strong week so far and strong performance this week with earnings from Tesla. Uh, here's Ford up 1% so far today. Uh, flip over and show you uh, GM as well. Just took out the highs there on a volume spike. 2.5% already for GM today. Zero idea about Go that GM. Uh, Who's Ford? Yeah, GM and Ford and all, all of them. 13. 13. 13 for 40. Yes, sir. Good. We just, I recently actually bought, I think it was 11, 20, 11, 50. Uh, we talked about that a little bit as well. I'm going to, um, I don't know, man. NVIDIA just ripped again, man. Right back up to the upside right there for NVDA. So, I mean, I feel bad enough now that we already got out of that. I mean, I don't feel, I was talking about it there. We should have rebought it against that, and we didn't. So that's a... Mistake, man. Uh, but okay, we'll we'll try it. And, and as I was just saying, there we're gonna try Nvidia or sorry, uh, um, Intel one more time here. So we're gonna just we have our stop now. We'll probably give a little bit more uh, room through it because we did get that bad wick or whatever that was there. Neil was talking about it uh, breaking back upside. So we'll give it a little bit more room, and then I'll put on a little bit more shares right at 99. So uh, if it does go back up there, we'll test it. I'm. I'm I'm guessing this was, we already talked about that stop out. So we're going to give it a little bit more room than that to see if that is true. But so let's just reload there uh, on the short. Like I said, we will end the day at our highest spot. Hopefully we still have a half hour, so I shouldn't say end anything. We were going to get out of more Amazon, or sorry, half of what we have left of Netflix, which is only 40%. 
You only have 40% left. Because the 63, we took the dollar, man. We took out about, uh, we took out about a third there for 50, 40, sorry, for 50 cents exactly because that's the risk that we had up here. So we had the 50 cent worth of risk, so we take 50 cents. Then we extend that out to a two to one risk to reward ratio and then take out the next piece there. Now we have 40% left and uh, should have took more out when we went to days low. So we're sort of, like Neil said, and like I keep saying too, you know, we're learning from past mistakes and looking at different things here. You can hold forever um, in, in the day uh, like we talked about there, but at some point you do got to ring some registers. So we already rang them, but I will ring it again if it breaks above 40 there, above 50, sorry, and get out of half of what we have left. And then if it takes out this 50 on the upside, then we'll get out of everything for Netflix and call it a day uh, on that play. So, so far so good here uh, with everything and Intel bouncing back down, but look at Intel's strength today. I'm going to say strength because honestly that's what it is. You're still making... Uh, lower highs right now, so, sorry, higher lows, there, there, and now here. So yeah, a dip down to like eight, what am I short now, 95? A dip down to 85, I don't even have a bid there, so I gotta put a bid down near 85, make sure that we get something out uh, if it does dip down there because it's rejected those drops over and over and over again. Neil, now it's, it's now time. At least you took a shot at it. I just said, like, let's it was go over 10:30, to, to some random so segments. Was... So uh, let's go over to now. What we confirm is our crypto update. Uh, just taking a note on uh, Cloudflare. Uh, Net, NET, guys, big move to the upside there on volume. Uh, it's been uh, positive, I guess, trying to get positive anyways. Day four crypto after starting pretty negative. Here's the uh, headline we were discussing in the pre-market a little bit. Uh, Silvergate uh, suspending their dividend on preferred stock. Uh, that had uh, Silvergate SI gapping to the downside this morning. I'll show you the uh, chart coming up here, but uh, back to the upside anyways for SI. Uh, trying to get higher right now for both BTC and Ethereum. It's still red on the day, but uh, both are still red on the day. But uh, trying to get back to the upside after this was down more than 1%. This was down about 3%. To kick things off today, 1.8 right now, 1,584 for Ethereum, trying desperately here to hang on to 23,000 for Bitcoin, but an improving board to have a look at right now for crypto. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. I forgot all about Silvergate. So, about Intel. Brennan gave that story. I know Intel's right back up there. I didn't actually get any. I wanted Phil's above 28, to be honest with you, because I think 28.10 is the level. Um, I, was just, I went to Silvergate there. I forgot about Silvergate. Brennan talked about this story. I was like, oh my goodness, it's been that dividend. That should be a short. But it held the low and then wicked higher. And it just, it probably just gave you the short entry uh, there off of like 13 and a half. If it gets back, maybe I look for a 1340 short. But uh, Intel is the one that we have to watch. Oh, give me a break, Intel. Let's it's go. Right back. Okay, anyways, it just went right back up. These stupid wicks. It, it did just go to 28 and then dip 10 cents in there. It's hard to tell on that chart because every time I get rid of that wick, it just sort of comes right back in there. Is, your, is yours any better, your chart? Yeah. Show, show Sean's chart for this. Yeah, I don't move. have any wick. What's that wick? What time is that wick? This is at 9.09. I, I oh, I don't even see it at It crashes when, oh, I, yeah, when I, I take it. Oh, yeah, I have it, it too. I just zoom it out, man. That's all. I know. Uh, so right now, yeah. Um, all right, so we did it, man. We did exactly what we said we'd do. For someone that said that Sean was in the zone today, yeah, I mean, there's another fill on Intel right there at 28. So we would be really up a lot more than this if we never got stopped out there. But we did get pushed right back in. And I don't know if it's going to break or not, but we're going to keep continuing to scalp that. There's 91. I mean, again, on Intel, that doesn't move that much. You can use a lot more shares. So, again, we're on prop floor here. So, uh, you know, the, the amount of shares that we're able to use is, is quite exuberant uh, as we trade firm capital. So firm wants to give me capital. All right, uh, we'll do it. So there it is right now. I mean, of course, with over 22 years experience, you know, we, we sort of deserve it a little there bit, I think. Uh, but there goes Intel now to the downside. And like we said, man, um, it's been a good month. It's, this is my best month in a few months. So uh, that's why we're starting to add more shares, be a little more confident in what exactly we are doing. Other than getting rid of Amazon and Apple, I guess, today, everything has been a jam, right? I mean, Amazon's Apple's right there. Amazon's coming back. I might get... Yeah, Amazon's not coming back that much, though. Uh, it's still a nice hold for you, man. All but the way I have to a trailing upside. stop here at O2. So okay, cool. so we'll watch out for that. Um, NVIDIA, sorry, NVIDIA. 
Um, Netflix does come back down to 262. I thought I had a bid, but I must have canceled it when I was in that Intel malaise. Uh, look at Intel, man. 82s. All right, we'll take it. We just shorted this again. Now let's hold, man. Let's just hold Intel. I have a 76, a 66 on the way down. Let's start to fill that up. But we are at the highest spot we've been at all day. And honestly, guys, you know what a difference a day makes, man. Same guy, same strategies, different market. We hit it back again today. So good so far. Let's put a bid down here on Netflix. 262. Uh, let's go to 262.11 uh, and see if that fills. Yeah, it was just, it's, I'm not that concerned about Intel. Oh, sorry, Intel. Intel in the brain. Uh, on Amazon, but it did just put a, not this, but it did just put a big pullback in there, relatively speaking, one of the bigger ones. So I did move my stop up, which is at 101.40, into that 102. If we can continue to go higher, great, but I want to make sure I'm paying something out. I do not want this to reverse and the market goes red and I didn't take it out. Uh, I want to go to Meta for a second if I can, because uh, Meta, it's starting to barcode here. So it resists 151. I got all out on Meta and kind of regretting that trade. You know, I probably should have held on to a little more aggressively. It was all out at 149 only for like a buck, buck 20 or so. And then got this 150 trail out, which was an ugly trail. That's like the worst price I could have gotten filled in front of 150. If it can bounce VWAP, great. That's a place to re enter. Gonna try and rinse and repeat that Intel over and over again. However, as we come back down, you know, Micron is holding that 63 breakout, so it doesn't really matter what goes on. This is holding that break at 63. If we see, if I see it again, I just want to jump back in at that price alone. I'm already offering 65 because I think if the market just goes haywire, we're going to see a 65. Intel is right back. I said I want it at 28 because I think 28.10 is a line in the sand from yesterday. So I want to allow it to get to that level and no further. If it breaks, 28.75 is the next short for me. So just got a reload on that. Actually, I didn't get all filled because I didn't get anything above that 28 level. But once I get them, then we can start working. Every time it's popped down in Intel, it's giving you 27.85 as an out. So we're going to zoom, I have to zoom all the way back in to get rid of them. It goes, the move gets you to 85. So if it does flush, you want to save some shares for 85, but 2810 is my out. Yep, same out as well. We just loaded up oh fours there. So this time we got a little cheeky with it and we did not short 28s. We shorted above it uh, where we got stopped out apparently last time. So let's see. Now if it comes back down, there it is right here. We're short at 20. Well, now we're short at 28.02 because it's our average price. Uh, but let's see if it does come back in. We just did take an 04 short for half of our position. So I don't, I mean, now it's holding 28. Like, why is it holding 28 right now? Uh, I don't know. So let, let me put a bit out there. there. There, we just took a bit out. Uh, we took some out there. It's nothing. We're short at 02. It's like we're not doing any damage here. But let's just take a piece out. We took out 5% there I don't know hopefully it breaks it but you can see there's definitely an iceberg order there and what iceberg means is it keeps breaking or it keeps getting hit but doesn't break so someone standing there with like an unlimited amount of shares it's not going to be unlimited but enough for them to get filled and then we'll see if they let it go again like it it's, just, it's SSR remember it's but it just screamed red and it came right back. So I feel like someone is buying this name up. There it is. So watch out this is a stop out waiting to happen uh, up there at 2810. Yeah, like, but it's short sell restricted, right? So that just means, like, for those of you that don't know what SSR means, it does mean that you cannot go short without an uptick. So we just broke that 2810. I'm going to get out of dodge on this one. Uh, it looks like it actually didn't hold. That was a bit of a wick top. I don't want to get wicked out. Okay, there it is. I'm, I'm not using stop orders on this stock because of those crazy wicks that we've been seeing. They've been absolutely terrible. And if you use a wick, if you use a stop, some of these dark pool prints that are going off like this one are triggering orders. So this is one of the only stocks I'm trading manually. That might give me an opportunity on that wick top to actually get some more shares in. So um, I'm going to reshort it up here. And then if it breaks out, I'm punching out manually. Uh, just to cover a couple of other things, Meta is continuing to go higher. I feel like I'm missing the boat on that Meta long. I don't want to chase it. I, I still want VWAP on Meta. Um, at some point, I got to get into that one. Micron is the one thing I'm holding alongside, but I've gotten away from NVIDIA. I feel like when you're focusing on Intel at this particular moment, because that's an inflection point, I don't want to jump over to said NVIDIA uh, at this particular time. And Amazon's at the high of the day, so that'll be okay. But keep in mind, the market is reversing a little bit. So I have a trailing stop at all times on both Micron and Amazon. See what I mean? If I had a stop order in, that wick would have gotten me out. That's why I have to be glued to this to punch out if I need to. Yeah, so we didn't, we didn't get that 62 fill, so we do take a 63. And we got a great price, These actually. We got 63.53 uh, there. So we take another 50 cents uh, there on Netflix. And um, now we're only holding 20% left. 
waiting for 65 to break back up to the upside. I went the other way, and I was actually w hoping that Intel came back down to 28 so I could get more long. Uh, I want to go long now that it's broken above, so I am long. So right now, we're only long at 10, so... That's part of the out. I was hoping to get more buys uh, down here, but we didn't get them. So hopefully Intel can come back into 28. I'll, I want to load up the long, so we'll see whether or not it works or not. I don't know. I saw that iceberg there at 28. That should have been indicator enough. I did take some out there. Let's just see if it holds. If it doesn't hold 28, we get out of Intel. Who knows, man, uh, about this. It's not a, it's not a heavily... I mean, it's heavily traded today, but 73,000, 73,000, 73 million shares still down 7%. Generally not a name that we'd like to go long on, but we just saw it hold 28. So let's see if it wants to do that. We're still long on Intel right now and watching out for uh, Netflix. So, um, all right, man, hopefully this will continue to rip upside, but we've given a little bit back, holding on to that short. Let's see if we can make it long now here on Intel. Try let's go. Uh, so far, so good. Hey, uh, we'll see if we get some out at 25 if it goes back up to the upside. Holding long Intel just sucks that we didn't get more long down there. We'll see if it comes back in for right now, though. It's Brendan over there at the big desk with Happening Now. Brought to you by Stock Odds. Learn how to trade market neutral strategies with the top 10 odds from Stock Odds. Get top long and short stock ideas from the S&P 500 straight to your index every morning. Check out the link uh, for 10% off. Shout out to Stock Odds. Here is a very checkered board for you for the S&P 500. Typical earnings type of board right now. Obviously, Intel, KLAC, another one, both downside in the semiconductor group off of earnings. Uh, LHC or LH. X, I should say, they reported they're up 7%. Uh, AXP, 9% to the upside off that uh, better than expected results. Uh, some of the cruise lines I saw popping up early on this morning, they faded a bit, but uh, Carnival down there having a pretty good day. 3.5%, they did not report yet. 4.9 right now for Hasbro to the downside. You heard Sharif and I talk about that a little bit. CHTR, 3% downside uh, off of uh, a negative note I saw from an analyst on them, Colgate. Uh, their CVX as well. We talked about APA as well. Just individual names offsetting individual names today, including Visa, 2.5%. Uh, back to the upside so far this morning for Visa. AXP, not necessarily that uh, influential so far today, but a uh, decent uh, day regardless for some of the credit card operators. We're positive, but only just 0.1 right now for the S&P. I'm like, the market's around. pulling back, but I'm not sure what's exactly weak right now. Uh, just a couple of things. I did manually punch out of uh, Intel there, so the next level up, I'm not really looking for the long. It's just, I mean, I got Micron, and I favor that one or NVIDIA, but 2875 be the next level I want to play. Well, play, trade around, I should say. I always say the word play. Trade around is what I should be getting at there. Uh, you were mentioning just a second ago to me, at least, you know, Neo is actually flat on the day. It's about to roll over. At least it looks like it's about to roll over. It couldn't break 12, though. So you still have that 12 break, which is looming. That's what I was sort of waiting around for. Like 12 breaks, market reverses. We get, you know, look for the short on a 12 break. I just realized I don't actually have my order in. If it gets closer, it's at VWAP now. Above VWAP, I don't want to stop order into the break of the, of the bottom. Gets beneath it, then I'll probably put that stop out. I just keep moving my trail on, on Amazon here. But now I think it could start that reversal. The scalp trade's over on this. It's how far can it go? 103 is looming, but it feels like this market wants to reverse on us. I haven't touched Microsoft once today. There we go, loading up there. And it's starting to look a little bit stronger, but this is flat. I mean, the market, the ES is flat, but the Nasdaq's up half percent. Microsoft hasn't been the strongest name out there. And it keeps on putting both higher lows and lower highs. That just sort of forms a wedge where you can break in either direction. And I'm feeling like this one could be a weak one here today. And then the other one we haven't covered, I'm just going over some of the names that we've been ignoring. Alphabet as well, I'm noticing, kind of showing you that it might want to roll over and break that trend to the upside. That's why the trailing stops in on Amazon. It's been a great morning for the longs, but there's a few too many signs that that could be coming to a bit of an end here. So the only thing I will be buying a dip in is Micron 63 because that daily break, and I might just be trailing out of Amazon. Neo, Neo 12 short I know I like. I'm looking for something else that I like to the south side that isn't necessarily like Silvergate or something like that.
All right, Intel pulled back. We just bought some more sixes right now. Let's see what happens. So we just got double filled down there uh, on Intel. So let's see if it comes back up to the upside. We're still waiting for like O2s, uh, just because we want to see what happens at 28 and then give it a little bit of room back down. So there's an out there at 22. We talked about that before we threw it over there to Brendan. Um, so let's wait to see if now, you know, it's fallen back down here. We'll take the last fill and then we'll just see. And again, what we're trying to test out here is that guy, uh, that trader or algo or whatever it is, uh, right down here at O's. So we're gonna sit there and test it out, see if we can get the fill that we want uh, here at O2. So there it is, now we have it. Now let's just see. Like when we were short, he wasn't, the trader algo wasn't letting it break. Let's see now that we're long if they let it break. There they go, now that we're long, they let it break. So we may be trapped long here. We're gonna give it a little bit more room uh, to go here. It's fine, it's a position that we're comfortable with. We're gonna give it back down, breaking back below 90. If it breaks below 90, uh, then we can get out of that one. No problem here uh, on a Intel. But still, this will be a losing last little idea here. So we're going long ahead of 28. Um, and then we may just have to reverse into the short as the market's really screaming to the downside now. So forget about Intel, I think, now. If the market's going to be weak, it just took the 50 period. So we're, there it is. Now we're out of Intel there. I wonder if that's, nah, nah, that's it. So Intel drops down there. We'll take that. Uh, maybe it's a short again off 28, but this is what we're talking about. Now we tried it. We tried that idea. We'll take a 12 cent hit there. And now we can sort of, and now it goes back up. Now we can sort of leave it alone until it breaks maybe 28 again. Other than that, man, this is probably worth leaving alone um, until we see you know, a market either rebound or whatever here uh, at this level as I punch back a little bit here into Intel. But no big position until we re-see what happens here with INTC. Yeah, I just, I just got trailed out. I, it's, it's crazy. Like uh, I put a trailing, I had the trail, moved it up to 102. I actually got an accidental short in Amazon because I had it, my other trail just sort of was still out there. I, using manual ones, that's what happens. Like you get out, and it's like, oh, I need to cancel my other trailing stop. That short, accidental short. Would it have worked? Yeah, heck, I would have just made 20 cents. But if you get a position that you don't want, you get out of it right away. I'm not sure the party's done on Amazon to the long side, but if it comes back, that's 101 sitting at VWAP. So 100 break, it just carried to 102 and a half, or a little bit higher than that. So 101, we'll patiently wait for. On the dip, meta, it's at VWAP right now, but the market's kind of screaming and accelerating. So I want to give it some room before I jump in. So I'm not bidding VWAP anymore. And uh, Havana Woody just said, you say play because you're a gambler at heart. I played a lot of, so when I started trading, and uh, it was uh, sort of, I was young. I was sort of, out of uh, right out of school, pretty much. Uh, and I would go home and I would actually play online poker. So I would trade during the day and play online poker. So it's, it's. It is in my vocabulary to say that a lot. I don't play online poker anymore because, quite frankly, it's way too much uh, to trade all day and then play online poker. You can't do it. It's not a good lifestyle. Uh, but that's all I'm going to say about that. I do want to get the low. I do want to get this dip on Micron here at 63. I feel like the first push was good, but it never got to 64. I'm reloading this bad boy in front of that 63 level. This one I definitely like. And Nvidia, we did get out when it reclaimed that 200. But you know what? It's still kind of holding that 200 level. This one could still be valid. I want to give this a chance because the market's so weak right now, at least pulling back temporarily. I want to give it a chance to get a little bit deeper before I get that dip by. But I'm starting to look for places to buy those dips. I don't want to ignore uh, what's going on in big tech, but this is a time to be patient. If you like the trend, be patient with the dip buys here. Uh, don't get too crazy. Uh, Intel, I'll revisit that one. If it breaks 27.85 or kind of gets back to these highs and breaks out of those highs. But this is too much of a little bit of a channel, and it'll shake you out a little bit. I'm trying to stay away from that channel here. Uh, Ten minutes to go, and I see you guys talking about Bed Bath & Beyond. Okay, this better, in, in the chat, a lot of people talking about Bed Bath & Beyond, or at least a couple of people. It's not even close, yeah, this is not moving. Never mind, you got me. You got me to look. It's not close to that $3 level. If anything, lower high, watch out below. All right, um, we did good to get out of Apple here, but I'm debating, oh, I'm not debating, I am going to go long again, uh, until we break that 143 uh, down, it's down here, like this 200 period is uh, down here on the one minute, and it was this level right here, 143.50 or so. Let's see if Apple wants to pull back down. We've done, I mean, we did pretty good getting out of some of these trades so far today, um, and let's just, and we're done 
pretty well holding uh, Netflix right now. That's that's a dollar back in the money now. So uh, let's see if we can just be a little more conservative now that we only have 10 minutes left in our show. And then we go over uh, to Luca and, of course, Sharif uh, for the midday show. But for right now, if Apple can fall in a little bit, watch that 144 area. That's really where I want to start to build it. So we're sitting there at 144.20 to see if we can build along uh, here off Apple. So that's one idea. You already sort of talked a little bit about meta there. The market is flat on the day. Like, it's, it's big up, big down, uh, now kind of just hovering around there. I do like the Amazon look as well. What else do you guys want to talk about? Tesla, no, no trades on Tesla yet today. It's crazy because yesterday I was like, let's take 160 and go to 170. Today, we don't even have that opportunity. It goes right to 167.80 right there on the top. Uh, that BuzzFeed is approaching $3 again. So um, that, that could be something to look at. I mean, it's still not really doing anything, but it's still at that $3 level. So, you know, possibly getting a, an opportunity to go short there at three if that comes into play one more time and you know just this is this is again if you're going to look at this like the way i look at all stocks then yeah you would want to break that out from there to the upside but again you know i don't know if you guys are long or short this name i would say that if i was long right now because we've seen it three times maybe this is a decent spot to get out but still, nothing wrong with taking the break long here on BuzzFeed if it indeed uh, takes down that $3 and you get it going again. So um, that's a good name to look at. You already looked at Bed Bath & Beyond. But the market's pretty jamming today, man. Amazon up 3%, Meta up 2%, Shopify up a percent. As I look through the board, there's lots of opportunities there uh, you know, hidden in this market uh, despite some of the chip names. Well, NVIDIA, that's... It's not going to haunt me, but, you know, getting out at 200, you're right back there again. So if you wanted to reload, went up to 202, right back down to 200 again for NVIDIA. So this could be a good long as well, man. Like, why deal with Intel when some of these are giving you some good levels down here? Uh, NVIDIA's right That's in true. the pocket one more time. All right, um, let's go over. I know what this one's called. It's Money Talks with Brennan Wickens. Is it, though? I think it is, yes. Hey guys, all about the U.S. dollar ahead of what's to come next week. Obviously, Fed meeting coming Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll get the rate decision uh, all but decided. Going to be a quarter point. It was 99.2 the last time we looked at the uh, Fed funds tool. But a lot of talk this morning off that uh, PCE, or a lot of headlines this morning off that PCE number, uh, about the dollar overall. It was very, very volatile to start the day. This is an hour chart. Uh, so very, very volatile. We tested higher initially, come all the way back down. Now it's creeping back up again, a quarter of a percentage point to the upside. 102.06 for the DXY today. Everything else under pressure as a result. Uh, there was some data overnight in Japan I saw that came out better than expected. So the Japanese yen a little bit strong, but uh, the euro, the Canadian dollar, British pound, all downside half a percent for the uh, pound leading there as far as uh, the sizable move, 123 and a half right now for the uh, pound. Uh, still red numbers down here as well. 23 did go. So key level there for Bitcoin. 22, 975 right now. Yes, sir. And uh, I said I'd be a little bit patient with VWAP, like so, sort of see how um, the market reacted. There we go. Just I want to zoom out a little bit here. Uh, you see how the market reacted uh, to this little bit of a dip. There was a slowdown oh, no. right around 4070 on the ES. I'm like, okay, well, that's a little bit of a bounce. Let me grab some VWAP on Meta here. So I get the entry, immediately it tries that like over under, fakes out beneath 50s, and I grab a little bit more. So I have 70s right now. I don't want to risk more than 30 pennies on this. So you see me, I'm sitting on the offer once it goes about 30 cents in the money, maybe actually... Uh, no, that's not quite. Let me just back that off for again because my math was a little bit wrong. So a little bit tighter to that 30 cent mark. So just go one to one, get some out. If it plays off the high of the day, we're in a scalp range, I think, for meta. If it can't hold, I'll get out and maybe hunt lower. Uh, Silvergate, I'm on the offer. Someone's like, it's in a scalp range. Yeah, I know. It's a VWAP, right? So I'm looking for the shorts. I actually didn't want to chase it too far. I'm going to be shorting this in front of the high to VWAP if it tries to rinse and repeat but it actually has to give me the rinse and repeat to be able to do it. I, I want to shout out to everybody here, and uh, thank you for all the advice and like ideas in the chat. We welcome them. We can't trade them all. Oh, I just immediately stopped out of 30 cent hit there on Meta on the way back in. Uh, I said Silvergate. I see people saying you should be looking at Coinbase. You know, you might be right about that. You're not always going to get it right. Like, this is a stock to trade, but we're going to try and trade what we see. What makes sense to us, because that's what any trader should do. And we welcome the, the, the community in the chat uh, giving ideas or pointing out symbols. Coinbase is super strong today. I like to short on Silvergate because they suspended their dividend. 
and uh, that's usually a pretty bad sign. So I want to favor the short side on a trade like that. So I'm focusing on that instead of a beast that is Coinbase right here. Take a second, hit the like, hit the subscribe. If you want to be in the chat, you actually have to be a subscriber, and that's a fantastic way to engage our great community. Yeah, exactly. Um, we, uh, we're still waiting. We have NVIDIA, or sorry, uh, Netflix, which is really taking a move to the downside right now. Um, so watch out for that. We, I mean, we made the wrong call, and we're still in a little bit of this. Uh, Intel flushing, right here, unfortunately. Uh, that continues to flush down. But, oh, here I do. I want to look. I mean, this just bounced off 262. I like to hold it for a little bit to see. Um, so there's this big seller here um, on NVIDIA, or sorry, on Intel. It just keeps following it down. And because it's SSR, you see that uh, Edge X, that EXB there, and the NSB? It just it, it gets hit, and then it sort of re rebuilds itself back up. So I'm kind of waiting until I see see like some mass green prints come through and then we could take that out and then I think it can get back up to the upside but with the market falling down here we should have took that we should have took that Netflix out but with the market falling down here this seller just keeps winning because like see there you go there's just those were J prints oh there it goes so now it's gone a little bit there we'll punch in, in a little bit now uh, to see if it can make its way back up to the upside we don't have a good price we punch 70s eights there so now we have to wait. Now it breaks 82. So the seller just came back. We're going to get out if it breaks 75 to the downside. Stop fighting these plays. This is not like the kind of trade that we want to do. It's just right now there's not much happening. Like look at all this mess here on Intel when all we really want to do is trade it against 28. So, you know, we'll be back in this name. We'll see if it can work back up to the upside. Maybe that seller's gone. Maybe uh, they are not. But we'll, we have the long now at 82. Hopefully it can print back up to the upside and we can get a 28 fill. But for now, the pressure's right, like see that? The pressure's right back on, yeah, right back here. Uh, the sellers are there. I don't know if the buyers are for Intel. So let's hold it. We did see that seller get exhausted a little bit. So a little bit of tape reading there gives us this long that we have. I don't know how far it's gonna go, but we have to wait to see if we see a big seller come back. Yeah, exactly. And actually, I'm gonna revisit a, not an old idea, because it's really this morning, uh, but I will stop that at PDD early. You guys saw that, took the hit, short at the bottom of the day, it broke out. Now you're getting lower highs, um, and you know, obviously a downward trend. Why am I drawing lines? There we go, get rid of that. I don't want to draw a line in that chart. But I wanted to zoom back out to look at the bigger picture here, because I'm gonna get back on the offer uh, right around that 104 level, like 103 half, 104, like right in here. Because if it does fill the gap in, it just has so much room to fall. I get it, it's been strong, but it's now turned red, holding red, trapped longs above 105, and then look at what's happening in, in the market. You see the market dropping, right? But look, what, look, look at Alibaba. Like it fails 120, and this is breaking a gap down. So I feel like if, if Baba's going to break, I know Neo looks weak, and I haven't checked JD, but I'm going to do that right now. Oh, my God. Look at JD.com. Yeah, I got to get PDD short. Look at JD.com. Like, all these are going, and I like PDD for short earlier. So I'm going to get something here at 103 half if I can even catch it uh, on any kind of an uptick. There we go. I was able to get 49s. And then just see if I can work into a short off that 104 to 104 half area on Pindo Duo. And if this fills the gap like the rest of them, you could be back at 100. So I found myself a short that isn't Silvergate. Um, not that I don't want Silvergate, but... It's not really giving me the opportunity just yet. I want this short here off the 13 half, trying to get this down to like low of the day, down to $12, but it has to come up and fill me. So uh, I, got, I got PDD now. I definitely want Silvergate. If coin pulls back, I feel like Silvergate is lower hanging fruit. That's kind of why I'm doing it. I know you're probably getting an attractive price to short Coinbase, but that's in a pretty strong uptrend. Yeah, we're um, shoot. Uh, we're still here on uh, watching Intel. We don't have much else to work with. Uh, we did have AMD. Sorry, uh, Netflix made that move to 62. We should have been sitting there. We were at 62.11, uh -huh. remember, and we got queued and pulled it. That's pretty much it. Went down to 05. So you know, now that I see it, obviously feel bad uh, that we didn't get that out. So I hope that you guys maybe listened at least a little bit to that price. But here it comes right back again, 262 uh, for Netflix. And remember where our outs are. 364.50. All right. What a good show again, man. I mean, lots of news there today. Lots of big winners, man. I hope you guys had Apple, uh, which flew from 143. I hope you guys had Amazon, which flew from 100. Um, NVIDIA was a great trade breaking through 200, and it continues to be that. I hope you guys had all that. Um, other than that, man, Intel, we'll still wait to see if that can work. 
AMD as well on watch if it makes a move back up to the upside. We're going to wait on the chips because we do have Intel. But what a good day again. So thank you so much yes, uh, for joining us. Brennan's going to stay on, obviously, on the desk. If anything breaks, we'll have that for you. The guys will trade a bunch of different names, man. Uh, so don't worry about Luka. that. Uh, Sharif's going to be over there. So is Luca. And uh, thanks to Prad today. Thanks, Fahad. Thanks to everybody. Thanks, Neil, everybody uh, here. And we had another great show. And we're back at two. Yes. So you won't see us until then, but you will see these guys. So let's throw it over. Thank you for watching, by the way. Thanks to Bears vs. Bulls. We don't say that probably enough. So. We never say that enough. Thanks, Bears. He's a great moderator. Absolutely fantastic moderator for the chat, which, which is amazing. Uh, go get him, boys. It's a wild market. It's only going to get better. What's going on, everyone? Hopefully, everybody is having a great day. It's Friday. Life is good. And you know the life of a trader, obviously. Happy that it's Monday, but also happy that it's Friday. Ice cold beers on deck for tonight. Hopefully, you guys are staying profitable. It's been, uh, it's been an exciting one, man. It's been an exciting one. And uh, I got a little, I, I'm actually sending, uh, you know, a little bit of a surprise to everybody. I rejigged my top left monitor, which you guys can't see. But if you want to share that other screen, Prad, uh, there we go. Look at that, man. So I got, I got the flag there. These are charts. I got charts here, and uh, you know, uh, I, I thought that was kind of funny. This is some motivation for myself. It looks good. Um, I like it. Yeah, guys. So I got like all my charts all set up over here. Extra nice, uh, nice little motivation. Thought that was kind of funny. Anyways, yeah, lots of uh, lots of exciting trades today. You know, uh, uh, Amazon, Intel. They were obviously coming uh, coming in hot in the morning. Uh, I think uh, just to start this BZFD from yesterday. You know, finally gave the fade from 280 all the way to two. So here myself, kind of scaling into the short just at, towards the end of the show, and then, uh, you know, basically covering into the flush. I'm just like, ah, I was so exhausted. I'm like, give me my money. I'll take it and go. But I should have really held for the two move. That was like a 30% retracement. Talk about A-plus on that day. Lots of liquidity. Um, you know, the only thing you got to do is obviously pay for shorts, which are relatively cheap because, you know, it's 60 mil float. But how about that three level today? The over-under there is, uh, is something special, man. You know, this morning, popping all the way to call it 313 area, uh, quickly reversing, and look at the volume spike. That is the telltale sign. You know, tape was teleporting around. You know, it's a 60 mil float. How is it doing moves like that? And then you see a bunch of ones on the book. I'm like, what is going on over here? So uh, no trades on it for myself, but I was watching it, and I was like, what is going on? And then, uh, you know, speaking to a trader behind me, who was looking at that 296 level, and where was it? It was actually uh, right over, somewhere over here. I think this may be a dark pool, but essentially we're coming back. Yeah, yeah, right over here. So this is actually a dark pool that printed 298, but the high of this move was 296. And it was kind of funny because, you know, it was looking for that, that over under three, the same way that it gave it just over here, just now uh, at 1055. It was looking for it at, at 1003 and a trader behind me was sitting offering 296, and these algos, digital warfare, see that and go, no, no, 296 is now no, the top, no. and then it fades all the way back to the downside. So, yeah, man, you know, it's digital warfare. It is what it is. You need to react. This is why I don't like sitting on the book when I'm kind of trading these things, just waiting for the areas and then taking the fills. Giving that over under three again, flushing all the way to 270, and I'm almost asking myself, is there room for one more pop and drop? Pop, drop, and roll. I mean, when you zoom out on this thing, you see the setup that it's giving you today. Uh, you know, three is the level. It could not make a higher high. I would, not be ex I would not be surprised, though, if we go over the high of the day, do a lot of volume, and then, you know, that's the final exit. It's, uh, it's going to be tough for them to match the volume from yesterday. It was like, what, like 200, 200, 300 million from yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's a wide range, but like maybe 200 million from yesterday, give or take. And uh, I don't think they're going to have that. I mean, it's Friday. You know, if I was an algo and I was kind of in this and I needed an exit move, um, you know, I would, I would be terrified right now. I'd be looking for that exit. Shaking so, yeah, booties. shorts potentially could be good there. I'm looking to short this thing if we can actually get over 320 um, and then go back down. So that's my kind of idea on that one. Currently short Intel at 28. I'm um, just looking for covers now back into VWAP. All right, guys. I was so excited to be in this trade and on the show that I forgot to put on my mic. So uh, I'm mic'd up, ready to go, and in in this AI long. Uh, AI had a nice little move on it earlier. We, we had that basically that parabolic move upward and I just basically took it on the retracement here, added, 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 and then wait for that move up. Got out, broke VWAP, but very, very, you know, short, 
break of VWAP and it created higher lows right above VWAP and now kind of rejecting on that bounce. So I'm scaling into this one. Uh, long technically at 60s, we're at 52, so out of the money currently, but looking for that bounce up and that VWAP hold, I'll be building a position into this. So far, you know, three ads and building. So I like I like this, I like this long. You heard uh, Brendo talk about it this morning. The guys were talking about it on the morning show. AI is all the hype right now, whether you like it or not, whether it makes sense to you, whether you find it silly, it doesn't matter. That's what's moving the markets and we want to play with what's moving. So we're, we're in this name. Um, obviously Meta getting a huge bump today too off that AI news. Uh, look at that huge wake up. I mean, like you don't typically see these types of wicks on these big cap names unless they're in earnings. Um, and then we got a big move up to 152.50 before we're tracing, but we're not far off that high. Uh, we are closing in on that 151 quickly here on Meta. Uh, it's retracing more aggressively than the market is. So showing its relative strength. Uh, yeah, inching in, continuing to print newer highs on the day here. 5087 is Meta. This one is moving and it's moving quickly. Uh, some volume backing that up as well. So. We'll keep an eye on these trades. Uh, doesn't look like anything else. Oh, well, Tesla, what am I saying? Tesla is moving to the high side now, continuing to print uh, newer highs, 167.99. That's the high, so we're at 168 store, a series of higher lows, a series of higher highs, an upward channel, a VWAP hold, all the right signs. Uh, you know, maybe they're duping everybody in. I like what I see though, so let's go ahead and play those calls. I'm gonna be looking for here a retracement on Tesla to kind of hold that upward channel. So we can just draw that quickly. Any any retracement maybe into that 167, 166 and a half, I'll be looking to go along there until it doesn't work out. So that's a plan. Um, I don't typically trade Tesla, but yeah, that's the plan at the moment. All right, back to this uh, AI trade. We're getting a nice little bounce off this level. So it's holding that channel and that holding view up for now. So now we're in the money on this one. I'm looking to take profits through the break of 80. So we're gonna go ahead and set some resting orders here. Uh, there we go, and we're gonna take, yeah, you know what, I'm not gonna wait till 80. I'll take it out at 79, because I'm feeling whimsical. So we'll sit there and wait for that one. But you know, let's not count our chickens before they hatch, because it's still range bound, and we need a break of the range, really, uh, to have a trade on. So uh, I'm watching Meta, I'm watching AI, and I'm watching uh, Tesla. Those will be my trades, unless uh, something else comes up, guys. Uh, Sean McKenna. Uh, wants me to look at Grom, rejection off two and a half after a 50 cent move. Sure, let's have a look at Grom real quick here. Let's take off um, Holo, that hasn't done much today. Had that one on earlier. Okay, woo, look at this move, big boy move up on Grom. That's a lot of volume supporting that move. Nice little base around two. Then you have an immediate pop up to two and a half. Do we have a headline here on Grom? Let's have a look real quick. G-R-O-M, I can type, I promise. All right, here we go. G-R-O-M, I'm not seeing a newer headline. I had some stuff coming in on the 25th and the 24th, nothing. Today is the 27th. So no new catalyst, un unless maybe Brendo can get back to us with something. It is really moving here, creating higher highs. This one's going to the high side. So what did he say off 250? You know what, it's not a bad short, but you know, I would never take that short. That's more of a, you know, parabolic trader short. I'm, I'm looking for a retracement. Uh, and I'll get in on a, like a one or two minute retracement and then maybe I'll do it once or twice uh, for you know continuations up, but I'm not gonna punch up at these highs. I'm gonna look for some red. That ain't my style. Have a, have a look at Grom. I think you might like that one. Oh, yeah, so I'll, I'll take a look there in, yeah. a, uh, in a second. So yeah. uh, just kind of going with uh, everybody uh, uh, having a laugh at, if I was an algo, uh, yeah, man, I am not an algo. I'm definitely a human. And uh, thank you to everybody saying, um, <laughs> You know, uh, uh, somebody was like, oh, Sharif and Luca, you guys are looking sharp today. Guys, I got a haircut. But my, hey. you know, I, it's, I wake up late, I'm, I'm scrambling, and I love this hat, to be honest, the Trader TV hat. Pretty, uh, pretty solid hat, man, I love it. But yeah, nice little fresh haircut for the weekend, going to a party, uh, living large. I love uh, it. Large and in charge. But anyways, guys, I want to say very quickly, with the kind of algo theme in mind, <laughs> if you're not following me on Instagram, feel free to. This is my thing. I can't click it right now because I need to sign in. But I'm the one with less followers, if you're wondering. But I posted this on my story. It is kind of funny. Um, you know, this is, uh, this is from Bloomberg. And it's, we asked ChatGPT 
to make a market making uh, market beating ETF. And here's what happened. And I'll essentially summarize it for you guys. Oh, this is the be AI said it's too hard. We can't do it. <laughs> really? We can't do it. Uh, you huh. know. So uh, yeah, man, uh, take your bet. It's digital warfare. Anything is possible. Even AIs are having trouble uh, beating the market. So you know that's why I love the market. You know, you kind of put your money where your mouth is, and uh, you put your money where your mouth Luca. is. And uh, go from there, yeah. Somebody wants to know where you can get that hat from. Uh, you can get this hat from the, uh, the, the store. The from store, the which YouTube. is on oh, YouTube, I, right? I don't know. Uh, yeah, from yeah. the YouTube store. You basically go somewhere, there's a store. You buy the hat, there's like a sweater. Um, yeah, I got, everyone's laughing at me. I don't oh, know. Okay. I don't we're we're exactly, going to show them on my uh, screen here. Hold on. Can, Bears versus yeah, Bros will do it. I'll pull it up go. right There now. you go, guys. Click that yeah. link if you want it. There's a hat, there there's go. a sweater. Um, Here, we're the sweater's pretty live. awesome. Get it a size bigger. That's what I would say. So, like, if you think you're a medium, right. you know, large, extra large, because, you know, potentially could shrink. Exclamation um, mark merch in yeah. chat. Yes. There you go, guys. And, uh, and yeah, the hat, is, the hat is solid, too. But, you know, anyways, yeah, so uh, we so asked AI. So here it is, AI. Luca. Sorry to interrupt yeah, go, you. go ahead. Store, guys. At the home page, you click, you click store. Here it is. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Hoodies, uh, sweaters, mugs, T-shirts, phone cases, you name it. The hat's there, too. Yeah, so, you know, go there if you want the merch. The merch is great. Uh, I vouch for it. I'd rather be trading. The sweater is, uh, is pretty pretty sick, you know, black, white. Don't know if we have any other, co other, other colors. Uh, yeah, black mm. and white, but, yeah, pretty solid there. But, uh, yeah, you know, the AI, um, you know, can you beat the market? It's like, no, it's a challenge. You guys need to do what's right for you. I think you guys can read the post on, on Bloomberg, but it's essentially saying, like, you know, you need to do with whatever makes sense to you. And I'm just laughing because I'm like, you know, AI is Getting like, I can do anything. Also, AI, hmm. you know, can't beat the market. So, I mean, obviously, there's other AIs out there, like the, uh, the tape teleporting AIs that uh, happen on uh, BZFD and GROM with the flush. And I know you were like, Luca, I know you're going to like this one. And I'm um, watching this flush in the background. Uh, I'm like, you know I what? I knew you would like yeah, that because that's, that's your style. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's great. So great call yeah. out there. I am letting it go. I'm just not like dabbling. But yeah, if we do get back up, break, I kind of like this uh, for a little bit of a move. Um, you know, that's actually a pretty solid level, like the high being 244. So yeah, just breaking that level, a um, little bit of an over under, then flushing back into VWAP. You know, volume is always the tell. Volume kind of spiked and dropped off really, really quick. You know, does it have, uh, I love these kind of Friday moves. Oh, when, baby. Uh, you know, fr it's Friday. It's you fri get the move up. I just imagine that the Friday up and down moves are, are the better moves. Oh. So, yeah, good call on that one, Sharif. Uh, congratulations to anybody that had that one. BZFD is actually, I'm noticing that I'm getting the fill. So me and Sharif were actually talking about this before. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like, okay, the three level over under. And you I'm like, no, 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 what I want, I want a break of 350. Because four is my next level on the daily, and I'll drag it over for everybody to see very quickly. You know, four is, uh, this is obviously, you know, big move from yesterday, multi-day run. Yesterday, my level was like 220. We're now above that. So the next level that I have on the daily, and I'm just going to draw yeah, a line here, is, nice. is uh, you know, three. And this is, this is more of an area, but it's like 350 into four. So I really like that 350 into four kind of you know, general area for the fade. We're not, we're not close there. So this is, uh, you know, this is me short with not too much size because I really want it to go higher. You know, if it goes back down to three, I'll, I'll basically cover this like on a three flush, uh, you know, but we'll see if this wants to actually get to 350, maybe later in the day, uh, 370, and then look for that same setup from yesterday where we kind of ran all the way up and then faded all the way down. I would love that again today. Go all the way up, fade all the way back down. That'll be solid. So that's basically what I'm looking for. A little bit of update on Intel. I took that short. I'm just covering my best cover on this. I'm going for uh, 2750, which is essentially VWAP. So if that does print 50s, I will be fully out of that position. And uh, yeah, definitely going to look for a few other trades. You know, Meta, that 150 is pretty interesting. NVIDIA at the 200 level, pretty interesting. Um, we'll see if we get some AMD fades as well. But yeah, definitely watching a few things. And Amazon, uh, over 100, man. I've been waiting for that trade. Uh, Amazon definitely interesting here, so we'll see what we get uh, going for the rest of the day. All right, guys, Meta is printing a new high, 151.12. That one continues to be relatively strong. Um, I'm, w I'm waiting for a retracement back to VWAP or maybe back to that 150-ish area. Um, I don't want to get it on the breakup, but like, look at this. You, ha you have an, a bit of an upward channel here, to be fair, obviously, because you are getting that... Uh, uh, you're creating new highs. It must be an upward channel. So here we go. So I'm looking for anything around that 150, 149, 75. If come back down there, retest VWAP maybe. 
Uh, if VWAP moves up, I'll move up with VWAP as well. But no play on it yet. Continuing to watch. Likewise with Tesla, we want uh, kind of a retracement onto this trend line here. Maybe a dip into 187 or, oh, sorry, 167 or so. So like an 80 or, you know, maybe a little bit more because Tesla seems to be a bit more volatile. So um, those are the plays I'm looking for at the... The, this moment in time, though, the only long I'm in, I know it doesn't show on the positions board, but I am long 60s on AI. We're printing 70s. I'm building my position into this. We have three ads. I'm looking to take my first profit, which would break high of day at 70. Eight. Okay, so we're printing 70s now on 71s. We're moving up here. It's a bit of a slow mover. It has a tendency to every now and again kind of get a bit parabolic. And by parabolic, I mean like flat 10 pennies or so. There we go. Now we're breaking through the highs here. I get filled. That's a nice one. We're going to drop some cash on this one. Uh, that's a small elk though, guys, because, uh, you know, I... We're still close. There we go. Nice move up. We're breaking through 88s now. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting at 94s to get filled. This is a bigger profit taker here at 94. Um, we, this was 100% position, but I was going to go even more because this is warranted, in my opinion. It's a hold of view up. It's a good headline. It's a bigger name. Uh, it's more likely to trend, and it's a bigger float. So you're going to have less of these you know, erratic movements up and down. And I can build my position into this one and kind of trust the levels a bit more because it is a, a more traveled stock, if I could put it that way. Um, so I'm going to wait. I'm not going to get excited here that we're taking profits, even though we're now we're printing 92s. We're two pennies away from getting a big boy fill here. 93s, 94s. We get the fill. Money, we're spending money, the money on money, this one already, money, man. Money. This is a nice money, little move money, up. Money. All right, so now we got to test 17s. 17s is at our front door. Uh, so now the next little area, we're going to take some out. Uh, how much are we going to take out first and foremost? We'll take out that much, and we'll we'll wait at 17s, 1707s. Uh, we re we're, tra bleh, we're retracing here into the mid-80s, but to be expected after that uh, big move up. But this one looks like it's more inclined to go up. I'm not interested in shorting this one at all it's a grinder to the high side guys ai luca yeah guys i'm actually just reading a a, a quote here that's actually pretty funny from from another trader uh, i'd rather wish i was in a trade than wish i wasn't in a trade um yeah that that's a that's a banger let that one just Very sit for true. a second absolutely because uh you know sometimes and it's kind of funny you know when you throw me a ticket and you're like look at this one I'm like, Sharif doesn't know it, but he might cause me a lot of stress here Sorry, because then bro. I'm going to get into it. No, no, it's, it's, yeah. all, it's all obviously, uh, you know, rather You're be trading here. So uh, I'm basically looking at a few of these levels. I'm wondering if 200 level on NVIDIA um, is something that I can look. I was pulling up FOXO uh, for somebody that was asking about it, but let me just quickly look at this uh, 200 level on NVIDIA. I feel like, you know, initially the, uh, the 20150 was okay for the fade. And I'm just kind of like, let me just zoom out here to see uh, where we are. Um, this is a little bit of a choppy area, but giving a little bit of a VWAP bounce, not super clean, but I'm almost wondering if we dip down to that 99.50, 199.50, I'm going to try a little bit of a bid there. So let's see if I can get that fill, risking off, give or take uh, 199, and then go from there. Um, Intel is, uh, you know, continuing to flush. So yeah, looking for that final kind of flush through 27.50. That's the money fill. That'll be the best fill for myself. BZV, uh, FD still not doing anything, so uh, yeah, relaxed and chilling on that one. Meta as well. Everything, obviously, you know, the market pulled back, um, but in the morning, very strong up move, kind of consolidating just around the 50 period, now going back towards VWAP. You know, these names are a little bit, of, uh, a little bit stronger. I'm kind of sad that I missed the long here on Meta, but yeah, 150, uh, sort of 150 over under, give or take. I'm kind of looking at that area over there. And I want to pull Amazon back up here to see where this is. Uh, maybe a potential uh, over under 102. If we can get over 102, I do like to, the idea of starting shorts at like, you know, 102.10, 102.20, kind of scaling into that for a move back down. So we'll see what happens um, on that one as well. If we get the fill, somebody was asking me, Luca, thoughts on XOM from before. Uh, let me just have a quick look here to see XOM uh, where we are today because, you know, obviously yesterday, um, you know, very strong up move, breaking the 115, kind of bouncing off and then floating to the upside. And then today sort of, you know, falling off of from where the highs were from yesterday. So that's 1750, uh, give or take. It's an area, not a hard level, but 1750 could not break, sort of fading back to the downside. What I would look for is if XOM can really kind of, you know, continue this sort of downtrend that it's making, I really do like a, a 115 bid. And the reason I say that is because 115 all-time high from yesterday, the break was strong, it held, it moved to the upside. 
do we get a 115 bounce hold and then kind of go back into VWAP level into the 116? So I'm gonna throw a bit out. I mean, it's pretty far away now. You know, it does it fill your question? Uh, I'm not really too sure to see if that comes to fruition, but uh, we're gonna see Tesla is at 169. Okay, this is, I even said this to the boys in the back. I was like, I'm shorting Tesla 169.69. <laughs> so let me just uh, let me just get that get that order out there. One sixty nine sixty nine. Oh baby. Um, let's see if that wants to fill for a short. I think it's a good trade because kind of that one seventy level is sort of uh, one seventy overhead. This thing was at like one sixty today. So uh, we'll see if I get that fill and uh, and go from there. All right, guys. AI on seventeen dollars door again. Another rejection, but you have here a general area of accumulation. And this is kind of what I look for when we want to break these uh, these whole dollar resistance levels. So, like in this trade, I'm long 44s. So we're over 50 pennies in the money on this. We're waiting here at 07s to get filled. Here comes 17 again. There's some size on the book here on 17. It's a nice mover today. It's done seven and a half million shares, which this stock typically doesn't do. I'll tell you quickly here what the average volume on AI. Okay, so it's 1.8 1 million shares, 1.9 million shares. There we go, we get the break of 17. 17 is no longer a level, but then you know we're gonna have a lot of people initiating shorts at this level, and that's why we get the dip down and people taking profit, obviously, through that 17. But there we go, the buyers step up again, and we're gonna get that back and forth action above and below 17, but we're sitting at 1707s, and I'm not taking my, uh, I'm not adjusting my profit taker. Oh, okay. I like when Pratt talks into my ear. It's very exciting. Um, anyway, looks like we got Brendo at the big desk with social sentiment. Okay, so we'll keep going. Okay. Hey guys, I'm mostly green board to show you at this point this morning. So far, as All far right, as man. what's being discussed on, on social media, uh, if you're seeing this board for the first time, very simple representation of uh, comments that are being made for individual names on social media platforms. Uh, the more intense the green, the more positive the sentiment. Obviously, the other way for negative as far as red is concerned. If you see gray like this, however, just means there's no real clear direction on uh, which direction, positive or negative. Uh, the comments are coming. So the overall market kind of flat. Tesla here, very, very positive. As you just heard from Sharif there, BBBY back to the upside. Uh, did fail at that uh, high from yesterday or that uh, resistance point from late in the day yesterday. Uh, BuzzFeed making a move through that day high as well. There's Mullen as well back higher. GNSQs to name a few here, but mostly green here so far, guys. Back to you. Oh, we're just getting excited. Well, I'm getting excited over here because we just got the fill, baby, through 1707s on AI. Now, this is up almost 13.5%. This one is pumping to the high side off that AI news. Obviously, we're going to ride this one like a, like a horse. I don't know. We're going to ride it. We're going to ride it. That's all we know. We're, we're still holding. Um, we're not holding a lot anymore, 10% of the position, but we're going to ride this one through. This one is pumping through 17 now at 17 and a quarter. This one's going, going. I'm pumped about this one. I guess this is where I'm going to take my profit here. There we go. So we get, we get, oh, that's an ugly wick there. Okay. So that's kind of anticlimactic. I thought I was going to get it up here. Anyway, so we're out of that position. Uh, nice little ride from 40s. Where do we get 40s? Okay, so that's not too bad of a position there. Uh, yeah, hey, if you're still holding, good on you. It looks like it's got more to the high side. Let's see what uh, the daily looks like on this bad boy. Okay, let's load this up. So it looks like we've been moving lately already. Oh, this is wrong. Okay, excuse me here. There we go. Yeah, we have. We have been a, in right, a nice little strong. uptrend on AI. It looks like we got that bounce off. I want to say 10, a little above 10, 10, 10 or so. And it's been one nice move to the high side. It really got propelled today, breaking through this 14, 15. I want to say 15 resistance. It broke through like nobody's business. You had another area of resistance here around 15 and three quarters, which is this peak. Uh, breaking through that. We got the 200, though. This is the daily. So we have the 200 coming up. 18, I want to say, by the time we get there, it's at 18.04 at the moment. That's gonna be an, an interesting area of resistance. And then you have a series of peaks here uh, that we all we have to look at as well, as well as consolidation areas like this one here at around exactly where we're at now, 17 and a half. Uh, well, we're close to 17 and a half. We're at 17 and a quarter, but we'll probably be there shortly. Yeah, we're gonna encounter a lot of resistance up here. No one's bones about it. This one's made a real big retracement down. Look how high we were in January 2021. Guys, we got up to 183 on this. We're talking about a stock that bounced off $10. So this one's got ample room to the upside, but probably a lot of bag holding. ZFD. 
Um, ZFD Lucas saying, go ahead, brother. No, no, go ahead. Share okay, your screen. So, um, sure. I can talk, though. BZFD uh, uh, going up here uh, to the Woo! 350 level. So, yeah, it's kind of share interesting. Share my screen, Pride. Um, yeah, yeah, man, show Sharif's screen there. Yeah, uh, yeah BZFD 350. Uh, this, is, this is now interesting. This is what I wanted to see. I'm now super excited. Uh, I'm going to be patient with this one. So Intel gave a pop. And I tried to go for the 351, couldn't get it. I'm going to get out of the rest of Intel. But, yeah, locking in a very nice winner on that one, covering the majority, um, you Intel. know, in the 60s on the scalp. Somebody was like, oh, Luca, scalp Intel. So, basically, trying to, I was trying to get out, you know, down over there um, at 27, yeah, on the VWAP area. But I was bidding, like, 51s, and I, I didn't get it. So, then I'm just get, getting out the rest over there. Yeah, just a heads up. But, yeah, BZFD. Uh, you know, to go back quickly to BZFD, yeah, sure. yeah. and uh, this is this is teamwork is to truly it? make the dream work. I don't know why here. it's not showing it to me. Uh, I just loaded it. Yeah, so BZFD is uh, is extra exciting here. So I do want it to go higher. Uh, basically, taking a, another fill, so not average 336. We'll see. We'll see if that 355 offer wants the fill. I mean, I do really like this. You know, 375 is like the better area. This is like a nice up move now. So 375, 85, 95 into that four level. And then if it runs four, you know, probably get some stops there over under four, risk off 420. That's basically what I'm thinking at this current moment. So we'll see what it wants to do. You know, if it fades from here, it fades from here. I got what I got. And then I'm still going for the, wow, uh, the three cover. Too. So yeah, it is uh, kind of popping, you know, doing a little bit of a volume spike. But again, so that, that three, yeah, the daily, yeah, like the 375 into four is like the interesting area. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, uh, excited about that one. And then lastly, if you want to go quickly over to Tesla, yeah. uh, Leanne is saying, uh, Luca, yeah, Tesla 169.69. Yeah, like uh, it's, uh, the Tesla short is working. It's like, how can it not work? Especially, uh, this is Elon going, Musk's company. We're talking going. 69. Do I have 420 shares? I will not share the answer to that one. But, uh, you know, you guys, you guys can take a guess on that. Uh, <laughs> where am I covering this? To be honest, I don't know. Let me see the chart. Maybe yeah. if we can actually dip back down into 169, I'll go for like a dollar. I'm sort of loosely risking off. Like, it's spending a lot of time in this vicinity, and I'm kind of risking off of 170. I don't have a stop at 170, uh, but I'm going to kind of watch how that 170, you know, sort of giving me the feel of an over-under. You know, maybe we break, run, pop, drop. But if we drop right now, I am going for like a 169 cover. So, you know, give me 69 cents on that win. I'll take it and uh, move on with my life and see if we get a couple other trades going. <laughs> Another heads up, Amazon is now approaching the 102 area. So, yeah, 102 Amazon, looking okay, for the sure. over-under on that one. We'll see uh, if it wants to pop and then start taking some shorts on that as well. All right, guys, let's have a look here and see what we're looking at, guys. We've kind of just assisting here at the moment. All right, so wow, AI going to the high side, rejecting off that 1730 though, but still above 17 and you know, you gotta basically, I mean, where do you give this to? Let's have a look here quickly, just give me a moment. Where are we gonna do our analysis from? Yeah, you look, there's an interesting area here at that 1675, but ahead of that obviously is a whole dollar at 17. Ideally, you wanna see it hold 17. So I, if you're gonna get in on a dip here, I would say, you know, scale in. Don't put your full position at 17 and then maybe have something waiting around that 16 and three quarter area in case it dips down there because there is a clear level of support. A nice little consult peak here, a consolidation area, the high end of a consolidation area here at around that 1675. There we go. Now we're getting back into 17s. We're at printing O2s at the moment. So a big boy flush down off that. How high do we get there? 32s we got. And so now we're down 30 pennies back into O2s, but 17 holding for the moment uh, which should be interesting yeah we're gonna get a bounce here looks like at least for the moment off that whole dollar level you know better safe than sorry in my books especially if you're up and you don't want to get back money I would take a half position again at that 17 and then another maybe whatever position half quarter whatever you want to scale into at that 16 and three quarters so that's my play on um, on AI now having a look at some of these big tech names because they really mm. they really are worth mentioning uh, you have Meta continuing to print higher, higher local highs here, 151.36. We're at 16s at the moment. You have Tesla continuing to print to the high side. Basically, 170 is in our sites, 169.94. That's uh, where we're at now at Tesla. We're printing half dollars right now, 49s, 50s, etc. But these have been very aggressive moves up. But you haven't seen 
that kind of response on this retracement from the market. So there have been secular names. It hasn't been a general market response. Uh, we're 77s here on the ES March contract while we printed as high as 93. So testing that 4100. You know, I've talked about this uh, going back uh, a few weeks now on uh, the bigger macro picture with respect to this, uh, you know, at least this bullish trend that we're on. Let's not call it a market or anything quite yet, but let's bring in the indexes here to have a look at the indexes, see where we're closing and if we have broken any newer highs. So this is the SPX index, not the ES March contract. This is the index itself. And you'll see on this chart that we really have respected this downtrend line. And this goes back a ways, man. This goes back a year and almost two months now. So it's, it is, and you know, the, wow, the general rule with these trend lines is basically the more time they touch, the more, and the more times they reject off that line, the, the more weight you, they should be given. The more, break you know, it, a breakout through them means more. So now we've had closing, we, like basically we, we got, we broke it, but we, on an intraday basis. Now we're closing above it consistently. So that's what I'm looking at here. I'm looking at this possible breakup. And then next, I'm looking for a close above that 4100 level on the SPX. You need a close above that to create a new high. Oh, yeah, I think that would be a really interesting indicator. Obviously, you know, we may have CPI next week completely change things, right? Coming in hot, and we have all these earnings dates that, are, that could affect things. So for the moment, it looks bullish, and I think that the market, you know, is taking things in stride, you know, thinking, okay, you know, we're kind of, uh, we're meeting estimates, so maybe a soft landing is possible, and so that's why you're having this bullish trend. So uh, nice little move on some of these bigger names. Luca, what do you got over there? I am trying to figure out. Uh, yeah, guys, just heads up, Tesla 170. Looks pretty interesting for anybody that's interested in that. I, uh, I'm not going to put a stop at 170.01. I'm going to let it break and watch what it wants to do here. Woo! You know, do we break and, and pop and drop and roll and, and whatever. I basically, I wish I could show you a chart, but I basically covered some into that flush. And now I'm sort of holding this to watch, you know, where do we go? Do we keep going uh, to the north side? Do we break in, do we instantly break 170.50 and keep going? Or do we stop? Um, yeah, I would love to know how to get rid of uh, one of these. I don't know why there's two charts here, but um, okay, yeah. I, um, <laughs> I'm having a day, man. I'm having a day Pr with these things. Okay. Proudly come over. Uh, it's yeah. all good, man. So basically, Tesla, I think we're gonna event. We could eventually flate. Click on this chart. This one. Yeah, and then click on that button. This button over here. Okay, beautiful. Go. Okay, hey. here we go. Yeah, I'm not a. I'm not. A, I don't use Trading View. Yeah. Uh, if you guys haven't noticed. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, here we go. So I'm still holding that but essentially covered a little bit into that flush. There was, what, what's notable about Tesla, which I kind of missed, I didn't mention this, but there was a buyer at 169.50 for 900 lots and it filled it and then it kind of held and then we ran into the 170 level at which point had, you know, one, 2,000 lots, give or take. Like it is a relatively, uh, you know, l newer newer level. So yeah, let's see, let's see where this, uh, you know, wants to go. It kind of looks like a very nice, healthy, strong uptrend now that I'm looking at it. Um, so yeah, maybe going to cover the rest of that position. Probably going to take the L if I cover here, but I'm going to be very patient for maybe a 170, and then I'll, I'll end flat on that one. But for the time being, we are going to go to uh, Brendo at the big desk for European close. Hey guys, as we wrap up the week here for the European markets, uh, a bit of a mixed board as we're seeing as far as North America is concerned as well. We started pretty positive, come all the way back. Uh, a few of these basically flat on the day, just waiting for a few other final prints to come through. But uh, FTSE 300 right now closing in positive territory. The overall, however, uh, stock 600 did get there, 0.12 to the upside. It was red for most of the session, but very, very mixed. Italy the best off here, 0.72 to end the week to the upside. Word there, it looks like. Okay, but hey, North American markets are positive, and that's what we're trading. So uh, we'll take that. All right, guys. Tesla is just continuing to print new highs. Apple's printing new highs. 145.65 now on Apple. It hasn't been the strongest lately, but it's been weaseling its way up. Let's have a look at the daily chart on this one. Yeah, look at that. It's been kind of deceptive. You know, it's still under the 200 day moving average, right? So not the biggest bull move, obviously. So 125 looks like it rejected there. Uh, 145, let's see what it does at that 150 and that uh, 200 day moving average, we'll see. Uh, AI held 17, so this is what we've been talking about. I still don't have uh, a long play on here, even though I, I said maybe the, the dip off 17 was money. Uh, you know, I'm, I'll wait, I'll wait on this one. I'm just not really sure about it and there's no point really losing any money. Yeah, I could have a, 
a stop right below 17 or give it like three or four pennies. I mean, I can do that, but I'm just, I'd rather set up a little bit better than it is right now. So I'll continue to watch this one, but I like where it's going. It's obviously, you know, gonna give me opportunity still. It's a slow grinder, like I said, so a bit more safe. Um, geez, everything's moving to the high side. Really, they're everything on right now, except, except maybe Amazon. Um, it's kind of flat a little bit. This one was strong earlier on, uh, to be honest. It was the, like you heard Neil take this one. He wrote it for like several dollars. But, you know, since then, it's kind of been these other names. It's been Tesla, it's been Apple, a little bit of Microsoft now uh, trying to get off a little bit. It's been slower than the other ones. That's why probably it's retracing a bit more. Google likewise as well, you know, 40 pennies off the high. So I don't have a trade in any of these names at the moment. Um, I've been keeping my eye on BuzzFeed, obviously. How come uh, my BuzzFeed chart is gone? There we go. BuzzFeed, yeah, so 350. Uh, I don't have any trades on this one. I'm gonna wait. I got shorts ready for it. So if this one uh, breaks below VWAP to the low side and then gives me some sort of consolidation sideways move, I'll be ready, but I'm not gonna try to preempt this one. I lost a little bit of money on, uh, I think, MOGL or MGLO or whatever it was called yesterday, I'm trying to preempt some of these shorts above VWAP. And even when they would get below VWAP, they weren't sufficiently below. Like, look how many times um, BuzzFeed has kind of broken below VWAP there uh, and then immediately retrace. And look at that big boy move up. So it's gonna have to be a sustained move uh, and kind of consolidation sideways with uh, uh, under VWAP with um, BuzzFeed for me to take anything there. So what's the chat talking to? Talking about LCID people are saying, okay, so Lucid quietly probably having a day here. Let's have a look at the Lucid chart. Yeah, it's a bit slow, but it's up. Um, up two and uh, three quarter percent, a bit of a slow mover. I think Rivian was doing a little bit better. Not much of a pop on Lucid, to be honest. The 891 bottom, 926 top. So uh, not, not much of a mover. Rivian, I think, was the better play, at least earlier it was. I don't know if it's retraced at the moment. Yeah, so Rivian was a nice little bottom there. Eight, I think 1814 and then an 1878 top. But it looks like it's lost a little bit of its steam. Hey, retracing here, though. So testing day's highs. Um, again, with this market move up, looks like it's moving in tandem with the market, Luca. Yep. Uh, yep, 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 yep. We'll see uh, We'll see what happens here. We'll see where things go. Um, just looking here back at, uh, yeah, kind of like, obviously Tesla's very strong, but I'm willing to, uh, this thing keeps falling out, uh, willing to, uh, we'll see where it goes, man. Maybe it goes to 200 today and I get my face ripped off and uh, life moves on, man. Doesn't really matter. BuzzFeed, let's check a look at this one. It's not really, eh, volume's kind of slow. So it actually gave a nice little bit of a fade and I was noticing that I was in the money on it and it was okay, but it's not right, it's not there yet, right? Like, let's see if this wants to, I don't want, like if it's slow, it's slow, right? Uh, yeah, sure, make me a short. Um, if it's slow, it's slow, but yeah, let's see if this actually wants to, I don't think it broke 55s. So 355, uh, what's wrong? No, 350. Yeah, 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 okay, well, Sharif's asking me, uh, he's like, hey, do you want to spro? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, make a nice, nice little short there. Um, okay, yeah, so I got shorts on board. I'm getting a short spro delivered to me. 355 on BuzzFeed didn't break to the upside yet. It needs to break for this to be good, so I'm not going to add to it yet. The, the thing is with these small cap, you know, called small cap, whatever, but when it's, when it's moving up like this and it's very, very slow, like you need the extension move to the upside for the, sh like the parabolic extension move, that's the short, then it fades back down, so it's like up and down, like that is the money fills, that's what I want to see. If this thing is like, you know, slow grinding and then it's like there's a level there, like right now, if I was a robot, I'd be like, how can I fill this order to then rip it against the order to potentially make that order cover so that I can offset it both ways, right? So uh, I just kind of feel like that. And, you know, the same thing that we see, it doesn't matter if it's small caps or large caps, you don't really get the crazy move until it clears out the other side. So as an example on BuzzFeed right here, which is, which is a good example, and let me just uh, drag this over for everybody to see, you know, it doesn't go down until it goes up very fast and then down. It doesn't go up until it goes down very fast and then up, right? So right now it's kind of slow and, and consolidating. I really wanna see it go up really fast into like 380, 390. That's the money fill for like the up and, and then back down and then back into like the 320. So if I can get 50 cents from that, I'm gonna wait. Uh, my position right now is okay. I'm willing to let it, you know, go up and then come back down. Unfortunately, I didn't get Amazon, so I guess this thing didn't go over the uh, the 102 level. Um, just briefly, it went like 102.01 over here, then kind of back down and then sort of flushing down. So, you know, when you see a little bit of a setup like this, 
where it's, uh, uh, let me just kind of zoom out um, to make, make kind of give the example here. So obviously Amazon very, very strong today, right? And then giving you the over, under, and now consolidating, right? So sort of consolidating initially, running up, running back down, and now what I say to myself is, the, and where, where's the line again? Um, draw a nice little line here. You know, this is that like interesting area at like 102. So like 102 is like the over under. So then when, if it goes over again, that's where I want the shorts. I want it at the over under spot. I don't want to, you know, be like, oh yeah, 102, it's a resistance line. So like, let me short it there. And especially not going into the afternoon. Like that is not the plan. The plan is let it go up. I'll short it there. Let it go back down. Then I actually make money. Um, if I short it here and try to cover here, it just doesn't make too much sense. I would rather have that, that whiplash action. So, you know, you can do it on Amazon. You can do it on BuzzFeed. You can do it. Um, you know, this is a repeatable strategy that I look for for myself. Uh, Tesla is kind of uh, giving me the feel that it's maybe struggling a little bit with that one, uh, 172. I mean, eventually we're going to get a move back down. It's just a matter of time as, uh, you know, the, uh, are we going to go to 175, straight to 175? Am I going to get, am I going to get absolutely destroyed? Uh, I know people are laughing, saying like, Luca, Tesla, it's going to go up. Like, it's, it's fine. Don't worry. I'm very, very comfortable. Um, in the position that I have. I'm basically a dollar out of the money right now, give or take. So it's nothing absolutely crazy and I can still kind of uh, let it go. But you know, the only thing that's on my mind is a potential, it's Friday, options that are expiring today. I did not look at the call options outstanding, you know, at 170, 175 and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, is there that uh, potential gamma squeeze action that could happen? You know, is, is Tesla going up right now and then they're gonna come out of nowhere and be like, by the way, guys, uh, remember the robot that we made? Well, it, it has crazy AI, uh, you know, obviously, but like, you know, maybe you didn't know. And then everyone's like, oh my God, Tesla calls to the moon. So I think for myself, <clears throat> I'm gonna watch this at like, you know, 172.50 uh, right now, 173. If it continues to go, I mean, this is the parabolic move that I like to see for like a fade back down. So I do wanna, I do wanna stick with it for the time being um, and then see what happens. And uh, Jason Holland saying, Luca, there's hundreds of thousands of call options in the money and nearly no puts in the money. Yeah, I, I know, I know. But eventually, you know, eventually the liquidity vacuum fade back to the downside maybe comes to fruition, so we'll see what happens. Uh, BuzzFeed is, is going. BuzzFeed is going to the north side now. So yeah, I wanna see, I wanna see this higher, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, you know what, let me, ta let me see if I get some over here. Let's maybe get some uh, over here and then see if I can get some, uh, yeah, maybe scale my orders on this one. Uh, this is definitely like, keep your eye on this, guys, if you're watching this, if you're trading it. You know, uh, when, when I kind of loosely refer to the parabolic move to the upside and downside, what you wanna see in the tape when you're watching it is just kind of tape teleportation. So you wanna see something kind of go up, go crazy, like the tape starts teleporting. Like these are the areas that you should be making decisions because these are the areas where, you know, it could go up, fill you, go back down, or it could go up, you know, fill you, go into an up halt. Um, you know, the, the float's a little bit larger on this one, so I don't really anticipate a potential up halt, but we'll see what happens, man. This 375, there's a little bit of offers over here. Um, I was pretty slow with that. Let's see if I can get some more up there and uh, go from there, man. Yeah, I kind of like 375 into four, so that's pretty, pretty good. For the move back down, we'll see what happens. Maybe it spends a little bit of time here and then uh, goes down. There's somebody offering 375. Okay, I'm getting a little bit more there. Um, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, man, this, uh, this market is on one, man. This market is on one. A uh, little bit of that VWAP, uh, sorry, uh, 50 period bounce back to the north side. You know, 4,100, is it gonna test today? Is it gonna test today? I think so, I we'll it. see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Somebody's saying, hey, Sharif, no short position. What's going on, man? I feel I like I'm the short guy. I'm You're the long close, guy. Dude. I mean, like, the market's yelling long. Hey, I mean, I don't want to get slapped in the face, right? Guys, AI. I feel like, you know what, like a total loser for not taking my own advice and taking that 17 dip. I had a hunch, I said, I had a hunch that it was gonna go down. Why did I have yeah, a hunch? Tesla's Why didn't I just shut my mouth and actually okay. take the trade? No, this this, this would have been a banger. What a 30%, a 30 cent retracement here and we're gonna break the high of the day. 32s, we're sitting at 32s. I'm seeing 30s come in now on the ask. So this one, strong, continuing to be strong. The market's strong, everything's strong. Tesla's flying to the high side, absolutely flying. We're at high of days, 173.44. Fly so high, proudly screaming there in the back. I love it. It's a good mood. Everybody's pumped today, man. Everything's pumping to the high side. We're long, and uh, yeah, I mean, I feel uh, like this is the reversal point now. Okay, so Luca's got an assessment here on uh, Tesla. What's what you got? Yeah, guys. So I'm basically uh, that was like a super super painful move to go through. Um, this is like you know when things extend. 
it's, a, it's at the point that you're like, I need to get out of this, that you probably should add a little more. So I, I, I added to that. We'll see how it goes. If at this point it makes another high, like, I'm, I'm out of the trade. I'm out of the trade because, I mean, I don't know. Are we just going to gamma squeeze all the way to 175? Like, maybe. But here I am. So short, short this now. Uh, added to that. That was a pretty good ad. I wish I could show the charts because they're just not loading right now. I don't know. It's just a problem. But, um, you know, now there's the potential to go back through there. to 172. Yeah, but it's, the problem is every time I change it, it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't, uh, yeah, oh, see, okay, geez. whatever. Anyways, basically average now 172. You guys can see it on the position board, 172.33. Um, so not a dollar out of the money. If I take the L on this, I'll be a dollar fifty loser. But if we actually fade through 172 right now, there is potential for this to go 171 uh, and a 170 test. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Uh, because I have an okay position, I'm gonna cover some of this um, at, at below 172. Um, and then I'm gonna go for 171, 170. We'll see if that wants to happen. Man, as fast as these things go up, they go back down. And when the party's over, when the dealers are hedged, when they get their fill for the offsetting gamma squeeze, you know, there's really no bidders in sight. And, and who wants to catch the, uh, uh, the move now, thinking that it's going higher when this thing started at 160, right? So very strong up move. Uh, we're starting to get into the money on this position now, so pretty good. We'll see what happens. Again, right. I'm going for, uh, I mean, this. you know what, trading view for as good as everybody says that it is. I like our charts better when they work. They're just way better. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm used to. But anyways, let's see if this wants to break. Okay, there it is. So break of 172. And uh, this is solid, go. man. This is solid. Uh, I'm going to start, yeah, I'm just going to start taking fills here. This move is, uh, I mean, yeah, this is solid. Okay, Sharif, I don't know if you got something going. Let me yeah, see yeah, if I can absolutely. Get Kill that trade. Good for this you, all, Luca. I mean, solid. that's that's a solid trade, and he's taking it there. All right, I'm I'm looking at S O U N. This one continues to make moves to the high side here, so we're gonna we're gonna dabble a little bit with it. We're we're looking for the high day break. This is a very small position, so I'll be looking to add to this one if and when it goes up. But it's a two dollar stock. I like it because it's been quite strong. I'm getting it at the wrong time. I'll tell you that. Quite frankly, this isn't the best time. I should have been getting it at that 20s, but I'm looking for a parabolic move up, and it's already 10 pennies in the money. So let's start looking at where we're gonna scalp some out. There we go. We t Oops, no, that's an ad. There we go, okay, so there we go. So let's go ahead and take that. So we, get, we take a little bit of a scalp there. We don't get the top on that, so let's go ahead and see if we can uh, take a little bit more out. Okay, so as it retraces here, where are we looking? I'm looking in front of uh, 40, so we'll put over here and we'll see if we can break that wick top. But you know, it's a, it's a tough one, this one. Uh, what is this, Soundhound? Okay, so uh, see, why is it showing me AI stuff? What is this? Soundhound AI, oh, okay. Oh, okay, it's an enterprise artificial intelligence software company, it provides software service. Okay, so what's the float on this? I guess that's what I really wanna know because I want to see how parabolic it's going to move up. Okay, and I'm not getting information on it, so i got to go to a different source. Anyway, the price action is what it is. We're getting 39s here, so I'm sitting here on the ass. Can I get filled? 39s, there's, a, there's obviously a seller at 39s. We reject for a moment, so I don't get filled there, but it's on the right, on the right path. I just want to know what float it is, and I don't want to look away because I want to know how aggressively it's going to move, and I don't have that information at the moment anyway. Uh, yeah, this one, this one's continuing to move... Uh, erratically here and I'll I'm gonna I'm gonna let it go I just don't like where I got in guys that's all be oh quite frank goodness. uh what's up Luca no 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 nothing nothing it's all good okay. guys um yeah man this uh this 172 on Tesla is pretty interesting I mean it's uh you're getting a lot of bids I'm assuming these are either covers I mean maybe but the the notable Thank thing you. of this move guys the notable thing so I, I did lighten up on the position there, uh, basically uh, locking in uh, locking in the win there. Uh, we'll see what happens next. But anyways, guys, the notable thing of this move is before the 170 break to the upside, this now in hindsight, I can say sort of looks and felt like a gamma squeeze. Um, there was a buyer at 169.50. And when you see, you know, when you see the 170 level and the size at the level, when you look at the call options, somebody in the chat was like, oh, you know, Luca, there's like a lot of call options to the upside. So I didn't do the math on it. That's my own fault, kind of look, looking at it in real time. But if, essentially, you look at the call options, you say, okay, it's Friday. These are expiring today. You know, did, did dealers think when this opened at 160 or yesterday when it flushed to 155, did people think that this had the chance to go above 170 today? I'd say the odds on that were like 5%. So, you know, got to imagine that dealers are unhedged. I think this is a good example of what potentially is a gamma squeeze. We're seeing the volume pick up 
and the volume picked up as soon as we broke the 170. So people are obviously offside when that kind of takes place. And uh, the buyer at 169.50 is sort of that little tell that, you know, who's buying 1,000 lots at 169.50 on a Friday after the move went from 160 to 169? It doesn't make any sense. So like, I mean, the buyer would be, uh, would be a hedge. It would be like a hedge and, you know, obviously, um, options, uh, the tail wags the dog, you know, options definitely move the stock. It's easier. It's just a leveraged environment and, and that's kind of what happens. So for myself, taking the short initially as a joke at 169.69, looking good, taking some out a little bit, then kind of going through the pain to the upside, but really waiting for the extension. And this is what I talk about over and over again, guys. It's like, you want to see the extension, right? Then you have the potential for the fade. So for myself, it's like make sure you're sizing accordingly. If a really, really good opportunity comes up, then you can actually hit it and wait and see what happens. At this point, what I'm thinking is if this goes over 172.80 uh, 80 to the upside, I don't want to be in the trade anymore. And then if it goes there, stops me out, pops, and then drops again, I'll consider the flush back down. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get stopped out here. Um, oh, no, it didn't stop me out. Okay, let me, oh, whoops. Okay, let me just, uh, let me just get out of that. Okay, yeah, so... Basically, uh, that should have stopped me out, but essentially, I don't want to be short this thing anymore, and the level that I was kind of loosely referring to um, is, is 160, uh, sorry, 172, I hope you guys can see why, why I say this. The open and the high of this candle after the flush down is 172.80, and so it kind of consolidated, and my, my worst fear was this. My fear was that if we go back to the upside, the people that are shorting, like myself, are gonna stop out, and then it's just another short squeeze to the high. So I'm not willing to hold it past 173.50 to the upside, and so basically I put my stop at 172.81. Uh, my average was kind of like uh, one, above 173, so it's, I'm still winning on the last piece, but I'm basically taking the win. So I, I take like the win, the win, the win, um, and then I get stopped out. So, you know, now Tesla, as a result, it's like I held like a, a kind of like a loser against me. I was going for the winner, taking some off. I'm looking at my board. I'm down on the name, but I'm not down. It's basically flat. So um, it's, it could have been good. It could have been like really good if we faded back to the downside. It would have been like pretty sick. I would have had a, a really, really good trade on it. But now that we obviously moved to the upside, I take the loser on that trade. Now it looks like we're going to 175. People were like, Luca, man, why don't you just go long? You're always going opposite. I love going for extension plays, personally. So I love like the mean reversion. And you know, it's, it, it was there a little bit. Um, I just do, I just trade my own book, man. I just trade my own book. It's, I don't like going long like at, at the highs of stuff, especially when I come on the show and I look at these things. It's like, I see them at the highs. Like, you know, maybe you could justify a 174 long into 175 because it's going to print the 175 level. But I just feel like there's more potential that if we start to fade, we can actually get back to the moving average. That's kind of more of like a mean reversion. So um, for myself, it's mean reversion. You know, for other people, they, they uh, go with the trend. It's uh, whatever works for you guys. You know, this is kind of something that I find that I can repeat over and over again. That's why I essentially do it. Um, so that's the, uh, that's the logic on that one. Let's go to BuzzFeed quickly. Um, because oh. I am short this thing with a 369 average. I think, yeah, 369, there we go. And, uh, oh man, we actually flushed. I love flushed. how you choose that 69. So. It's, it just, I averaged into it. Mm. You know what, guys, because I'm, uh, man, I'm all over the place here. It flushed to 323. I should have been out of this trade and I didn't cover anything. Okay, that was bad. But basically, um, that, so it's, I mean, at least, you know, hopefully somebody had that. Um, the running into the 380 level, you know, doing a little bit of a volume uh, up here, and it's not, I mean, now that I look at it, it's not really a crazy extension, but it's kind of like a double top. And then reversal, I don't, did this actually go to 323? Like, really? That's, that's kind of crazy. Uh, why don't I have on bids what? out Buzzfeed? on that? Okay, that was, yeah, that was that's down. A, that's a, but that's I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna 22s. hold. twos. Yeah, so I would have covered there, if I noticed. Um, yeah, multitask much. Uh, see, stress law <laughs> always takes my energy stress away law. from the easier trades. You what got am I Brendo doing? saying that now. He was yeah, saying man, stress it's, it's, it's so stressful. Like, okay. I, I mean, guys, if you're multitasking, you know, maybe don't throw Tesla into the mix because uh, it just stresses you out. Like, I, I'm like short this. This thing goes to 323. I cover nothing. Um, but I think that maybe I could actually get the fade. So maybe patience will pay me here. But I am going to try to bid down below uh, closer to three. Um, yeah, man, that's a, that's a fumble on my part. I should have bids out. No All excuse. Right. Uh, but yeah, we, we move on from there and then uh, go from there. We're, we're going to sound long here. We're long 28s. And the idea here is we want to break through. I'm thinking um, we're going to see a continuation bull flag. We had an initial one here. And we got another one brewing here. In case this one does get uh, volatile and it's shown its propensity to have these like big wicking candles, 
uh, which means it could have a quick momentary move to the sell side. I want to capitalize on that. So I'm sitting at the bottom end of this range to add. Looks like it's moving down. Looks like I might get filled here. Come on, man, fill me. There we go, I get the fill. Uh, so let's see, now where's my out? So clearly I'm looking at that 205 area. Uh, there is an area of consolidation around there. So I do like that for my out, that 2205. I can scale into this, this was a 50% position. And then I scaled out here, taking some profit, didn't get quite filled. So I can afford basically to work my way into this. And this is a good retracement area that I wanna be a part of. So get a little bit of a fill there. Now where's my average is 26s. So we moved down a, a smidge from uh, the 28th average that we had. We'll wait for this one uh, to kind of make a move into two. Let's see what it does. Uh, very volatile though, especially for a bigger float stock. I print, Pradley was telling me like a 400 million share float, which is quite big and shouldn't be moving so aggressively. But hey, uh, such is the case with these AI stocks. That's all the rave. You've seen that with the reverse splits. You saw it with biotechs. Now you're seeing it with AI. Um, and these investigations that apparently are taking place, oh people God. hiring these uh, FBI agents to investigate illegal short selling. That seems to be the big rave right now with yeah, uh, some of these size, plays. Though. So very interesting how this kind of stuff trends and uh, we wanna take Wait, advantage of it. Big retracement right. here on sound. So I add a little bit into that one. Very small add actually into that one. Looking for that move into 2205 for the eventual bounce. Obviously a break of that and I'm wrong and I'll be out. So scaling in appropriately here, not taking too much size so that I am able to scale down and really not get uh, get punched in the face. There we go. We got to take that one quickly before it goes. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to look for a hold of two here. If we don't get the hold of two like now, but I don't want to be the weak hand. So you got to you can't be right below two because the algos are too smart for that. You've got to find an, inter an interesting area, but it's also something that you can afford and something that you can manage into your risk, uh, your risk assessment. So we're getting aggressive moves here down to this downside, but two's getting bought up, at least for the moment. Uh, two also happens to be a VWAP retracement. So this is an interesting area where we're at. Let's see what this one does. Now my average is 21s on this one. I do like the fact that it moved down quite aggressively, not because obviously I want to be out of the money, but it shows its propensity kind of to be able to move up and down aggressively, which means it can move up equally as aggressively if the buyers do step in there. So, uh, you know, for a 400 million share float, I'll be honest with you, it's quite, a, it's quite an aggressive mover. Let me just double check that real quick here. Uh, let's pop up a new window. Let's go to flowchecker.com. Proudly used to use that all the time. There we go. And this one is called AI, not AI, S-O-U-N. So let's see what this one shows us, Soundhound. So we're seeing a float of 119 million. So 120 million, not the biggest float. I thought it was bigger than that. Someone in the chat was telling me 20% short. Looks like Finviz is short, uh, saying the 4%, made 3.69%. Oh, it's a 4.51, okay. So about a four, four and a half percentage uh, short float. We'll see how this one acts. I've built my position to it. Now we'll see if uh, we get stopped out or not. Some of these other ah, movers, though, this is all the rave right now. I mean, uh, the, these stocks all continue to head side. Meta, 151.92 is now. We're printing 79s. You got the same There's thing the on flag. Google, 99.42. We're printing 38s. Uh, Tesla, same thing. Apple, same thing. You know, Amazon's really the only one a little bit far. It's like 40 pennies. That's barely anything. So such a strong market today. Actually, Microsoft is quite weak. Such a strong market today. Um, and it's just, it's interesting to see what uh, is going on here. All right. Someone's saying BuzzFeed long. I guess what you're looking at is maybe a bull flag retracement here. I don't know what you're looking at exactly. Let's pull up the BuzzFeed chart. So we have that big move up off VWAP, nice move off that 280 level, popping up all the way to 376 and now retracing back below the half dollar at 336. I guess what you're looking for is a five minute retracement. If I were you, what I would wait is to either use the three or the five minute chart and wait for the three, the first three or five minute candle to make a new high and close that way and then take that long and then ride that, I guess. But I, I kind of wouldn't want to guess where, uh, where the retracement ends because you know that typically doesn't end all that well. All right, back to our sound. Basically, it's broken now below two, but it's hanging out at 199. We said we didn't want to be the weak hand, so we have to kind of give this one room, but where do we give it to? There's obviously a range here towards that 196, where was, which was the bottom end of that consolidation area. Do we give it to around there, or do we give it a bit more? It's gonna be a tricky little assessment to do here, Luca, but I wanna see a little bit more how we act around two and at VWAP. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure, 100%. Um, so Tesla didn't break 175 to the upside, and I see Michelle saying, uh, yeah, I'm out if we go up higher. Somebody's like, oh, you know, uh, keep shorting. Uh, we will take your money. Best of luck, John, but there's room for both of us to make money, that's for sure. I am uh, essentially uh, waiting for this to break 175 uh, for some type of over-under action. It's just like, this is like a super extension. I love it. Uh, when you first think it's going down, it stops everyone out. Everybody gives up, and then you actually get the fade. So I am not in the uh, the full size that I want to be in here. But uh, if it starts to work for me from here, uh, so be it. It is what it is. Just a heads up on uh, BuzzFeed. Um, it's I am I am kind of covering into the flush there. Uh, basically, right here around this uh, this whatever this white line is. Not really too sure what it is, but essentially covering in this general area and then waiting for the flush back down. So yeah, again, stacking my bids there, hoping that it comes to fruition. I punched out of Amazon for a loser. I didn't, and then now it's back down. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just like super out of my element right now, which is no big deal. Uh, but this is essentially the move that I, that I was looking for. Um, I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't do that properly. But anyways, um, yeah, over 102, right? The pop, you kind of like, for myself, it's like short it into the pop, then it drops. If it drops through 102, you know, those are the money covers for myself. So that's basically what I was looking for. Um, I just, I let it go. Where did I even punch out of that? I probably punched out way too high. Yeah, 172.30. So I took like a, maybe like a 20 cent, uh, 20 cent L. I'm doing a lot and not really getting anywhere right now. Uh, the line is relentless. Never give up. I, I never give up, man. I never give up. Uh, but yeah, I'm basically doing a lot, not really getting anywhere. Uh, you know, holding the losers and then covering them and then butchering it. Um, but it's all good, man. We're, we're starting to get somewhere here uh, with stress law. So yeah, <laughs> if at first you are stressed, continue to stress yourself out and uh, eventually things will work, I think, right? That's kind of the play there. So, you know, maybe there's room to actually get down uh, into this region. Uh, my logic is the fact that the squeeze zone was over 174. So I just feel that now that we're under 174, do we actually break this and then go down? Or is this gonna be, a, is this gonna be the same thing that happened here? So the way that we squoze, went down and then went back up, are we gonna squoze, go back down and then go back up again? That's a, that's a possibility. But the short should be good if we don't break 175 at this point. So I am not going to add to it. I am now thinking, okay, where can I cover? Uh, I would love to get 172. Um, I'll be ahead on Tesla. I mean, I'm pretty much uh, flat on it now. But if we go to 172, man, I, I, will, be, uh, I will be up nicely on that. So, uh, yeah, let's go to 172. I mean, uh, hopefully, uh, if you guys are long and making money, like, you know, hopefully you made money. And, uh, you know, now hopefully we go down and I may start making money. And everyone is happy, man. And everyone is happy. Yes, absolutely. Scalp Demon, full-time, part-time picker. I like that name, man. I like that name. Uh, nice to see you in the chat. Nice to see everybody in the chat. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this lovely Friday. Uh, thank you so much, Sharif, for the, uh, the espresso that I just had. Uh, Spro Life, man, you know the deal. Tesla's going back up, so we'll see if it wants to break the 175. But for the time being, we are going to go to Big B uh, for Happening Now. Guys, in the lunch hour we go here for a Friday afternoon, turning out to be a positive one, but we are struggling in a couple of spots. Here we go. Uh, the Dow, first off, 0.14 to the upside. It has been a little bit relatively weak over the past couple of sessions here, 0.26 only for the S&P 500, but we'll take it after the way we started. Uh, the Russell as well, 2,000 specifically relatively weak on the day. 0 0.04 back to the upside though after being red to start things off. Uh, tech leads 0.7 for both the NASDAQ composite and the 100 back in positive territory. If you're with us pre-market this morning, we talked about Intel, Tesla, Bed Bath & Beyond, and a whole bunch of other ones, including this one, Silvergate down 8% right now. Trying to hold some key levels here though around this 1285, 1280 area. Uh, there was a couple of volume spikes that came in here just in the past 20 minutes or so. Looks like uh, some people trying to test some levels here on SI. Still negative though, guys. This market continues to head to the high side here. Jeez Louise, 4086 now. Uh, where would we top out there? 4088. That's not like a high of day. It's just a recent high here, guys. All right. So we're we're in business with some of these longs that we're in. We're we're in uh, S O U N. It seems to be holding two for now. So let's see what this one does. That's A I. Wow. I should have still been in A I. Such a silly goose for getting out of that one. But uh, we're. Our, long, our average cut, our ACB on sound is 218. We're at 207, so we're out of the money on this one, but we're holding two, we're holding view up. So I wanna see if we can get a bit of a V-shaped v, uh, v retracement. Let's have some outs ahead of where we have our outs. We have our outs at high of day, but we need to profit a little bit off this. So how many shares do we have? So we can take out 
this many, oh, what did I just do? Get out, get out, get out. All right, so we can have this many shares taken out at, let's say the quarter dollar. So we'll go and sit here at the quarter dollar. We'll see what this one does. I'm also in this BuzzFeed. We'll see what this one does as well. I wanna see how the half dollar acts there, uh, whether or not we get a continuation. So a couple of uh, positions, BuzzFeed, super small position, but sound we've built into an 80% position here. So we need to start managing our moves <clears throat> a little bit carefully. All right, having a look here at the futures, I mean, uh, at the big six, looks like definitely Microsoft is the weakest of the bunch. So I'm gonna be looking at Microsoft to see if we get any retracements off, uh, off the futures here. We're building a bit of a double top on the future. So if you get a big move down, I definitely wanna participate in this Microsoft move down. It's now flat on the day, and now it's actually gone negative. Uh, Microsoft, you guys know that it's been having uh, some issues, it had issues with respect to earnings, but it's been having uh, tailwinds and headwinds. So the tailwind here obviously is its association with ChatGPT and it's the incorporation to the Bing search and all the you know, assumed benefit, benefits uh, that that will bring. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of the idea here. I'm keeping my eye on Microsoft for a possible short, but obviously I'm not gonna bet against this market. This market's shown its intent to be long here and some of these names are quite strong. So I'm not gonna go against it. It's gonna have to really present itself to me. Um, all right, back to some of these trades here. Uh, where it looks like we're now eight pennies out of the money on our sound as we come back into that 210, 211 area. Still holding two for the moment. Um, I'll give this one an opportunity to kind of do its thing. Uh, same thing with BuzzFeed. You kind of this bit of a slow time trying to build some of these trades, to be honest with you. Uh, not really expecting anything parabolic at the moment. So, you know, it's going to be a good time to sit back, look at these charts, really see the levels and, uh, and build positions that we can take into the afternoon. Uh, GNA Whale says, chat GPT saved the market. Yeah, you know what? So did biotech stocks. So did reverse splits. I mean, so all these reasons why things go parabolic lately in the past like three or four months, uh, I guess all these things can be kind of, uh, you know, labeled as saving the market. But, you know, these are just catalysts that come in and we just deal with what we've got at hand. Uh, have you ever used ChatGPT? No. You've never used it? No, I don't ever plan to interact with AI for the rest of my really, life. Really, eh? Yeah, they can, uh, they can try to battle me in this digital warfare of a market that we have here. But, uh, yeah, I don't plan to talk to it. I know, you know what though, that's kind of funny. My friend was like, he was, we're, I was talking to him and he was like, be careful using AI because uh, I, I started interacting with it. Not, it's not chat GPT, but it's like another one where it's like you can have friends and maybe, you know, it can become your girlfriend and, and all that stuff. I don't want to do anything but, like uh, that. I just I'm want like, her to write stuff for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you know what? AI is a great, it's a great tool if you know how to use it. And somebody in the chat said it best. Obviously AI is, you know, it's dependent on how it's coded and all that stuff. Right. Um, you know, the thing with AI is that it's, uh, it's machine learning as well and we can't really fathom how advanced it can get. We can think that we can, but we really can't. Not at all. Um, we, can't, we can't really understand its true potential. I would say if you haven't already, go watch, is Luca a bot? No, I'm pretty real, man, pretty real right here. <laughs> um, but go watch Person of Interest. It's on, uh, I'm not sure where it is, Person of Interest. It's a TV series, and uh, it's a great TV series, uh, Person of Interest. Michael Emerson, uh, uh, Harold Finch in the thing. It's a great TV series and it shows you what the power of AI can actually, can actually be. And then understand that you know these, these movies are being created now. It's like me saying, look at Flash Boys, go read the book and then understand that this book is like you know, 10, 20 years old, right? So where is Skynet right now? You know, Skynet is light years ahead and uh, it's, it's actually scary <laughs> to think about. And if you think that AI can't, like AI can destroy humans without even having the plan to destroy humans. It'll, like humans are just in the way, everybody knows that, right? So basically my plan for the rest of my life is to not interact with AI. I just think, look, AI, if you're watching this, uh, all love, all love. All love, but uh, yeah, I don't. Declared uh, your, you've already declared your animosity towards them. You can't I don't come like back the, and say uh, no, 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 all it's love. all love. It's all love. I just don't like the AI in the market that I'm fighting. I see. It's like give me the fill. Like why am I like <laughs> why is my why I'm like talking to the trader in the back? Why is he the high of a certain move and not getting the fill? It's because AI machine learning is seeing that order and saying like, well, okay, let's just reverse it and go back down here. So. I mean, it is what it is, man, but uh, these Terminators are real in the market. You just have to, uh, you got to kind of uh, uh, roll with it. But yeah, no, I don't plan to interact with AI. Um, you know, AI can do its thing. I will live out the rest of my life, um, you know, free of AI. But we'll see what happens there. Anyways, Tesla's flushing to the downside now. So I'm looking for basically covers below 173. 
Uh, you know, now finally uh, getting, actually, you know what, yeah, why not just cover some over here? Um, I'll just basically pay myself as we flush lower um, into this kind of uh, line over here. I do want to hold some because this is type, this is like gamma squeeze, and any time that we get kind of crazy gamma squeezes and lots of shorts, you know, once we start to fade, there is potential that Tesla actually goes back to 170. So I'll have a, I'll have a sick win on this if we do go back to 170. So normally I'd be scalping this, but because it's like a super extension to the upside, I want to see it go back to the downside. Um, and then yeah, covers, uh, you know, below 173 into 172. And then if we actually fail 172, uh, I'm going to try to get 171, 170 on that. So uh, yeah, hopefully now, uh, you know, keeps going. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, life life will be good there. So uh, yeah, we'll see if this wants to keep going to the downside. Uh, paying myself handsomely on that one. Let's check out BuzzFeed. This is just hanging around. Uh, so this one's hanging around. Well, we're well, we're we're over here. Okay. So I'm I'm like guys. I'm loosely looking at the charts here. So I have no idea where I am. But yeah, I might as well cover some. I think two three twenty six looks like a good spot for me to cover some more. So I'll have a bit out at three twenty six. And then if we actually break this blue line here, I feel like we can, you know, flush. Like this was like the start of the move. So initially to start the day, we we're talking about the three level as like a over under. We finally went over. This is a little bit of a head and shoulders if I have ever seen one. Up, down, up, down. This is the second shoulder. If we actually break the neckline right now, break that blue line, we have the potential to rip down into three and go lower. So volume is always the tell. It looks like volume is dropping just a little bit there. So as long as this thing doesn't go over, you know, 360 back to the upside, then you know it's it's dead and we, and we go down. So I do want to hold on to the uh, the short because my average is 373 right now. So you know my stop will be in for three over 360. If we go over 360, uh, you know I'll, I'll be out of that position. And if we flush, I'll be covering, covering, covering into the downside. You know mean reversion, not too bad. Can't complain. Um, guys, if you have any questions in the chat, feel free to uh, you know let us know. If you guys have any tickers that you're watching, that you're trading, yeah. you know, throw them to us. We'll pull them up. We'll answer your questions. We'll trade them. Um, you know, I, I like uh, seeing people say, "Yeah, J and J is pumping," and then I go, "J and J is pumping." Where's J and J? Maybe I'll long this thing. And I go, "Oh, J and J is close to 169.69. Should I short this thing?" Uh, no, just joking around here. But yeah, J and J, uh, you know, a little bottom over here at 168. I normally stay away from these, uh, you know, New York listed stocks that are in tight ranges when they have catalysts. I, I'm not shy to jump in. Uh, for example, when Goldman Sachs had the catalyst, we were trading that. Uh, XOM from yesterday, all time high, we were trading that as well. Um, I'm basically waiting on the bid right now of XOM for a 115 dip buy. So this is what I wanted to see kind of down, you know, test the VWAP, really, really selling off now. Um, I don't, my, the problem when I trade oil names is I don't look at oil and I should be looking at oil, but I'm going to just kind of use the levels that I have. So I'm bidding down over here close to 115 for a bounce play. And I really want that. I mean, if this can sell off straight into 115, the bounce could be epic, right? So, I mean, if we consolidate and then go down, you know, the bounce is, is worse. So I want it to go straight down into 115 okay. so I could get that fill and then bounce back and, uh, and go from there. So we'll see what happens on that one. Uh, but yeah, so far, the two shorts that I have on board are working for me now. Tesla finally going for the 173 test. Pretty happy with that. Mm -hmm. uh, it is Stressla until it starts to pay you. And then you're like, wait a second. I'm going to trade Tesla all stock. the time. I love this stock. <laughs> But, you know, I'm kind of wise enough to understand that I hate the stock no matter what happens. Um, you know, I try to, I'll try to make my money on it, but I, I hate it, man. I hate it. <laughs> All right, guys. We're in AI again, taking a little piece here. So getting in in an area where I didn't really like, to be honest with you. But I just want to ride this trend. Had a profitable trade on it earlier, kind of getting back in now, taking a little bit of a scalp, coming back near my entry. But I'm just going to work my way up with this one. It's grinding to the high side. So I kind of like how it's worth looking. The one I don't really like at the moment is this sound. The only saving grace really is the fact that it's held to um, held VWAP and it's shown its propensity to kind of bounce off that $2 level. It's got the AI catalyst, which is all the hype right now. So. I'm going to ride this one. I have an ACB of around 18. I've got a, a resting profit taker of around at 25, actually. So we'll see what this one does. I've got my stop set. Everything is in place, so I shouldn't really be really affected. I'm also long on BuzzFeed. Uh, averaged into this one, so positive on it now. Uh, 49s here, so I'm looking to take some out through this break of 65. I think kind of it's still showing its propensity to head to the high side. So I'm not gonna try to ride this one down. I've got my, um, I've got an 
an average down resting order here sitting at 31. Should it make its way down to that area and break this support level? I, I kind of want to be a part of that. Make sure that I get some of that. And then I've got my uh, my resting stop order below. So everything's in, uh, uh, everything's set, everything's in play for this one. There we go. Now we're getting a bit of a bounce on sound. We need uh, the volume to start coming in on this one. You hear the guy to my left saying it all the time, volume's a tell. But really, you're not going to go upside without volume. You can go downside without volume. All right, that goes without saying. Mm -hmm. uh, but to, uh, the high, to the high side, we need a lot right, of volume coming in. in. We're now up 36% on this. Where is, yeah, so my in's 18 again. So we're That's good jokes. to go, we're waiting for this one to develop. Same thing with the AI. These are slow longs. Uh, they're mostly slow grinders. BuzzFeed, you don't see move too aggressively. Neither is a notional value on BuzzFeed. Doesn't move all that much. I mean, we had a, a couple of periods here where there were some big mm -hmm. moves. Probably around that 11 o'clock area, we got these three aggressive one minute red green candles, but otherwise, you know, it's, it's been tame. So, decent move here. 12 12 now is where we're on, where we're at on sound. I can't even talk. What's going on with me, man? You know, a spro or something. There we go. Now we're bouncing Double a little down, bit. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to take another one. Um, I'm, I'm looking for that VWAP hold. So, someone was telling me in the chat, yo, Bro, sound is going down. Yeah, man, I got an I, I got an idea. That's why I'm kind of doing what I do. There we go, breaking through 18s and 19s. I'm sitting at 25s though. I don't want to punch out here, uh, obviously because it would be a loss, but because uh, I'm long 18s, should have added a bit more there. Maybe on the way up, uh, maybe that was my mistake. Right. I should have been adding during this consolidation area. But hey, uh, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Let's ride this one to the high side if we can. Uh, BuzzFeed coming a little bit back down now, which is fine. Same thing with AI coming near my entry, but these are slow movers, and I kind of didn't like where I got in on AI, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna have to make, I'm gonna have to accept the fact that this one may retrace a little bit below where I got in. I'm thinking around that half dollar, 17 and a half is where we'll probably see a bottom if it retraces. Maybe I'll punch some more back in there if, uh, you know, if I feel so inclined. But I've got, what? How much position do I have? I have. Uh, on AI, I have a 40% position. Oh, because I took some out here. So I'm holding 40%. So technically, I could add a little bit if it comes back into that half dollar area, uh, seeing as my average is at 57. So I can take advantage of that 50 or 51 print to the high side. But I like this one going into the rest of the day, especially with the market continuing to make new highs. Mm -hmm. 40.92 is the, uh, where we just popped up. 40.93.75 is going to be is the high. No, that's from earlier, yeah. So that's from earlier at the bell, then we retraced. So we're very close to today's highs, Luca. Um, yeah, all these stocks, the big uh, cap names are pumping back up. as to be expected with a move like that. Same thing with sound. Now, back to sound. I know I keep flipping between all these, but I have to manage all of them. I got three longs on, and uh, bouncing is what's required here. So uh, we're getting back into that 20 area. Looks like we've got some uh, size here on the book on sound at 20. I'm waiting at 25s, so continue to watch that, I guess. Uh, yeah, guys, I'm out, of, I'm out of Tesla. I love it, man. I love it. I'm like, I, I don't know if you guys can hear me. I'm trying not to talk because someone's like, oh, stop like whispering to yourself. And I was like, I'm trying, man. I'm trying. But this Stressla, uh, that was a nice fade. So I did cover a little bit like on the flush, but obviously not everything because I was really going for the bigger move. Then we moved back to the upside and I'm like, I'm like, ah, oh, man, here we go. Okay, 175, <laughs> we're taking the L here. Um, yeah, Luca and Bill Gates are the only people that are short Tesla right now. That's, uh, yeah, possibly. But 175, essentially, this is the thing, man. It is an uptrend. Um, everybody, not everybody, hopefully more, more people are long and making money. But, you know, trying to play like the mean reversion on it, then when we go back up, it's like you have to just get out, right? Because today is not a day that you say, like, let me wait for the highs. Because as soon as we go up just a little bit, like you guys can see, these are one minute bars, but this is just like up, up, up. And look at the volume, right? It's like increasing volume into the 175 level and then going over 175 and breaking. So it's um, these. this is like something that, you know, even though I want the, the fade play, it's just not really giving the fade. And to be honest, I'm not ready to give up, but I do want it to just go like a little bit higher, right? So if this could go, um, JS saying, why is he shorting Tesla? So essentially, um, I'm more of a mean reversion trader. I like the mean reversion on things. Um, you know, this kind of feels like a gamma squeeze to the upside, so I'm just kind of trading it that way. I'm not down for, for what I'm doing, and I wish I could show a chart, but to be honest, they're just failing on me um, for whatever reason. The charts are like, we're clocked out, it's Friday. Uh, we're already drinking MGDs, Luca, so uh, I don't know about you, but uh, join the party. That's basically what they're telling me right now. But 
Um, yeah, you know, so I'm not, I'm not getting smoked on the name, but I'm not winning. So, like, for the wins that I have on it, like, when it does start to fade, like, guys, I'm short, basically, like, I was short, like, one set, whatever, wherever it was, maybe, what was it, 173.50, I don't even remember, but I was essentially averaged in for the short, like, over here, so when it starts to fade and I have a good position, I'm up, and I'm like, okay, now, like, this is going to be a sick day if I could hold this, but then the thing is, is it goes all the way back up, stops me out, so I take the L, so it's like I'm not, it's like I'm not really... I'm frustrated because it's not working, but it's not like the end of the world type thing. Um, if it goes higher, great. It'll give an opportunity. But it's the same thing with BuzzFeed. It's like, you know, this is trading, man. Trading will frustrate you every single time. It's like the BuzzFeed uh, trade, when you're not on your game, it's, it's, it's just really frustrating. And you just got to remind yourself, like, don't do, like, stupid things because you're off your game. So imagine it's a game of basketball and you just can't hit your shots. You've shot 20 shots and you're just, like, super frustrated. Like, that doesn't necessarily entail that you go and shoot, like, 70 more shots. If you're Kobe, yeah, 100%, shoot 70 more shots. But uh, for myself, I'm like, I don't know, whatever. I just got to I just gotta be, you know, I'm just doing a lot, you know, not really getting anywhere. I'm, I'm basically, right now I'm flat. Like, I'm, like, flat on the day. Um, and, and for all the swings down and up, like flat, flat. It's like, oh my God, okay. But yeah, BuzzFeed, like I put my stop Lighting in 61s. here, bro. Yeah, I put my stop 61s, like I'm stopped out on that too. So I should have, like this move is basically what I go for. For people that watch, like I, I go for like these, these kind of reversions, but I didn't cover any. And then I covered, you know, some over here, some over here, but I was really waiting. And then we just like go to the upside. It's like, okay, I'm stopped out of the rest. So yeah, BuzzFeed, I'm up on the name, but I'm obviously not even close to where I was up before. Uh, but it is what it is, man. You know, that's, uh, let me, I could actually bring over this chart over here to show. Hopefully this one doesn't fail. But yeah, basically short, short, short the tops and then not covering the flush, but then covering some here, covering some here and then, and then getting stopped out on the rest. So again, winner because my average was for the majority like up over there. Um, but it's, it's just like, you know, like, I mean, I want to see things work, right? So then even when they stop working, I'm just like, uh, man, what's going on here? Yeah, Brian Luck, loser, loser, no chicken dinner. Uh, how am I going to get my protein for the day? I don't know, man. Uh, but the man to the right of me, hopefully uh, catching all those winners and, uh, and uh, for sure hitting his protein for the day. I know that for a fact. I'm eating eggs. There's eggs in my mouth as we speak right now, Luca. <laughs> um, all right, we're BuzzFeed, baby. We're going on this one. So we took 48s long here, and uh, we got some out. Pardon me, at 66s. It's kind of retracing a little bit back down into 58s. I had a resting order here at 73s. It didn't quite make its way up there. I think it got up to 69s or 70s. But this one, right when I said this one was a bit of a slow mover, it really makes me eat my words because now it is really volatile up and down and the volume is absolutely coming into this one. You can tell immediately by how, how aggressively the tape moves um, on this one. So uh, I'm gonna, I'm, basically I'm just gonna sit here uh, at uh, 75s and if I, if I get filled, I get filled, if not, uh, then we'll, I got my stop. So AI is the one that's kind of going against me. I kind of knew that this one was not where I wanted to get in. So I'm going to have to average in here uh, because I think it is the most prudent thing to do. I do have a full position technically on it right now. So averaging in, you know, is not part of my rules, but I do like the uptrend. I do have a trend line drawn on my other chart. So it's respecting that. So let's go ahead and add a little bit. There, excuse me, sorry. Kind of have a little bit of trouble digesting some food here. All right, and then sound. Really rejecting off that uh, two, I want to say 19 it got up to. Yeah, 219 coming back down here towards $2. This one's earth. setting up like a breakdown. So I've got to be real careful on this one. But it is still bullish. Uh, it's hanging out above VWAP, which is kind of my saving grace. It's above the half dollar, or sorry, the whole dollar above two which is another Jeez. saving grace for me. So I'm going to wait. I'm not going yeah, to take like, any preemptive moves. Tesla is absolutely flying to the high Sharif, side. I'm sure. Yeah, Tesla is leaving Earth. Somebody <laughs> in the chat, who was it? Uh, Taylor Boy saying Tesla is leaving Earth. Um, yeah, man. Somebody's like 180 is coming. I like took it off my screen there and goes, then I look baby. back. Literally 178. Wow. 178, guys. Wow. Brad. Wow. Like, oh, my God. Um, yeah. Oh, my. Okay. And there's sometimes in day trading when Michael you just sit back and you're like, shout out Michael A. Bear. Wow, wow, 178.50. 180 yeah. is coming. It's going to 180. Is this going to 200? It might go to 200. This might go to 300, guys. guys is this going to hit 500 today? <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. But somebody initially was like, it's going to go to 200. And I was like, no, it's not. Like, and this was over here. And now it's at 170. Like, no, 200 obviously still $20 away. But 180 is coming. 
And uh, I want to short this again, man. I want to short this again. Uh, you guys can laugh at me if I, if I lose again. But I'm starting a short close to 179. We'll see if it comes to fruition. Actually, closer there. Let's go 178.50. Um, I did, Johnny, uh, no, man. Unfortunately not. I did not go long Tesla. I was shorting it. I'm basically down on the name. Uh, but I'm going to try the short again. Uh, I don't know if it's the right idea, man. But we'll see what happens. I'm kind of, this is a very, very strong up move. Uh, do we have the potential to go down or is this gonna go up forever and then just stay there and like flatline? I mean anything's possible. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, I would love to uh, short this. This is a parabolic move to the upside. Okay, so getting the first fill. This thing is going wild, man. Talk about tape teleportation over here. Uh, you know, I have a really good chance of this going back down and going through 176. But I also have an equally bad chance of getting smoked. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uh, um, average into it if possible. If this trade actually works and goes back to like 175, I'll be like way ahead on the name. So uh, it's, a, it's a battle, man. It's a battle. And I can't remember who in the chat was saying, I think it was Mike, something Mike Locker or Mr. Locker, something like that, but uh, was saying, oh, it's nice to see the human side of trading. Um, nice to see Luca. Like, uh, I, you didn't say nice to see me taking L's, but saying that like I am taking L's, um, it's nice to see that not everybody wins all the time. Guys, I, I don't sure. win all the time. Absolutely not. No, I get, I get smoked sometimes. Um, sometimes I'm flat. Sometimes I win. Um, you know, I just like to scalp a lot because I like to take the win. So normally I would be taking this win on Tesla, but I just feel like there's more potential to the downside. So we'll see where this goes. Uh, and BuzzFeed is uh, super frustrating because it's not... Um... Lucid, i got to interrupt you. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Lucid's making a big move here. Brendo writing in the chat that there's a positive note coming in on it. Um, so... Have a look at Lucid. Just bounced off that 930, got up all the way to 993. Uh, looks like public investment fund Betaville is preparing to buy out. Am I reading the right thing here? Let's see. Fine. Let's find okay, out. Long. Um, okay, so just crashed on me. All right, so I'm getting this headline here in public investment fund. Oh, there we go. Buy out remainder of Lucid Group. Okay, people following the situation have heard the public investment fund is working with advisors at JP Morgan on its plan to purchase the remainder of Lucid. Okay, so buyout possibly brewing here. No yeah, uh, no basics uh, with respect to price or total cost, price per share or anything like that. As soon as we uh, get that information, obviously we'll pass that on to you. BuzzFeed coming back up here Stop. to that 70 area, rejecting again, at least for the moment. I've still got my profit taker hanging out at 73. That hasn't been filled yet, but we're long 48, so we can afford to wait. Uh, AI is the one that's going against me here. And how many more ticks am I going to give this one? I mean, I got to draw the line somewhere. I'm looking at the, the whole dollar here, but that is really a far away area from where I initially got long, which was a half dollar. Um, so I'm, I'm seeing uh, some other outs here, but I just don't want to get shaken out of this trade because it is very strong. It is trending. It is above VWAP. So likelihood that it's not going to retrace below VWAP, it's going to continue with the trend. But just how much can I let it go against me here before I say, no, nope, I've got to punch out of this trade, start looking at a different area. So 715 is the bottom of this trough. So I mean, that could be a possible area or for out or I could give it to the whole dollar. I ha really haven't decided to be honest. It's kind of a work in progress. Likewise is sound, but it's holding that $2. So my thesis still holds up on this one. Decent uh, entry price at 18. This one's shown it's kind of tendency to pop up 10 and 15 pennies at a time. So we're not too far away, 10 pennies out of the money on this one, but two not so good trades, one okay trade for now. So. That's where we're at. The market kind of retracing off its highs at 40.93. Now it's moving down into 85. So a bit of a curl down on the market. You see Tesla with a bit of a top there. My boy Luca trading that 178.70 is the top. Looks like we've retraced now below 77s. Luca, what do you got on that? Uh, I'm going long lucid here okay. for maybe 10 tests. Um, basically building the position into the uh, like up move, a little bit of a flush. I think we we pop again. It's it's kind of gonna range. I think over here. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'm basically long, I kind of built into the long on the down move and then I'm, I'm like scalping it up on the up move. So yeah, average is like 70s, uh, basically taking the wins as they, uh, as they kind of uh, happen over here. Um, you know, going to 10, 10 for myself is a, is a whole new trade. If we break 10 to the upside, um, I'll, I maybe will try like a long scalp. Uh, we'll see how that one wants to go. But yeah, basically like scalping, scalping this around, seeing if it wants to pop. Uh, there was a seller at 84s and I think that seller eventually gets filled. Uh, maybe now that seller's coming down at 75s. And uh, if 75s right now breaks and goes, I think that's where we get another 85, 89 test. Um, so we'll see what happens. So yeah, it's, uh, you know, volume is, is there for now. If volume drops off, you definitely don't want to be like in a trade where there's kind of no volume. 
Um, but yeah, it's looking, it's looking okay. So yeah, I'm just basically uh, paying myself on the scalp region. Um, I love this, man. I love when things have a move and then they just go crazy and do volume. Like those are, those, that's the, uh, that's like kind of just like recycle a lot of shares in and out. That's the plan there. Uh, just an update there on Tesla. It's actually now slowly fading down. So I am looking pretty good, man. Pretty good with this one. We'll see where this one wants to go. I'm $1.40 in the money, so hopefully it keeps going. And uh, yeah, just give me like a $5 winner, Tesla. Like, come on, give me that. Give me a nice five. As I say this, this thing like rips up instantly. Uh, yeah, no problem there, man. Just kind of, uh, but yeah, de decent uh, news there on Lucid. Pretty exciting. Um, so we'll see what happens. I want to go back to Amazon just to see where this one is. Are we, are we over? Yeah, so the over under is one, one, uh, 102 fade. I like that. Uh, I like it, I like it, I like it. But we'll see if this wants to um, get back up to here. Yeah, maybe offer, try to offer, one, I'm going to try to offer one, 102.19s. And uh, yeah, we'll see where that one goes. So uh, yeah, Lucid long, Tesla short, trying to short Amazon. We'll see where that one wants to go. And uh, XOM, because I know I have a bid there. I don't know where this one is, but is it still going to the downside? What's going on over here? Okay, yeah, we're actually getting somewhere. So yeah, hopefully uh, this keeps going down and fills my bid for the potential bounce play. Uh, trying to get as close to 115 as possible. So hopefully that uh, runs down, fills that. Give me the quick pop and uh, go from there and see what happens, guys. Um, somebody saying thoughts on open. Uh, sure, I can have a look here at open, open. Open door technology. Mm -hmm. uh, first thought is any time that I pull up a one minute and I see like some type of barcode action where it's very slow, I, I don't necessarily, I don't, right away I don't want to trade it because as a day trader I want there to be a lot more volume and if it's showing you kind of this barcode action, it's a slower mover. So I'm just going to assume that you're asking uh, from like a wider time frame perspective just because it's maybe not doing crazy amounts of volume. Uh, so let me try to zoom out here to see what you're saying uh, from a general sense. Um, and kind of look at the technicals. So this is, uh, yeah, this is a huge down move. Now we're getting sort of a little bit of a relief bounce. First, first level, uh, not really first level, but I kind of see 450 as like a, uh, like, you know, if we go crazy, like that would be a crazy resistance line. Like 450, four area, which is like obviously not even close to there. Um, this line is pretty interesting. So 250, for this to really pick up and go, it would have to break this moving average. And look how much time it's spent below both of the moving averages, but the blue one is probably like a 50 period, if I had to guess. So, um, you know, look how much time it's spent below the 50 period on the daily. So, you know, if it gets there, it probably does run into some kind of programmed resistance. And then, and then if it breaks that, it can, you know, potentially really get like some type of squeeze action going. I see earnings is coming up soon. That'll be on February 23rd, um, if this is correct. And then, you know, if we break that, we can maybe pop into four, 450 because it's just like a, like a little bit of a short squeeze, like relief bounce. Like, I mean, this thing was at 14 um, in December, right? Or sorry, this was in uh, early 2021. It was like all the way up here. So yeah, fade back down. You know, maybe it goes, maybe it doesn't, not really too sure. Uh, getting the fill on Amazon short now. So I'm gonna just throw a bit out uh, closer to 102 to see if I can recycle that, get the fill there. Um, yeah, Lucid is popping back to the upside. So I'm gonna continue to uh, offer out. Basically my plan is to scalp like a maniac uh, that is that is the plan, Sharif. That is the plan. I like so it. I don't know how to make this bigger, but basically selling it as it works for me. All right, I'm in three longs, and they're both just moving sideways, doing nothing. So we'll wait for these ones to develop. I'm not gonna take any profits or move anything. Everything's already set up the way it needs to be. So we'll let that one develop. All right, let's have a look at what is moving now. I'm not seeing much on these big tech names. Obviously, Tesla has been making its move up, but we're not going to participate in that. Having a look at Meta here to see if there's anything brewing since we are close to day's highs. And so any pop on this market, we could see a response on Meta. I'm looking here at a nice curling pattern. We're seeing uh, lower, higher lows and higher highs, at least for the moment. So I'm thinking maybe an interesting uh, long into Meta here to test high of day at 51.92 and then maybe an eventual 52, uh, sorry, yeah, 152 break. Uh, I was looking at Tesla to see if there was a nice short there to ride off my boy's coattails, but I think I'm going to steer clear of that one because it is a little scary for me. It's um, not my cup of tea. So I'm going to look for Meta Long here. I don't know. I'm not absolutely convinced into this trade, so eh, I'll have to think about this one. But I do like, uh, you know, you heard Michael Noss talk about 
to buy smiley faces. And so I do see a bit of a smiley face here. Let's go and punch a 50% position. So we'll get long there. And the plan is to ride it into 152, uh, the break of 151 and I'm out. So 50 pennies, a one to one before I start scalping and then we'll hold it maybe into 152 and a half. We'll see, maybe we'll add to this position if it really does start to curl up and make it a 100% position. All right, back to the current trades. Sound continuing to hang around above view up at that 210, not breaking below uh, the whole dollar. So that is a saving grace. There we go, finding a bit of a bounce now here on AI. There was bound to be a period of, of retracement. That is to be expected. Our entry into that one is 46. Or so we've got uh, another 15 pennies or so before we can start taking profits. BZFD hanging, or, hanging around at low to mid 60s for a while now. We've been sitting at 73s. Uh, we haven't gotten filled because, well, it's been taking its sweet times. 76 is the high on that one. So we are gonna take some profit before the high in case we do reject or uh, you know revert back down before uh, before touching that. So those are my trades. They're not the most sexy, but uh, to me, they make the most amount of sense. All right, so we're curling nicely here on Meta. Yeah, uh, where do now. we get in on Meta? We got in on Meta at 50s. Uh, where do we get up to? We just broke 60 there. So nice little move, uh, you know, so far, not where I'm gonna take profit. Again, I'm looking for that high of day test at 92s before we start taking. So let's go and have some resting orders hanging around there. And we'll take some at 90. So, you know, in case this doesn't really come to 92, I'm not even 90, I'm gonna take it at 89, guys. Well, I'm feeling whimsical. So we'll have that resting profit taker hanging banger. around there. Long, All right, flipping cool. back here to AI as it breaks now through that 40 level. So we're getting back into uh, break even territory here on AI as we retrace. You know, it was bound to have a prolonged retracement, a pullback, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, because, well, you know, it had a big boy move up, but the catalyst is still let's there. Go, it's still above VWAP. The oh, uptrend go, is still there. Lucid. My boy is yelling over here. He's pumped. It looks like Lucid's pumping to the high side, and he's printing. What is going on? Can I spend the money for that? Spend the money, man. There Lucid, go, uh, that was, so that was a banger, obviously, coming in hot with money, the positive money, news. A little money, bit of an up move, money, coming down, money, scalping money, around. Money. Buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. And then hold some for the up move. I did not add on the 10 break because it happened too fast, so I missed it. Uh, which is unfortunate because now it's at 10 10. So, like, I would have been in 10 01, average to the position. Um, so, it is what it is, man, but whatever. You know, sometimes it's just going to be like that. Um, so, yeah, 968 average on the long. I am basically now scalping it out above this level. Um, this, is, uh, this is a great move, man. Great move. I like it. I like when these names move. Uh, you know, ample amounts of liquidity. Uh, you know, people in the chat always ask. Uh, you know, size, like how much size are you guys taking? Like what kind of, how do I know to scalp and scale up and all these other uh, interesting questions? You know, you, it's like you, on, a, on something like Tesla that's moving around, touching all these prices, like Tesla today from 169 to 179, like you're, you can't, it's like, how, you, if, you know, you have to size accordingly. You can't just like, it's like liquidity's not there. It's going crazy. You don't know how many prices it's gonna touch. It's a very wide range. When things go to, like when you look at like something like a Lucid, where like, you know, the spread is one cent, lots of liquidity on the book. I mean, guys, look at this, right? This is Tesla here. It's like one, 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 one. These are not even real. Like you can't, like the ones are, are dangerous. They, they might not be real, right? If you, if you filter that to three, so anything over 300 lots, or sorry, three lots, which is 300 shares, you start to see, wait a second, there's actually no buyers and sellers. Um, a lot of these are just kind of dark pool prints, right? So um, whereas when you go to Lucid, uh, you go to Lucid over here, and, and now I'm just right. noticing it is kind of testing 10 again, which is fine. But Lucid, plenty of plenty of size, right? Plenty of size on lit gateways. Then you have dark pools. Um, so, you know, Lucid, Neo, when these do volume, or even, uh, what was the other one? BuzzFeed from yesterday, which is also BuzzFeed from today. Um, you know, when they do volume, um, those are kind of the things that you can scale up on. Uh, that's what I tell myself. Like, I'm like, you know, stick to things that are, you know, liquid and show you that they're good. Uh, that's kind of where I go. So I am basically paying myself on this pop on Lucid. Pretty good trade. Uh, there, definitely can't complain on that one. Looks really good, man. I have it here to the left of me uh, with the green background for the uh, green Italian flag that I have on my uh, monitor over there. <laughs> but basically, long, 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 cover, 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 and then cover some up over here. You know, missing the 10 break is, is kind of sad because it's an instant kind of breakthrough 10. You know, you get 10 cents, um, kind of free money in a sense, but obviously nothing's free. You know, you pay your dues for it. Uh, it's having some struggle here at the 10, 11 mark area. So even though I do think we can get a pop to like the 10, 20s and then fade, Woo! I'm going to try to offer the rest closer to uh, 10.20 there. Oh, my goodness. We are printing on Meta. We take that 50-cent break 
it flies to the high side. Now 152 is in the sights out. A quick 50 uh, on Meta right there. How much are we still holding? We're still holding a little bit of the position. So let's go ahead and take some more out here. Do we get the print? Not yet. Print, 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 uh, looks like, yeah, there we go. Now we get the print, so we get that right, I think we got 99s there, all right, that's not a little bad little print. So, how much are we holding now, Med? All right, so we got a little bit left, let's hang on to that for the big move up. The Futures just printed a new high. 40, 94, 50 on the March ES contract meta, uh, taking advantage of that move. Likewise was Google, and you had a little bit of a nice little move there on um, the, to the upside for, um, which one? Uh, for Apple as well. All right, back to AI. I'm sitting here at 56 is waiting to get printed. We had a nice little retracement up uh, to 45s, topping out here a little bit at 45. So we'll have to see what this one does. It's taking its sweet time. We get the fill on BuzzFeed. We're gonna spin that money. There we go, baby. So we get that top print on BuzzFeed and that is a nice little out there. So now we see. We were, we were, where were you long? We're 45s long. We get the BuzzFeed fill at 74s, 73s, excuse yeah, me. So that's a nice sick. little move. Back to Meta here. Tesla. Meta's flying oh, to the okay, high Tesla. side. Let's take some more out here. There, oh, what I just do? Okay, so there we go. I got to take some more out. Oh, what am I doing here? So there we go. Jeez, I'm like fumbling these keys. There we go. We got the top wick there on Meta. So that Meta trade is done. Nice move to the upside on Meta. Loving that trade. Uh, want the sound to start getting off the ground. <laughs> that rhymes. Um, but it's not moving. It's taking its sweet time. BuzzFeed as well. Let's go ahead and take a little bit more there on BuzzFeed. Uh, hello, BuzzFeed. Okay, so look, so we need to take it like this. There we go. So we'll go like that and we'll punch out there. So now we've got a little bit left on BuzzFeed. That is also a nice profitable, profitable little trade, but we need this AI and the sound to get going. My goodness, yeah, Meta is higher. flying to the high side. Dude, when Meta made these wicks in the morning on the AI news, I'm like, oh, it's gonna distort the chart. Uh, this wick is gonna be not representative of the day's action because it was pre-market and it was algos and uh, the daily chart's gonna be distorted and levels are gonna be distorted because of this. Dude, we got here organically. We are now at the day's high on Meta organically, not these algo pre-market uh, spike thingy majig. So pumped about that. That's a nice little move up for Meta. Now we are at 152.35. This one reports next week, guys. So uh, heads up if you're long this. And you know, I don't like holding into, into uh, earnings as was demonstrated last week by my uh, great anxiety during the Netflix earnings. Yeah, it's funny that you're saying BuzzFeed, and I'm like, uh, wait, wait, wait a second, where is it? Is it back up? I need to short this thing. So yeah. uh, I know you're taking fills on the long, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm waiting for that high day break. It's not, it didn't happen yet, but yeah, 375 over under type thing. So I want to kind of short it into the highs and then hey. risk off a of four. We'll see if that actually, uh, if it actually wants to fill me there. And uh, yeah, Tesla, I look back, I'm like, come on, come on. Guys, Tesla went all the way back. I punched out of it for like my break even price. It's just, uh, I was just messaging the boys in the back. I'm like, I'm like, guys, for all these trades on Tesla on the short side, I'm getting nowhere and I'm holding the winners, holding the losers and I'm just getting nowhere. So yeah, basically flat. I'm down less than I was before on it, but uh, yeah, not up on it. It's at the bottom of my board. I'm just kind of wondering, you know, oh, like I stop out at the high because I thought maybe 180 is going to happen right now. And then it fades all the way back down. So this was a little bit of a sign here for anybody kind of uh, uh, looking at it and wondering, you know, what do you see? Um, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, obviously strong up move channel, but this level right here, and I want to draw the line just to kind of show it, that level right there, which is, uh, is this the purple one? Yeah, I guess so. 176, yeah, 176.85. So if there was going to be a banger short, it, it should have obviously retraced into the moving average, but it popped there one time. It popped there the second time. So I was like, I was covering, I covered some here, I'm pretty sure. No, I didn't have it here. But I know I covered here because when I covered, it started to go up and I was like, ah, go figure. But, uh, or maybe the first time I covered. Anyways, I covered at that area because it was bouncing. And then I'm wondering now, if we get back there, do we bounce again or do we break? And so I almost want to say that if we break 176.50, to the downside, I might try to short that for like the, the now the fail uh, for the move back down. I'm willing to try it again, like I'm not losing on it. Ooh. I'm just kind of being wrong, but I'm not like losing, losing where I'm like ready to walk away. I still think there's gonna be an opportunity where it's uh, gonna be uh, like the fade is gonna be good. And I mean, you know, the thing is, is like if it faded the first time, I would have made probably the most amount of money. 
if it faded the second time, I probably would have made a little bit less. Now, if it fades the third time, like I, you know, I make less less than that because you know third time, but third time's a charm, maybe. So uh, yeah, if it, if it continues not to work, it is what it is, man. That's trading, uh, uh, no problem there. Somebody somebody before in the chat was saying, um, you know, uh, oh, it's nice to see the transparency and traders talking about their wins and their losses. Uh, you know, a lot of people on social media are like, yeah, look, I'm only winning. Like, like, no, no, I'm over here sit showing you guys that I'm, I am struggling right now trying to short this. Um, you know, uh, but obviously you need to manage risk. And that's what I, I like to talk about. It's like, you know, if I'm in the short over here, because I think Gamma Squeeze fading, kind of, uh, you know, looking to fade that, when it goes back up, like I have to get out because there's too many shorts that are in the same trade. It's a short squeeze. Like I am not holding it to the next level up. Then when it gets to the next level up, I try it again. When it's in the money, I'm like, okay, this is where I want to hold it because it has good, a good opportunity and I'm okay. But if it goes back up, it's like, okay, I have to cover. So I covered at like one, my average was like 178.50s uh, and I covered it at 178.50s. So I'm essentially like shorting, letting it going down. If it comes back up, I get out. So I'm like risking because it could go to 180, right? So I'm not gonna pretend, I'm not gonna, you know, it's unfortunate that it went back down, but looking for another trade. So yeah, managing risk, super important. Um, that's basically what I try to kind of uh, teach. You know, it's it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Like everybody wants to be a day trader um, until you fight for price and you get your face ripped off and then everyone's <laughs> like, you know what? Yeah, my, my day job wasn't so bad. Uh, can I go back to that? Um, but yeah, man, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, it just is what it is. You know, trade your own playbook. Do things that are repeatable. I'll repeat, I'll repeat that over and over again. Quickly to go back to Lucid here. Um, I got the final fill on that, so I'm no longer in the long. My out was, I think, 17s. Uh, yeah, probably 17s there. So nice little pop there, testing the 20s. At this point, I'm no longer going to trade Lucid. I'm not going to short along this thing. Uh, I think we got Brendo uh, at the big desk. Big boy flush to the downside. I had that on the side chart here. We've been watching this one basically do nothing all day. It was hovering around BWAP. It had a bit of a, pardon me? Okay, we got to go back to Brendo, guys. All right, take two. Falters, BBBY falters in an effort to find a buyer in bankruptcy, guys. So uh, looks like chapter two about to start here. Brendo covering. I like that on the dip. Attaboy, Brendo. I see those triangles. Uh, what a nice move down on uh, BBBY here, guys. Look at that. We were watching this basically consolidate and accumulate all day with a range of about 257 to the, the downside and give or take 270 to the high side. And then kaboom, all of a sudden, we're going we're gonna to do this. Yeah, uh, to the downside. All I see is red and I see a 228 bottom. So nice little move there on BBBY. Was waiting for this one to do something all day, but was not involved. Our meta at days high, 142.45. This one keeps pumping to the high side. We say, we said buy the happy face. Michael Noss had that this morning in his segment. Buy the happy face. There you go. This is a happy face. We take that, we take it long, but obviously we paper traded yet another trade. Be uh, paper handed. Did I say paper traded? I always say paper traded. Paper handed yet another trade because we didn't ride that one to the north side. All right, back now to the trades that aren't working for me. Let's, excuse me, be as transparent as possible. S-O-U-N, really holding VWAP, really holding that too. I added another little piece here because it did defend that $2 level. I have my outs. I'm not looking for an exact break of two, but this one's not looking as good as the others. Uh, Hey, well, we'll see what this one does. The one that I am happy about though, BuzzFeed. We take that 80 top, baby. Look at that top wick. Loving this one. We got long, I think at 42s, we're all out of it now. So add, add, take profit, take profit, take profit, all the way up to the top here. But this one, you know, it's still presenting opportunities. So definitely not done with this one. Oh, geez, I have a resting order here all the way down for a dip trade. That's not going to materialize. AI. All right. A bit of a double bottom here on AI as it tried to make a new high, but there was the retracement again. This one in a bit of a trading range. I don't like the fact that we're seeing higher lows. I want to see a higher high, perhaps anything above maybe that 46, even that half dollar to kind of show that the general upward trend is still intact. Um, we have 46 average on that. So we're 20 pennies out of the money on this one. Not a good look if I'm being honest. Now back to SOUN, still hovering around that too. This one seems like a flat bottom break. I'm not gonna lie, it's making me nervous. 
Uh, but hey, we're already sized into it, looking for the bounce, and if it materializes, it does. If it doesn't, uh, it sucks to be me. Now, um, want to get to this super chat. Mark the Realtor 305 sending a $1.99 super chat saying, Neo about to blast off too. I guess we were talking about some other EVI. You probably saw Lucid uh, being traded by uh, Luca over there. So um, have a look at, wow, wow, Lucid is flying to the high side, 1028 now. Neo, let's have a look at Neo because that's what you requested. Nice move up as well. It's a steadier move. It's not nearly as aggressive. It's only up three, uh, three and a third percent. Looks like we got, uh, you know, we had a bit of a, Topsy turvy open, retrace below view up, and then the real trend comes in at that, you know, 11 o'clock area, I want to say, and it's been stair stepping to the high side, probably with the overall general market that started doing that same trend around that same time as well. So, yeah, it's tradable. It's not uh, the, the sexiest name around, and it's not doing the most volume, nor is it have the best price action. So, it's not a bad trade, but go with what's moving, baby, and that's lucid at the moment, Luca. Yeah, man, Lucid moving to the upside uh, now at 10.35. So I guess, uh, you know, I get out at 10.17 and I'm like, let's go. Let's and then go. it goes back down and then it goes to 10.35. And I'm just like, well, whoa, does whoa, anybody whoa. else have the long? Like, hopefully, because uh, if I can't celebrate my own wins, at least I could maybe celebrate uh, other people's wins. Um, getting the BuzzFeed fill here at the pop of 3.80. I want more of this um, into the shorts. So I'm just kind of sitting there waiting uh, where is this man? Uh, yeah, so getting that. Um, lucky on that fill, honestly, to look at looking at it now. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if it wants to go higher. I'm trying to get like a uh, basically shorts into four, like four to four. At this point now, it's like not like super Jeez exciting Louise. parabolic. Like this is the parabolic move. This is the parabolic move, um, kind of up and down. But now it's just like floating, right? So do I expect a big sell-off to come? Like, not really, not really. So, uh, yeah, hopefully it just kind of pops and drops. But that four level is interesting for over-under, so I'm just, like, reevaluating this in real time. Uh, but, yeah, we're, we're going to see what happens there. XOM, it's uh, above 116 now as I'm checking this. XOM. So I missed the bounce play. That's so unfortunate, man. I wanted this to – I was bidding, like, 21s, 11s, 06s. But, yeah, no, I just wanted it as close to 115 as possible, put the odds in my favor. Unfortunately, it stopped at 1540. It's, uh, I, can't, I can't justify the long at 1540. It's just not a part of the plan. So, guys, when you miss trades like this, you just move on, right? You just move on. So I'm canceling the order. It is no longer something I want to trade. Um, someone's saying GME flying. Is it, though? Is it? Let me see. Oh, it is flying. Okay. For the first time, uh, yeah. Um, from 20 to 21. Well, not flying. I mean, $1. <laughs> but it is going up. It is going up. Uh, let's see where this is relatively uh, uh, compared to every, where it was. Still in the same range, because I do remember Michelle was talking about this, and he was actually calling this out at uh, below 19, I'm pretty sure, uh, when it was like down over here. Then it had the nice up move, holding just below uh, the 19 level. So kind of up, down. Now it's in this little bit of a channel that it's creating. Uh, you know, if, if this breaks like 2250, I mean, maybe there's room to go to the upside. If I'm not mistaken, that daily level of 24 is kind of interesting. So uh, Luca shrugs off 5% moves now. No, you know what it is, guys? I'm literally out of my element using this chart. So I'm like, where is the percentage on this thing? Like, okay, it's up here now. So I have to look over here. Okay, so 5%. It's up 5%. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's a good move there. Um, it's been two years since GME Saga. Yeah, man, it's been time flies when you're having fun or not know, paying attention. Man. Holy crap. Um, wow, Lucid 1065. Is, today is a like day, man. Such a today clown is a for day, not guys. In this move, guys, man. today is a day, man. Today is a day. Hopefully, you guys are killing this day. Um, yeah, 1065. You could have just, like, like I should have. I, now I look dumb covering that. You're still, you're long. is long 69s. 969? I was long 968. And I, but I, no, but I sold it at 1017, and I was like, <laughs> it's a fail. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Sean's like, I'm long uh, 969. I was like, I was long 68. He's obviously still long, um, and I'm all out of the trade. Yeah, and Tesla? Are you short Tesla? Uh, no, I, I didn't. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Um, maybe I just need to go for a little walk. But uh, I'm actually, so I'm up now. But, uh, oh, Tessa's at below 76 now. Yeah. Uh, you know what it is? I'm just like, it's just nerve-wracking when my setup is, is failing me. So uh, I blame the setup, not myself. Uh, it is what it is. But this is now potentially going back to the downside. Uh, so this is what I was initially looking for on this move. How do I get this here? Okay, yeah, here we go. Um, you know, popping out, I stopped out at the high of day. It's unfortunate. I said I wanted to uh, short the breakdown of 176.50-ish. 
So that was like that was like the banger short. It looked like it was actually good there. Um, but yeah, that was. Uh, I mean, maybe now it goes to test the blue line. I don't know. But I, I missed the short. If it gets back up there, I'll try to short 176. Uh, this is like less size now. Though. I'm gonna go like really light size on that. All right, let's um, shout yeah, out um, a super chatter here. Uh, Ken Hall, ten dollars super chat says thank you, Neil and Sean, for the Lucid play. Wow, I made over seven hundred and fifty dollars on Lucid calls. Thank you very much, man. That's I, I love hearing it, man. When like viewers and people who you know follow what the show does make money, because that's really what it's all about. I'm mean, otherwise really why we're here. So. Great move today, guys. Uh, we're we're basically at days high on the future, 4095. Uh, we're at 4093 and a quarter. So for all intents and purposes, someone said yesterday, I said intensive purposes. No, it's not intensive care. It's intense and purposes. I'm joking, of course. For all intents and purposes, we are at days high. So I'm all out of my meta long. Uh, now it's kind of curling in the other way. Uh, so sell the frowny face. Is this an area to go short? I mean, the market's at days high, and you heard Sean taking Tesla short, so I'm thinking here we may see, you know, uh, Tesla uh, a move back down on some of these uh, some of these big capper names. They've had a great move up all morning. Where is the relief? Uh, I don't want to call it a relief rally, but, you know, you guys get what I'm trying to say here. Uh, usually things oscillate back and forth. All right, the trades that we're in that we're going to have to monitor are this AI trade. It is... At the moment, not working out for me. Um, it's not printing lower lows. That's the saving grace, but it's not printing higher highs either. And that concerns me. So we are in a bit of a range. And I'm going to have to look at this $17 bottom here to add, looking for a 17 uh, bounce. I'm kind of banking on the whole dollar here. BuzzFeed continues to fly to the high side. 95s is where we're at now. We took everything out at 80s. This is continuing to, I, I finished saying that this one doesn't move that aggressively. Oh, well, it's moving now, baby. I don't know if shorts are getting uh, squeezed here or what, but that whole dollar is imminent. It looks like we are gonna get to that whole dollar quite quickly. I don't see too much size here on the book, but I may not be seeing the full picture as a lot of these iceberg uh, orders, especially on these small cappers, they, they, they basically like to take full effect to blindside you. Uh, here we go, back up to 95s. Again, we're at days high at the moment. What a move it has been today on BuzzFeed. S-O-U-N, flushing to the downside, so I'm out of that trade. That ends up being an L for me. Flush me down the toilet there, Sean, if you can. Uh, that's not a good look. I kept saying flat bottom break, flat bottom break. I didn't want to get out of it for an L, and I get out of it for a bigger L. Sucks to be me on S-O-U-N, but there we go. Let's see what this one does. Does it have another leg up, or is it all over for soon on this one? So is that ended up being a big L? Eh, it's not the biggest L. It does do make a dent in our day, though. Uh, I think next to go probably is going to be AI, even though I don't have my stop set on this one. It's not really an aggressive mover. So I'm able to kind of uh, have more of a manual stop. And uh, yeah, but this one's not looking good either. So a couple of good trades on BZFD and Meta and a couple of bad trades so far. One for sure on soon. And this other one on AI. AI I'm still I'm flat on because of this awesome trade earlier, right? Take that long, hit, hit, hit. And then we're, we're out, 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 out over here. So we're positive on it. This is the trade that's been bad. Uh, I initially got in up here, scalped a little bit, and, scalped out a little piece and then it's been retracing ever since we averaged in we have as low as i think a 10 ad there but you know it's been basically making lower highs and not lower lows though but we'll see uh lucid what's lucid doing uh lucid is halted guys okay so let's go ahead here and flip the meta chart and look at lucid whoops is lucid um it's nasdaq right there we go nq yes it is so it's halted this is, uh, let's see what the tap is on this one. Let me have a look at this LCID. Let's go load, load, load. Come on, computer, you can do it. There we go. What's the tap? 11.15. The tap is the theoretical auction price on Lucid is $11.15. We are halted at 11.18, so technically it's going to go back down. Obviously, a lot may happen. Typically, these are five-minute halts, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what this one does. Not gonna. I haven't participated in it. You've seen Lucid being traded by Sean. You saw Lucid being traded by the man to my left over here, Luca. 
He's taken to that to the north side with success. I have not reached out to that one yet. We'll keep an eye on it though. All right, let's see what else the chat is up to. Lucid halting, yeah, we got that. Why is Tilray up? Let's see what uh, the wheat stocks are doing today. They're probably not doing much. Okay, yeah, they are. Wheat stocks are positive. I don't know if it's a general market move or there's something specific related to the industry, but you have grow generations up 5%, uh, CGC up 5 Tilray up uh, 2 and a half. Uh, Aurora Cannabis up 4.2%. So you've got some good ever, what is this, Evergen? E Evil Gene, Evil Gene up uh, six and over a half. A lot of these are penny stocks now. Wow, when I got into these, these were a lot more expensive. It's been a rough ride for these wheat stocks as we really get uh, the market squeezing them quite badly. All right, where are we at here? Let's see what else people are up to. NVIDIA on the move, on the move. All right, so let's have a look at NVIDIA over here. NVIDIA, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's been a nice little move lately on this one. It's been quite parabolic. All right, now up two and three quarter percent. Nice bounce off VWAP here. Uh, you could have had that one if you didn't get the initial move up. Nice little bounce and it holds that 199 level. Always nice when those two levels are related or they're closer together. It puts more weight on that dip buy, but nice little move up from that 199. We're testing now the high of days. We almost are basically at high of days, 203.59. That's a hell of a level right there. Uh, let's have a look at the daily chart, see if we're gonna encounter any resistance here on NVIDIA. Where are we at here? Let's have a look. All right, so yeah, we are above resistance. Look at this area over here. This 197, I wanna say 195 to 197. That area, basically, we, we took that area we took over that area and this area here. Look at, so we're creating some newer highs. I mean, this could end up being one of those smiley faces that you heard Michael Noss talk about. Let's not count our uh, eggs before they hatch, though. Obviously, chickens before they hatch, excuse me. How can, yeah. Anyway, our chickens before they hatch because, uh, you know, we don't really know if the trend is going to go there until it is. Um, Neil, someone says Neil halted. Let's have a look. Uh, I don't see Neil halted here. Let's have a look. No, Neil's not halted. So someone trying to get my attention, Neil halted. No, it's not. Um, Lucid is the one that's halted, guys. It's up 24.22%. You get to go? No, okay. So let's have a continue to have a look here. Um, BuzzFeed really closing in on that $4 mark though, guys. $3.99, this one's getting squeezed up now, up over 90%. In case you're just joining us, oh, basically the, short. the last few days, the whole idea has been okay. uh, for BuzzFeed to take advantage too. of ChatGPT and it was hired by Meta to basically pump more content creators in there. And that's what they yeah, have been the doing. And the stock has been reacting. All right, back All to right, this AI trade. Uh, we're long 46s. Right, We've go. just retraced now back into the 30s. Uh, we created a new high in the meantime. So that makes me very happy because we were worried about this trade. It had kind of been consolidating sideways. And to some extent, it still is. So whew, we'll have to wait for this one to kind of break that 45, maybe even 50. I'm sitting here at 56 is waiting halted? to get filled. What? Tesla is printing to the downside. I'm getting some Sean, you still uh, excited people to my left, my right here. Uh, Tesla is going Lucid. aggressively to the downside. One, where are we? 174 is we, we're basically at the door of 174 here. It's flushing as we get a nice wow, little market Lucid. move down 4088. Um, let's have a look at Lucid. This Jesus. one's open right back down. Walk, uh, back. Where are That's we crazy. here? So Lucid, where do we open? We closed that 1118s. Okay, so now we're at 1120s. There we go. Now we're breaking above that halt level, but I'm seeing a lot of selling coming in on the book there, but a lot of blue showing up, but a lot more orange as we continue to head to the high side. Where's the high of day on Lucid? Do I have it on my side chart here? Jeez, man, I got to get more ready here. Yeah, let's take this one off. LCID, what's the high of day? 1140, we're hanging out around 30, so we're very close to that to that high of day break. This is getting crazy. Um, again, what's, this, what's the uh, news on this one? It was something uh, earlier on. Yeah, it was the buyout, that's right. Forgot about that. So chatter for the buyout. We don't know That's for amazing. sure. Forty-seven is now the day high. Are you good to go? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. it's uh. Sorry, guys. I come back. Mm -hmm. I'm like lucid. A, a halted. What? <laughs> and now we're like, uh, yeah. This thing's going eleven fifties right now. Sean, you still long? Yeah, Sean is still long, so somebody Woo! is long. The long it's is not flying, wrong. Baby. Bio chatter money, is reason money, to go money, long. Money, uh, I'm kind of regretting money, my uh, money, money. scalp, uh, my scalp trades over there. I should have just held uh, the majority of that for the long. 
But uh, yeah, not really too sure what to think now, but is what it is, no problem. I do also get back to my desk, so let me look at the positions that I'm in. Uh, Tesla actually flushed, I didn't cover. Now it's going back up, but I'm gonna hold on to this. We'll see where that one goes. Um, hopefully it goes back down, not back up, but obviously it has the potential to go back up there, but still into that short. And uh, yeah, BuzzFeed, I am seeing, I am seeing this uh, at four. So we'll see if this wants to actually break four and then do some type of over under. I'm in the position, I have like a 384 average, kind of waiting for this to break to really scale into it. <clears throat> so we'll see what happens. <clears throat> My goodness, man. Yeah, you got something? No, no, I don't. <clears throat> Um, yeah, Tesla is now back, uh, back up. You know what, I think it's, I'm going to just put a stop in on this one. If it goes over 177, um, I'm just like not really paying attention, nor do I care. So if this goes over 177, then I'll be out of that trade. Um, but uh, if it goes back down, it goes back down. We'll see what happens. Still basically a dollar in the money on that. But yeah, Lucid is 1180 now, guys. Lucid 1180. Um, do we go to 12? Probably. Probably print 12 here. I have no idea what to think, but uh, yeah, Sean is $2 in the money now. Um, what a banger, man. What a banger to the upside. Is AMC's joining the party? Okay, 12. 12. Now going to 12. Jeez. Okay, I am like, guys, this is day trading. Sometimes things oh, go all crazy. And I'm just like, There's a lot I'm of like, size wow. on that 12, guys. I'm seeing huge size here on the book. I scalped some out through like 99s there. I'm waiting for that 12 to break. I'm, I'm sitting at 1207s. I'm long 82. So let's see, here comes 12 again. Do we reject off this level? We really haven't, there we go. We're eating it up a little bit. That size getting taken out. But you know, we're gonna have that fight between uh, the, the buyers and sellers. We get that rejection back down south. Does it get bought up? We back, move back, right back into the 80s. Wow, I feel like an auctioneer. Right back into the 90s again. So this one's gonna be topsy-turvy. Uh, I'm gonna sit here on the other side of 12 and see what happens. Sorry to interrupt you, Luca. No, man, interrupt the way every time, man. Every time, not a problem there. Um, you know, I should be up like $40 million today, to be honest, with these kind of moves, but I'm not, and that's why I'm super frustrated. No, like, I mean, you know, long at so below 10 on, uh, on, oh, man, I wish these charts would work, but long below, uh, long below 10, and, uh, yeah, no, I don't want to show that one. I'm going to show this one. Is this going to work? This is not the one that I want to show. Lucid. Um, okay, hopefully they, hopefully they stick around now. Uh, yeah, guys, this is like, look how bad that looks, man. It looked good before. I was like, oh, yeah, this is solid. Oh, yeah, taking that win, it. baby. And then all the way to 12. Oh, no. Hit the fail. Hit oh, the no. flush. That's just like, ah, oh, it is what it is, man. But, um, yeah, that is, uh, that is uh, you know, that is that. I mean, there's only uh, so much you can do there. Um, okay. All right. Um, yeah, I uh, still short Tesla here. We're gonna wait for, uh, we're gonna wait to see if this wants to flush. I should have covered some at that, I didn't even notice, to be honest. Um, yeah, this is frustrating. Oh yeah, BZ, uh, okay, BZFD. Now that this is going, okay, taking more here. So let's go back to BZ, oh man, this is, guys, you have no idea how frustrated I am right now, to be honest, but uh, it's all good. Um, okay, now averaging in at 409, cause not showing the arrows, I wanna like show the arrows so that I also show myself. Um, okay, so averaging in 409, printing 410, are we getting a flush back down? I don't know. My average is just under four. This is a part of the plan. I'm basically watching that 420 general area. The only thing that I'm kind of worried about, um, I don't know if this is a headline or what's going on here, but the only thing I'm kind of worried about is it was like a slow move up. So this isn't necessarily like the parabolic, like up and down that I want to see. So if it like goes up, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna like uh, get out of the trade. Um, so let's see what, let's see what happens if this breaks uh, 425. For, if it breaks 426, I'll just I'll just get out of that position. I'll put a stop in, um, and then yeah, stop is in for Tesla. Stop is in for BZFD. So not really too worried there. So like now I can move on to other trades. Um, what else am I looking at here? Oh, Nvidia is at at 203.50 now. So I guess the long there was good. I, I swear I had a bit out. I guess I didn't get the fill. Oh yeah, I didn't come again, back down. 12 again, getting killed. 12 again, getting in. There we go. Boom! We get that fill. Woo! We got, <laughs> got excited there for a lucid, nice little trade. I was waiting on that average din uh, at that. Where did I get in? I got 65s again. Initial entry was that 81, getting in at 65s. Then that average, I mean that all that size getting bought up. Wow, that 12 got killed really quickly. A lot of buying coming in there. That tape really reflected it, pumped about that. So uh, nice little trade there on Lucid to get ourselves a little out of it, uh, out of a little bit of trouble. Um, back to this AI trade, I'm kind of 
really have had it with this tray, to be honest with you. Uh, this one was a good one in the beginning. Now it's really kind of consolidating and doing nothing, but it's not breaking my level. So it's not giving me a reason to get out. So I'm going to continue to just watch. I know it's not the sexiest trade around, but it's the one that I've got on. Neo's moving to the high side now. Rivian's moving to the high side. All these sympathy plays are starting to go. Lucid is flying to the high side. 12, where are we? 31's now. 33's I'm seeing here. What a big boy move up to the high side. Adam Duluth saying, well done. No, I paper handed another trade because <laughs> I could have been holding into this level here, but you know, it is what it is. It ends up being positive, but what a move, Lucid. And the volatility in these markets is so good. It's presenting so many opportunities to get in, but uh, yeah. What's that? Punched more long at 12. Sean punched more long at 12. He got long there, so he was initially lot $2 in the money at that point. So in addition to his position, now we have a 212.43 high oh, on Lucid. BuzzFeed just absolutely tanked off Let's that go. four and a quarter all the way down to 485. That is That's one ugly for. move on the way down if you were long. Thankfully, we are not. Let's go to BuzzFeed real, real quick. Look how ugly that came out. I was singing the praise of this uh, stock earlier saying, oh, you know, it doesn't move that aggressively. Well, someone with a lot of money or a lot of eyes are on this one because it is moving like crazy up to that 425 again. And then in one swift move, we go back all the way to the 50 period on the one minute chart, which is that 378 area. If you were sitting on the 50 period, you got paid because it moved up. How much did it move? Like, wow, 30 cents. And I gotta say, like in a second or so. So uh, we're hanging around at uh, we're hanging around around that four dollar area. But what a big move down! That probably stopped out a lot of people who were long, Luca. Yeah, I uh, that's looking good for me, man. But it's uh, we'll see if it continues to flush. I'm basically waiting here. I covered nothing. I'm still holding 396 average. Uh, I'm trying to get like a you know it stopped and reversed right off 378s. Uh, yeah, maybe I should have covered some over there. But all good, man. We'll see if this is now the uh, short term top. And if we Hold drop down. Through. Halt on what? It's going to halt. Um, Lucid. It's going to... Yeah, it, go, go. It's going to fake halt. No, no. There it is. It's halted. That's it. Lucid, Lucid squeezing. It's halted at 12.55. This is amazing because so many things are happening at the same time that it's like this, that. Wow. Oh, my God. Guys, BuzzFeed, Lucid, Tesla. Wow. It's so exciting. I, uh, I, I'm like lost for... When this happens, I'm just lost for words. All I can say is wow because all these things are going nuts. Uh, I got Lucid here on the top side. So, yeah, it's obviously grayed out. Now we're going to see what happens. It is halted. Um, yeah, waiting for BuzzFeed, Tesla oh, still in the baby. money. I don't know what to think. Yeah, oh baby is basically <laughs> all I could say here. Oh baby, I have no idea what to think. Uh, did you have any longs there on Lucid? Did I? Yeah. Did I ever? No, okay. Did I, I, I don't ever? Know, I'm just like, yes, baby, but I paper handed yet another trade. Ah, uh, man. Uh, because I did not hold for the I got hands. too excited as soon as that, that, um, the 12 broke, I, I got too excited. Maybe if I had the diamond hands animation on my board, I wouldn't paper hand. So many trades. There you go, baby. Diamond hands. Um, I like that. I like that animation. All right. Uh, yeah, let's the, have a look. Uh, somebody we'll was look asking, up. why do things halt? So just very quickly, things halt because if they move 10% yeah. in one direction without printing the other way, then they will halt. And it's just like a 10% halt ban that, uh, that they have. Um, so yeah, there's, there's that. That's basically why things halt. Uh, yeah, just heads up. BuzzFeed actually now flushing. You know, we could actually, can we go, okay, I'm looking at 350. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, give me that. Uh, okay, now I'm starting to cover this in the flush. Let's see if this wants to get down to, like, the, the low 60s, low 50s. Um, and if we break 350 to the downside, man, I feel like, what's this line? 350, yeah, 350 break to the downside. This thing can, uh, has room to go back to three. So it did it yesterday where it went to 280 and then went back to two. This is basically, I was looking for more of a parabolic move to the upside, and I did say if this breaks 425, I'm going to stop out. So I'm kind of happy that, that I didn't get stopped out. I was like, one cent. And that's the thing, man. You're one cent away from greatness. You know, one cent, you're not stopped out. You're now in a sick winner, uh, 20 cent winner, and we're going to the downside. Uh, you know, two cents, stopped out, and then it could have it still went down, right? So uh, pretty happy with that one. We're going to see if this one wants to go and break. The blue line here, break to the downside, uh, that'll be solid. So I'm basically chilling now on the book, waiting for the fills down there. Uh, yeah, still short Tesla, things are looking okay. Waiting for Lucid to open. Um, that'll be interesting to see where it goes. And uh, yeah, man, today, what a day, what a Friday. I love Mondays, mm -hmm. I love Fridays. And you know what, Wednesdays? Everything is, oh, uh, well, whatever. We'll, Wednesdays we'll is whatever. the worst, because it's just like in the middle and I like know, whatever. So yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. But uh, the, yeah, man, G Trader, thing. everything flying, things going nuts. Just make sure when you got, <clears throat> okay. When you guys are trading, um, yeah, make sure that, you know, you're sticking to the things that you know you do best. So even though a lot of things are moving and going crazy, 
you know, and you can't decide, oh, there's like four things, like what do I get into? I, I suck when I multitask. Um, you know, stick to the one that you do best. So if you think that you're better at trading Lucid as opposed to Tesla, and they're both like A setups, and you don't wanna do both of them, you know, gravitate to the one that you do, uh, that you do the best um, on. So that's kind of what I do. Uh, you know, if you told me BuzzFeed versus Tesla, you know, gun to my head, I have to choose one or the other. I'm choosing BuzzFeed, it's a, it's a easier trade for myself. Uh, Lucid, easier trade for myself uh, versus like a Tesla, um, you know, just because it's obviously uh, very challenging and stressful, uh, as everybody knows. So, uh, yeah, as traders, we love volatility for sure, Adam. Um, 100%, I agree with that one. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys uh, are catching some of these moves, man. These are crazy. I'm just basically now waiting for the flush down uh, and eyeing Tesla because the last thing I want is another trade <laughs> to go against me on there. I'm, I'm not going to lie. All right, guys. Um, I'm keeping an eye on some of these big cappers here. Uh, my eyes on Meta. It this would have been a great short to get into, man. It, just like we bought the happy face, we got to buy the sad face, short the sad face. So this was a clear roundabout on the bottom. You had the, the equal, basically opposite move on the top. I should have been getting into the short uh, 152 and a quarter, maybe riding it down for 50 pennies. Uh, didn't do it, but in hindsight, it's obviously 2020. But looking at that now, waiting for Lucid to open up as well. We're, wait, we're sitting at this hall, 1255. The tap on Lucid at the moment is 12, 1220. So it technically is lower than where we, uh, where we uh, stopped out at, which is 1255. So we'll see what this one does. I think it's got another minute. That's if, uh, another 30 seconds or so. That is if it's a five minute halt. Uh, otherwise we have another five minutes to go, maybe four and a half minutes if it's gonna be a 10 minute halt. Um, Quelly Cut, Quelly Kush, Quelly Cut, Quelly Kush. I hope I didn't butcher your name. Five dollar super chat said I read many books on trading, but nothing compares to the education I get from you guys. Thumbs up. Really appreciate that comment. Uh, really, uh, really happy to have you as why a viewer. And this is basically why. Mm -hmm. This is why uh, we kind of we do this every day, <laughs> hey, which darling. is for you guys. <laughs> Thanks for that, Bradley. So it looks like it will be uh, a ten minute halt on Lucid for the moment. I'm not sure. Oh, no, there we go. We open up. We open up lower. Um, so where are we at at the moment? We're at 1220. 1255 is where we stopped out. So we open lower, guys. Keep that in mind. Keep that 1255 as a possible resistance level in mind. But, you know, this one's been very parabolic. It could break right through. There we go. We rip right through it. We're 68s, uh, 69s. Now 70 is the high. This one's going to the high side, baby. It's got legs. I don't know what the short... Uh, float on uh, lucid is maybe we'll have a look at that here we go 80s now uh can we see 90s i'm seeing 90 on the tape high 90s here comes 13. wow this <laughs> bradley Yelly from the back 15. say 15 baby uh we're seeing a lot of size here oh, at 13. that really gets bad. eaten up it gets absolutely destroyed it's gonna halt lucid to the upside. is crazy oh, to no, the upside halt. yeah fake halt lucas says take it over baby uh, yeah, no, no, it's uh, looking like it's going to halt. Sometimes, guys, what, what's, what happens is Thank it could you. go into what looks like an up halt, and then it could go back down and then go back up, go back down, and then it could go even higher. Um, so, you know, uh, I don't know. Can it get if, much higher? Yeah, can it get so much higher? I mean, Pratt's calling 15. Oh, now, at this oh, point, guys, oh. where, where does Lucid go today? You know, Gregory's saying 30. I think 30 because that's 13. You know, do, does this go to 15? Does this go to 18? Where does this go? I don't know. Um, you know, bio chatter. What is the bio price? Talk about parabolic move to the upside. This is a move that I personally will not be fading because it's a bio chatter. So it could literally go and then a bio could be announced and then it could just like stay there because like that's the bio price, right? So uh, yeah, I am not looking to fade this move, uh, you know, just, just uh, mentioning that. Let's look at the daily to see, uh, you know, where we are here. I know people, oh, oh, wow, oh, 1340 oh, to the upside. Oh, I'm printing okay. on this, baby. There we go. We take some more out there. We're up huge on Lucid. And no, are we gonna get halted? Looks like we're gonna halt. I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna take a half position out there. So I'll hold a little bit into the halt. This is a big boy move, a nice, another 50 penny winner. There on Lucid, we take that 13 break with our boy Sean and now we are halted to the high side at 1340. I don't see the tap yet. We'll see that one momentarily. I'll let you guys know, but what a move to the high side is Lucid. We're up big on it so far but I cannot say the same for this AI trade. I despise this stock now. This stock and I have beef. Um, to be honest, my saving grace is gonna be a 17 bounce, but I'm not putting much stock into that. 17 bounce or 50 period bounce here on the three minute. 
I hate this stock. After being green on it, it's going to make me go red. That's absolutely not acceptable. But anyway, we'll continue to be excited by this Lucid trade, which outweighs uh, this L that we have on AI at the moment. 1340, guys. I don't see a tap. I don't know. Why is my, not my tap not coming up on the screen here? That's kind of annoying. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to watch that, Luca. Yeah, guys, I'm just looking at daily levels, and I kind of want to say 17 is not unreasonable based on these lines here. So Prad... Prad has, uh, uh, yeah, Prad's got a line here because this is Prad's account from before, and he's got a line at 16. So, Prad, you said 15, yeah, but yeah. there's a line here at 16, I'll 7, 16, 12. Is, uh, oh, you're changing it to 17 now? <laughs> is that what he's saying? He's, like, he's changing his thing to 17. Yeah, guys, I see um, 16 to 17 area. Could be interesting. I mean, it's that's where it like bounced over here. This is the daily, guys. Bounce, bounce. This was the low. Bounce, you know, baby. bounce, 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 then slow grind. I mean, it could be. I mean, if I was buying Lucid, what would I pay for this? I don't know, maybe like 16, maybe 20. Um, I would not pay 25, but obviously anything's possible. And I mean, who, who am I to guess this uh, on the fundamentals where I'm just kind of throwing out prices out of nowhere here? Uh, we'll see where that wants to open. Uh, still in the Tesla trade, still in the uh, BuzzFeed trade. You know, letting them work. They're uh, in the money. Tesla 50 cents, BuzzFeed almost 20 cents. Uh, just kind of chilling, waiting. No, no more trades on Lucid. Oh, man, that's so frustrating for myself seeing it like this. I mean, look, the background of the chart is green. You would think it'd be an indication. Hold the long. The long is not wrong. Uh, but thank God I didn't short this thing, honestly. Uh, yeah, thank God I didn't short that thing. Uh, we'll see what happens, man. We will see what happens next. Someone's saying, can you look at GME? Sure, let's have a look back at GME. It was uh, having a nice, oh yeah, I forgot I have to do it here. Um, it was having a nice up move. This is the daily on GME. The level that I see on the daily, uh, which is a pretty interesting level, is that kind of 24 region. Uh, it does line up with this blue line, so moving average. Um, kind of giving a little bit of a pop drop, pop drop on the daily. I think if we clear the highs and this really gets volume and it starts to go, you know, next level would be like 24, 25 test. Uh, on the intraday perspective, all right, where are we here? On the intraday, it's, um, yeah, it's looking okay. It's looking okay. I think if it holds, like, if it holds this line, like, 2120 area, uh, you know, maybe comes back down, and then for a move back, I've seen this setup before on GME, honestly. This is, like, it starts to go, it consolidates, and then it really, like, runs into, like, a head and shoulders type thing. So I wonder if that can, that has potential to happen again. Um, but, yeah, it would have to continue to hold trend, obviously. So, you know, watch that 21, 25-ish area just in front of moving average. Um, and then obviously the high of day, uh, wherever that is, uh, call it 22.20. You know, if it breaks that to the upside, maybe it has legs to keep going. Uh, volume still kind of light. You know, a little bit of a volume spike, but, uh, you know, volume kind of subsiding. You know, does it continue? Does it keep going to the upside? Does it explode into 24? I mean, anything's possible. Um, let's look at AMC very quickly to see where this one is. Uh, oh, yeah, I got to do it. AMC, um, uh, nice little spike. This is the thing, man. Lucid goes. AMC goes, GME goes, uh, everything goes. Uh, where's BBBY? BBBY for sure is uh, BBB. It's not doing anything? Really? Oh, that's surprising. I'm just kind of like looking at all these things in tandem. So it's like all of them are kind of related in my own mind. Um, when they start to move, the algos are like, okay, jump into everything. Uh, start going. So yeah, Lucid, uh, uh, you know, that'll open shortly. We'll see what happens there. I'll leave that one to Sharif because he is all over that one, trading like an absolute beast. So congratulations to your long. Thank you. I mean, I was good. I was good initially. I made money. It was a great trade. But like, yeah, I should be up like forty million dollars. Like, what's going on here? This is a. This is, I'm just like mad. I'm always mad here. But oh, oh, what a pump, yeah, Corey. Oh, what a pump, man. What a pump. Uh, yeah, you hopefully no dumps for the long. I know some people in the chat were like, I'm long. Like I'm printing. Uh, congratulations, you the real MVP. Congratulations for putting your money where your mouth is. Uh, continue to take trades that make sense to you and good things will happen. I'm actually so surprised that I'm not getting stopped out on Tesla. Uh, like it's just, it's always in the money, so I'm gonna continue to hold it. But yeah, main focus, uh, I'm just gonna watch Lucid with my hands off the keys because at this point, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but uh, I don't wanna uh, do something dumb. So yeah, hands are off for uh, Lucid and I will just kind of watch uh, Sharif uh, go with this one. All right, I'm in the Tesla long as well. Open, Looking to take way. some out here, there we go. We take another little baby out long on Tesla. Lucid open, I'm sitting here. Okay, so there we go, we get that move up. Where are we long? We're long on Lucid, where are we? 1322s, there we go. So it's still, yeah, in and around our area. 
Uh, there, okay, so let's see what this one does. I had a resting profit taker. It went right through it. Didn't feel, I guess it was an area of illiquidity. There we go, now back up to the 30s. So let's take a little bit out there. And so now how much do we have on Lucid? Small position left. So uh, let's see what this one does. I mean, it's holding 13 for the moment. So I don't want to paper hand this trade. I want to give it opportunity to go up. I'm out of a lot of it. It's very profitable for me. So I can kind of uh, allow it to go against me a little bit. My longs are at 22. So I have a bit, a bit of a 10 penny buffer. I'm looking for the break of the half dollar and a sustained move up to 14. That's really what I'm looking. There we go. We get some 40 prints here. Can the buyer step in? Uh, there we go. 50 breaks. There we go. Up to 60. So I'm waiting here. Let's, let's see if we can move up into the 70s. There we go. 60s again. Um, yeah, for the time being, we're going to have to hang around this area. Uh, buyer stepping up though. Uh, I'm seeing mid 60s. Can we get into this some 70s? No, back down into the 50s. So this one, very volatile. Have some resting orders or have some hot keys, guys, whatever. There we go. We'll take out another little piece there, baby. Uh, oh, no, we don't actually. Okay, so we'll have to use this key and it gets away from us. So very frustrating when that doesn't work. So let's go ahead and put that up here. See if it comes back to that price. How much we got on here? Lucid, Lucid, there we go. So we'll put that much in there. So we'll wait for that one to come back. There we go. Now back into the 50s. Uh, can we get a big move up again? I mean, it's hanging out at that half dollar level, a little bit below. Uh, there we go. Oh, geez. I'm going to have to like actually watch what this one does. And I have other trades on that I have to monitor at the same time. So a bit tough for me to do all that. Take over for a second. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, guys, just a heads up. Charles Schwab had the spike down. I'm sure uh, mm -hmm. people saw that. But they are having an investor update that is on mm -hmm. the way. Um, so kind of interesting there. Uh, nice move from 78.50 all the way down to 75. I wonder what comes from it. I guess we'll see when we do have the news, we'll bring it to you. Um, no trades for myself on this right now. Just kind of monitoring it, watching it. Uh, we'll see if it, uh, you know, what happens uh, next on that one. Come but yeah, on, man, baby. crazy, uh, crazy, crazy day, man. Crazy day. Go. Uh, Get lots that of excitement. Fill, baby. Woo! Money, we're spinning money, the money, money on money, this one, and we're money, still holding money, a piece money, money. on Lucid. This is a big boy trade, guys. Look at these ones and these ones over here. We're not talking little pennies here. I mean, these are like 75, 80 penny moves. These are pretty decent. They're not whole dollars like my guy to my right here taking two and a half dollars on this stock. But hey, you know, we'll, we'll take it. Where are we long? 22. So we're 20 pennies in the money. I think I'm just going to get out of this one. I mean, how much am I holding? I'm holding 10% of the position. Uh, is this enough for me here? Uh, yeah, I got other trades to monitor. We're going to get out of this one. But very nice trade on that one. Back to our boy Tesla here. We took out some nice... Uh, longs on this one. We're long 176 is kind of retraced here, but you know, I'm, I'm looking for a curl up in the market. So very small position on Tesla, not really going to affect me too much. I'll hold this one and ride the wave. AI, the bane of my existence, got up to my break even area and I didn't have an opportunity to get out because I was too busy looking at that lucid trade. That's what happens when you trade too many things, but we got a nice little ad here, a heavy ad to kind of get our cost basis down. Uh, we're seeing 22s here come in on, but you know, this is oscillating. So I feel like I've missed the up move because it doesn't really retrace and move up. No, it oscillates up, down, up, 14s. down. So this one, let's go. Really frustrating me on this one. Really frustrating me is wow. AI. What is going on over here? It looks like yep. this one is continuing to fly to the high side. 14 just got taken, baby. 14. Woo! We are flying to the high side. Wow, this is beautiful. Luca, what is going on? This is, uh, it's okay, we're gonna go Woo. into an up hold right now. It could be a fake one. Watch that 1407 there. Prad's in the back, guys. You, you probably can't hear him, but he's in the back and he's going, 14s, wow, <laughs> wow, 14s. Oh my God. Congratulations, King of Rings, still holding 5,300 shares at 1067 average entry. Woo, wow, wow, wow. Wow, halt it again. Let's go. Hopefully you guys are printing on this one. I am, as you can see, not in a lucid trade. And I'm just like, oh my God, like why am I not in with max size over here? What's going on? But it's no big deal. I'm actually getting fills. Now BuzzFeed is actually flushing to the downside. So pretty happy with this one. Uh, getting, uh, getting some out over here as it continues to flush. Uh, that's basically the plan. But I think this one's good, man. I think we're actually done on this. And the fact that like Lucid is going crazy, all these other things are going crazy. To me, it's like really good for the uh, for the BuzzFeed short because people and algos are moving away from the stock now onto other stocks. So this actually has potential to continue to go to the downside. 
Um, you know, less exciting, good for the shorts. 404 average right now, basically uh, 40 cents in the money, can't complain. Uh, I'm pretty excited with that one. So let's see if this one actually wants to continue to fade. I want to try to hold for like, uh, yeah, like the 50. So I'm getting out basically as this comes to 50. And then, um, and then yeah, we're going to see if this wants to break 350. And then I'll potentially cover, uh, try to cover like, you know, 311s uh, if this wants to flush down. So yeah, it could go to 338. It could get to three. Uh, three is the over under from before. So three is basically the area that I'm looking at for the cover on that one. Uh, pretty excited, pretty happy with, uh, with that. Definitely, uh, definitely makes up for missing, uh, missing Lucid, that's for sure. Um, yeah, now we're breaking 350 to the downside. This thing is gonna, uh, this thing is, we're going down, man. We're going down. down I down, mean, down, baby. down, down. Hit the, hit a angel. thing for the down, the down. Flush. All the way, there we go, man. Let's go, let's go. Okay, sick. So I'm basically covering that as we go. Um, yeah, covering into this yellow line here. Uh, not really sure what the moving, at. this looks like it would be maybe a 50 period. I don't even know, but you know what? Why not? Just pay myself as it works um, and trying to get uh, the bottom of the, uh, the range there. Yeah, now 60 cents in the money on BuzzFeed. So pretty happy with that one and pretty, pretty happy. Pretty. Dr. Crusher saying Rivian going nuts. Uh, so let's see here on Rivian. Oh no, I gotta pull it up on this one, I keep forgetting. Uh, Rivian, oh, wow, oh, man. baby, we All are these... printing oh, huge God. here on Tesla. I gotta interrupt Lucas. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Go, go, go. There we go. We take another out. What a big boy long we have here on Tesla. Still holding 43% of the position. Looking for a move Tesla. into that half dollar. We got a nice move. What do we have? We have, we have 63s, guys. We just got a print up here in the, I wanna say the 60s, retracing right back down though, right into the, into the whole dollar area, but holding 176, it's been so topsy-turvy, uh, but nice little move up here on Tesla, and we were able to take advantage of that, take a lot out, still holding a, a sizable position, I just don't wanna paper hand this trade, but I gotta take out some there to de-risk, now holding 33% of the position, now let's see if we can get that big move up again, there we go, in the 30s again, let's go in the 40s again, in the 50s again, like, we, can we see in the 60s again let's real oh here we go we reject a little bit there we go 50s we'll take another piece out here there we go up into the 60s again this is a big boy move on tesla can we see 70s though let's go let's see 70s where are we on tesla we got 17 percent of the, the position left so we don't have much to take out here into the 80s we take that out that's top wick i'm sp spending the money babe oh come on <laughs> i put brendo out there how anticlimactic was that there we go through the through the roof goes tesla Meta making the same move too. Meta making even a more Robin aggressive move. Off that 151. Yeah, okay. Is uh, Lucid open? That's a bounce. Not yet. Okay, so 151.50 was the bounce on Meta. Now 152.43. So a cool dollar. Does Meta go? Same thing with Google. Tesla obviously had a bit of more muted response, but we were into Tesla on that one. So we'll take what she can give us. Nice move on Tesla. Luca. Yeah, guys, absolutely crazy there. So your Tesla win is my Tesla cover. I basically covered that trade on the up move. It went to flat and then negative. I go, no, no, not again. Um, but nice to see you winning on the long there, still holding some of the BuzzFeed. Uh, somebody's saying Robinhood is halting. Uh, where was it here in the chat? Somebody's like, Robinhood is halting uh, trading of Lucid. Um, Why does Robinhood, Robinhood is temporary? always I don't know. I don't know if that's... Uh, if, it's not going to be not, true. Yeah, okay. okay. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I'm just kind of reading uh, off the chat here, but yeah, I don't know. Let's look back at GME to see where, see where it is. D is this thing holding? Uh, did we run high a day? Uh, GME, high a day. Um, yeah, kind of making its way up. I wonder if we like break 2220 and then go to the upside on this one. I mean, volume is the tell. Volume's kind of light there, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, holding trend for the time being. So pretty interesting. We'll see what happens next. People saying Beyond is uh, um, doing its thing. Let's have a look here at Beyond. Um, oh yeah, Beyond, 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 Beyond. Beyond is Beyond. This move in Beyond is beyond me, to be honest. I don't know what's happening here. Uh, yeah, heads up, guys. Lucid is open. Lucid so open. now 1430s, Woo! 1440s. Oh Are you my long goodness. this thing? No, man. I'm oh all my out, God. man. I'm all out. I'm paper hander extraordinaire, bro. 1460s. Unreal, this. <laughs> Unreal. This is a squeeze, bro. What was the short float on this, Bradley? Did you whisper that in my ear earlier? 10, 
Ten percent, ten percent short float on Luca guys, which is you know not that we're small. We're today. Decent size, Luca. Go, sorry. We are no, so uh, yeah. we're auctioneers today. It's funny <laughs> you know. mentioned it. You're like we're auctioneers today. Well, we, and, this uh, this type of action you get usually in the morning show, right? We don't have this kind of parabolic 15. action that we have. This one is blowing proudly. You get, you get, you get something today it's for calling fifteen. I'll give what? you that. This is what? going, baby. What a 15, day it has 20, been. Uphold. Here comes the hole. Okay, again. guys. Hopefully, uh, wow. Okay, it's, it's gonna be a fake hole. Fifteen. Uh, I don't. I don't know, man. 15, 20, no, no, no. Five, no, four, three, two. I don't even know. I'm counting <laughs> One. down. One. Hey. It's halted again. Oh 15, God. 20. This is so oh, my Woo. God, guys. Wow. Wow. Unreal. Wow. Unreal. This is going, guys. Talk Unreal. about This is, you do not short this thing. Do not short this thing. I don't know, I don't know what's guys, going on back there. Are you guys there. hitting this? <laughs> you, what is going on here? The traders oh back there. Everybody's God. excited, baby. Everybody's excited. Let's go. Let's go. 20, 30, 40. Is it going to go to 60? No, no, I'm just kidding. I mean, what is the, if it bio chat, well, I don't even know what to think here. I have no idea what to think here, guys. Wow. Um, wow. Should, do you want to look at Rivian and NIO when it's halted? Bradley making that suggestion. Um, uh, I guess yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. Rivian, Rivian, Rivian. Um, 20, Rivian. Oh, yeah, Rivian. Um, Rivian to the. Why, why are all these things moving together? Yeah, well, you I guess know how like it is, it's like man. it's. Uh, I, it's, it's, I mean, I don't have an answer to this, and I guess there's never an answer, but no. if there's bio chatter rumors on Lucid, then uh, Tesla and Rivian must go up, right? Um, yeah, I don't know there. But uh, okay, yeah, Rivian is going up. Um, Oh yeah, no Rivian. I don't. I don't know what to think here, to be honest. Um, I have no idea what to think. But uh, yeah, man, this is. Uh, ha, huh, huh, Okay. Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> I, okay. So he's had last words. So I'll intervene here, guys. I actually um, have nothing to say. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh in this AI long, and I know it's not the sexy oh trade, but I'm back my to my gosh. break even price here. Wow. So do I get out here because I've been underwater the entire day, or do I give this an opportunity to break out? That's kind of really the question here. I'm gonna give this to the break of 20. If this breaks my the 18 level, I'm out of this one. I've had it with this one. I'm already up well on the day, so this can be an L and it can be no problem. Um, Brendo sending in the chat, guys. Uh, PSNY, Polestar, and Fisker, FSR, also moving moving on sympathy. So get on to that one. Um, you know, that's how these stocks work. When one of them gets going, the other ones that are competitors with it in the same industry start moving on sympathy. That's how it plays. So when one halt, <laughs> when one's halted, you can jump on to the other one. There's all sorts of excitement here on the floor, guys. All right, let me go ahead and start scaling some of this out because I feel like we are going to break out here on AI. Yes, we do get the breakout. Finally, I hate this stock. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's get that 39 print here to the high side. Do I get that 39 print? We're printing 39s on the ask. we got to cross, though. Otherwise, I'm not going to get the print. You know what? I'm not going to wait for it. I'm just going to touch this one. There we go. We get a little bit out. That ends up being a profitable trade so far. So I'm going to wait for the rest of it to break more. Let's go ahead and put another a little out here, maybe through the half dollar. Let's go ahead and wait at 48 for that one. So that ends up printing my 39s. Very nice. So now we are profitable on all but one name, and that name is Sour Sound. Uh, Fisker is moving. I see the guy to my right, Sean Katina, talking about Fisker moving. So get on to that. Get on to PSNY. Get on to Rivian. These are the ones that are going to be moving wow. at the moment. Take it over, Luca. No, I'm just like, look, all these yeah. charts are, the, this is like, wow. Okay, I got nothing to say here. I'm, I'm just like, I am entertained. Hopefully you guys are entertained. You are know, you hit the like button. Let's do a quick like check here. Where are we at? Guys, 2.1K, 5,500 people watching. Are you not entertained? Like I am, that's for sure. Uh, hit that like button. I hit yeah, it like 20 times like. if I could, man. Um, yeah, and man, guys, this is crazy. By the way, this is I just crazy. I want to mention real quick, guys, that crazy. we have an interactive chat. People are constantly posting tickers for us in the chat and interacting back and forth with us. But the only way to do that is you have to be a subscriber. It's a subscriber only chat, guys. There we go. We get that fill on AI. Money, We're going to spend money, the money, man. Money, I've been money, nursing money, this money, trade money, money, all money. day. Finally, we get that. And then we get a big break now here. We're moving into the high 50, so I'm waiting to take more on this one. Let's go ahead and take more out here. Uh, where are we going to hang out? We're going to hang out at 59s and see what we get there. 58s is what I'm seeing here on the bid, uh, on the ask, excuse me. There we go. Come on, come on, fill me. All right, so maybe we'll talk about something else while this one fills. 59 now on the ask. Um, what's so up? So Lucid, just ahead, like, I know you talk short flow. Like Lucid is 20, supposedly 22% short float. It has 500 mil float. 
that means 100 million shares of Lucid are short. And if there's bio chatter, man, that is not good for shorts. That is not good for shorts. Uh, but obviously, everything going to the upside. This is crazy. Um, CVNA. Okay, let's have a look. CVNA, where is this thing? Um, this is pumping. This is going back to eight. CVNA. Oh, my. Everything. Everything up. Um, everything up. Abort the short. The law can't be wrong. Everything is going. Everything is leaving planet Earth right now. Uh, shout out to whoever said that before. That's pretty funny. Uh, making me laugh here. GME breaking up as well. Let's have a look back here at GME. Uh, GME is over 22 now. Oh, yeah, GME uh, over 22. Um, <laughs> wow, man. I, I got not, I, like, wow, wow. All the memes are pumping, baby. FSR, AMC, GN. Oh, yeah, GNS. Somebody was saying it from before. GNS as well. Uh, okay, no, GNS back down. Um, Fill let's me, look at something man. else. Fill yeah, you're going, me, you're going for AI. There on that we one. go. We get the fill again, Luca. <laughs> let's it's go. a good day, baby. It's a good day. All right, so we are very happy now with this AI trade. I no longer look at it as the bane of my existence. I'm very GME pleased with beyond, it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I'm up very heavy, boy, on it at the moment. I'm holding. I want to say 35% of the position remaining here. These are all the outs. We average in heavy. Uh, to be honest the with you, apes are alive. this one took a lot of patience. Look, I initiated this position at 12.09. It's now 1.38, so it's taken a lot of my uh, time and patience Lucid. to, uh, to Lucid. move on this one. What are we doing with Lucid? Are we open? Guys, no, we're Lucid, not open yet. Lucid is, is like, come to my screen what? just very quickly. Like, Lucid... Guys, this is the lucid chart right now. Wow. This is the lucid chart. Again? This is the lucid chart. That's beautiful. That's uh, that's beautiful. I mean, this <laughs> is what this is what every trader dreams of. Like, show me a I want to buy down over here and I never selling. It is just absolutely crazy. It's it's a halted again, guys. 1596 halt to the upside uh, to the absolute moon. I have no. I am uh, lost for words here. This is this is incredible. I can't believe it halted this again. This is uh, this is incredible. Shout out to Michelle for the super chat. Thank you so much for that one. Um, high short interest stocks are getting squeezed. Not not just Unreal. EV. Yep, GME Beyond uh, got March 25 calls. GME, uh, congratulations. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Um, oh man, what a time. What a Friday. Life is good. Life is good, Unreal. man. Unreal. This is uh, this is wild though. Like why is. Why is this all happening right now? This is kind of crazy. Who cares? Um, this is awesome. This is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, can every day be like this? This would yes, be insane, man. guys. Oh, uh, my goodness. This is, uh, somebody's like, yeah, guys, I love the energy. Man, give me markets like this every day. Every day. And uh, then I'll have to drink like maybe 20 Spros a day to keep <laughs> up with these markets. This is absolutely crazy. We could make uh, that happen. Yeah, and uh, uh, member for 29 months, yes. uh, Madeline, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, exactly two years ago, January 27th, GME, short squeeze, short squeeze top. Um, oh, interesting. It is like the anniversary. Yeah, yeah, that's what and they the, do, yeah. And, the, and that's what the algos do. They're like, it's the anniversary, let's move the stock. <laughs> <laughs> they do the little dance algos, with each other. They're like, oh, it's the anniversary. Yeah. Come over, we'll have a, a sprawl, we'll make a nice cake, uh, do a little dance. Um, oh, I'll remember that for next year. Thank you for the heads up. I got to write that down in my calendar. Uh, uh, write something down over there. All right, let me take another little piece out here of AI. So now we are holding 15% of the position. I'm waiting for a break of days high on this 1775. Let's go ahead and put a little bit out here through that 1775 break. Let's hang out at 77s because I'm feeling whimsical. Um, there we go. So we'll have that hanging out. We'll see what this one does though. Meta just made a bit of a double top. Uh, so this might be an interesting area to get short. I don't know. Uh, but look at this, here's the meta chart. Looks like we double top off that 152.53. So this may be an interesting, or you know, I don't know, we kind of did that over here too. So this may be an oscillation rather than a reversal. So uh, I kind of reserve judgment a little bit on that. But um, all the rave right now are these EV stocks. So maybe we should get onto that, to be honest. Or, so Lucid is obviously closed. Rivian is absolutely flying to the Names high side. Are back. Rivian is moving. We're gonna we're about to break the half dollar here. 20, 2150. This one has been one big steady move the entire day. It's up 16 and a quarter and three wow, quarters. Brad, it's coming to your now. line, eh? It was basically flat, Luca, until around 1115. 1115 when that initial lucid uh, news hit. Look at this. Nice little inclination. I mean, way more steady than lucid, but giving you a lot of notional move here. 18 and a half. Breakout area, 21 and a half, hopefully. Uh, top, well, well, who knows where we'll top out. Uh, we reject the half dollar, at least for now. We bounce off, I want to say, 44s or so. So 
give, this may be an opportunity, you know, get in on the retracements. You know, I'm feeling whimsical, why not? We'll just punch in 10% here, just so we can say we can participate in this Rivian. If it goes against me, it really costs me no money. So uh, we'll see what that one does. Let's just participate uh, in this move. AI, I'm still waiting for that break of the, of the level, which is 72. I'm sitting at 77s, because I want that double seven for good luck. And otherwise, I have no other move on this because I've taken out a lot already out of this play. Uh, Rivian retracing a little bit now, coming back into that 2112. Where do we get long on Rivian? We got long 25s, so we're 50 uh, pennies out of the money with a 10% position. Basically, I can take this, um, you know, all the way to 18s, and it won't even put a dent in my day. Uh, because that'll be like a very, very small loss. But look, retracing quite aggressively here uh, to the whole dollar. So I'm gonna add a little bit of, of a position here. And then if it breaks, that I wanna say 21.95, I'll just be out of this. Cause you know, I gotta have rules that I follow. Wow, this one's really retracing south, Luca. And I might have to punch out here. 96 is coming in. If I see 95s coming in on the tape, I'm gonna be out of this one. Yeah, I just uh, wanna say Darwin, congratulations. Saying I'm up 97% on Lucid in my uh, Roth. Uh, congratulations on that one. The Roth too, uh, love so to See, guys, free. this is now open. Keep the 1620, 1630, guys. Right, Lucid, okay. Pratt is officially over your first line of 1610. It is now 1680 to the upside. Wow. 1680 up halt. One, two, five, Again? seven, eight, nine. Guys, 15 Unreal. seconds for something to halt. It's definitely going to halt. Uh, bids you are stacking up. Long? Oh my God. Oh my I get, God. I got long. You're going long? I'm long. I let's took a go. half position long. Okay, let's go. Best yeah. of luck, man. 1680. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, guys, that, wow. 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 Yeah, I'm okay. up huge on it. I can, um, I can afford to let's, do that. Let's yeah. look quickly uh, at BuzzFeed because this thing is now flushing to the downside. Looking pretty good. I'm going to cover a little bit more of this on the flush. Um, I actually have this. Uh, this is not going to fail on me. The green charts never fail, baby. Never fail. Uh, short, short, short. Cover, cover, cover. Stopped out. Short, short, short. Cover, 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 cover. Cover all the way down into the 20s. Uh, continue to fade to the downside. That would be great. I am basically taking my money as it fades. Uh, final target uh, will either be 20s or 3. We'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, man, this is awesome. Somebody said it best in the chat. You were like, small caps are selling off because everyone is selling everything to dump into Lucid. Uh, man, what a move, man. That is crazy crazy. This is wild. I have no idea what to say. Uh, super excited. I should have held my long from nine, from 968 or nine, one of mine. Well, Sean was one, I was the other. And, uh, and I sold it. I was like, oh yeah, great trade. That was awesome. And uh, if only I held, man, if only I held. Um, whoever uh, was like, oh, I have like 5,000 shares. I hope you're doing well. I know you're dancing. Send your videos. Tag us on, on social media. We'll repost it. Thank you for the super chat, Third Eye Brand. Patiently creating a short list, prepping for the pain after February 1st. Um, yeah, man, yeah. Do, uh, do what you do best. Um, just make sure you do things that make sense to you. I'll reiterate that over and over again. Uh, yeah, you, exactly. Uh, Spaducci for celebratory meal. Oh, this weekend, I'm going to be crushing Spaducci. I, I'll, I'll post it. <laughs> uh, follow me on social media, The Italian Trader. I will post lots of Spaducci uh, probably on Saturday uh, uh, going to a friend's birthday. So it's going to be a lot of fun for myself. Uh, Daryl Finch, uh, Flinch saying, I'm not selling. I, I'm, wait a sec. <laughs> wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Shreve, take over for two seconds. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So uh, I'm, I'm basically long 1681s here on Lucid. I've got a profit taker just hanging out below 17 and a half. If it gets taken, it gets taken. We'll see what this uh, position does. But uh, a bit of a risky position, but we'll get to it. Did you get to the super chat or no? Which Should one? I get to that one? Oh, I didn't see that one. Okay, no. so C, I don't know how to say your name. See me, see you. I guess that's what it is. See me. Oh, and he has it written both ways. I got it. I like that. Total account up 13% today. Watching you guys. I win big. You all deserve money. Thank you guys for your energy and knowledge. I appreciate you and appreciate the nice comments and always happy to be here for our awesome fans. And that's basically the only reason we're here is because of you guys. Otherwise, we just be trading at our desk on our own. So shout out to you guys. Love that you guys are making money. And if you guys can participate in this kind of crazy environment that we're in and make money <laughs> off it, I'm very happy for you guys. Uh, there we go, Luca. We get the print on AI. This one continues money, to go to the money, high side. Money, yes, let's boy. go. There we money, go. Money, this money. one printing to the high side is AI. We get that top wick. Are we still holding? I'm still holding, baby. That's the thing. I'm still holding 12.5% of this position. So let's go ahead and earmark another out here. Where are we at? Let's go into, uh, I want to say, 
87s. There we go. We're going to take another little piece here. I'm seeing 84s and 85s come in on the book. So we'll, we'll manage that one real quick. Um, where are we on the Lucid thing here? So, uh, let me just let me just yeah, say one thing it. very quickly. Diego, thank you for the super chat. Got a call from you guys when you informed about Lucid. Up 1,800%. Thank you so much. No problem. But that was all you, man. Congratulations. And I just want to show my screen just very quickly. Just very quickly. Everybody knows the words to this. There's no words on this clip right now. But everybody <laughs> knows this is for Lucid. <laughs> this is the jinx? This? Yeah, this is what? Oh, there's a story. Take it off. Take it all off. right, take it off. Well, I'm not in the position, and it's all for good all fun, good. man. But anyways, uh, BZFD is um, the BZFD going to the downside. Congratulations to all the longs that are making their money. Uh, life is good, man. Life is good. And I want to also say um, welcome to the Trader TV family. See me, see you. Uh, see me, see you. I see you. I Hopefully you see me. I am here right now. I am real. I am not an algo. And uh, yeah, man, life is, uh, life is interesting right now. Life is interesting. Uh, reminder to take profits. Yes, Darwin, exactly. You cannot make money. It is not money until it is realized. So if it is unrealized, it is not money. It is just numbers floating around. So, you know, trade your own book. Make sure you guys are doing the right thing. Uh, you know, uh, who knows where this thing tops out at. It's absolutely crazy. But guys, if it is bio chatter, even though there's a lot of shorts, you know, eventually, um, obviously, if, if, it, if it is a buyout, you know, where is the bio price? I mean, this thing was at $9. If somebody's like, yeah, I'll buy this for like $18, well, then it's just going to go to 18 and stop. But if the bio price is $13 and it's at 16 like this thing will just open at like, it'll be, it'll be crazy, right? So, yeah, I will remind you, pay yourself along the way as a day trader. Oh, that's what you want to do. And we get that fill again, baby. We got both fills on Lucid. Spin the money, man. Let's 1780 go. 1780 is going into another level. This is insane. Lucid. Had the resting wow. orders. I'm like, why am I taking a chance? Wow. Have the resting orders waiting there. Wow. We get out at 1710, wow. then I got, get at 1750. Into the moon. It, it's headed to the moon, baby. Where are we? 1780. It's going to halt again. Here it comes. The halt's going to come, baby, unless we flush to the downside. Everybody and their mother buying this stock at the moment. We're halted again. 1780 is the level. What a move. Daryl Finch saying, Do, let's go. Don't sell. I got it, man. It's a prop floor. I got to take profits. You know, if I was letting this ride at home, it'd be a different thing. But, you know, you got to do risk management here. We take that 1680 break at the halt. We get some out 1720, another out at, sorry, 1715. Then again, out at, um, where was that? 1750. So nice little outs there. Big boy moves on the way up. I know paper handing, but guys, you know, I, I'm locking in big boy profits here. I'm up huge on the day. Let's just put it that way. Um, there we go. We get another out on AI, Luca. What a big boy move. Where are we here? 17.87. Okay, so how much do we have left? We have 15% of the position left. Let's go and put Darryl. some at 95s here. If we can get some at 95s, there we go. So we got that one set up all for us. Uh, we don't need to do anything. Guys, Meta just created a new high of day. 152.65. <laughs> Everything's high. What? Um, Dar Darwin, Darwin is there? like, Sharif can now, was it Darwin? Yeah, Sharif can now buy all the eggs that he needs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, price is, price is high, we but that's no about problem. That. We were talking about that. I got to get my eggs from Costco. They're so expensive nowadays. But hey, this is it. Let's Neil in the chat saying, this is insane because it absolutely is. All right, guys, Let's I'm seeing a $17 go. top. I'm not sure if what others are seeing, but I'm see seeing a $17 this top This is here. insane, guys. Congratulations yeah. to everybody in the longs right now. Congratulations. Um, you know, I will remind you, it is not real until you pay yourself. Yeah, pay yourself. It is yourself. not real until you pay yourself. Um, so I will repeat that over and over again. Um, you know, everybody, just, just a friendly reminder. Trade your own book. Do whatever you want. But I will remind you, it is not real until you pay yourself. This is wild, man. I don't know what to think. But you can't go broke. Uh, you can't go broke paying yourself, man. Hopefully, you guys like look at this chart. Look at this chart. And, and Trading View allows unreal. me to do this, which is kind of cool. This is the one thing that I do like about Trading View. <laughs> this is a straight line to the upside, guys. Like this is like one of my dreams have come true, and I'm not even in the trade. But when I do, 80. like, oh yeah, it's gonna go from here to here, uh, here, and then it's gonna go all the way up. Like it literally went all the way up. That's that's insane. Ah, uh, and to think I had the long from the bottom. Ah. Uh, yeah, man, I got, uh, where did I go? I got long initially 11s. Are I you mean, still in the long? No. Uh, I, no I see, that's the I thing as a day trader. This is like, this is wild, man. No, man. I, this I is wild. Like, 
The traders in the back are just like, let's Everybody go. I don't know if you guys can see. Hyper, yeah. The boys in the back are like, let's go. Hopefully you guys are long and strong. <laughs> Woo uh, yeah, I'm seeing smiles across the board. Man, this is crazy. I, I'm not trading this. This is now, I, I missed the opportunity. I'm not getting long here. If it goes to 25, it, you know, Guys, it goes without me. That's for sure. I see but, the top uh, here at 1780. I'm happy. I'm happy for everyone. 1780 is the top. So people are asking in the chat because people don't know what the top is. I'm seeing 1780 top. We're actually halted at 1780. So it's it's scheduled or uh, at least for the moment to open at the area where it uh, where it uh, closed off. So quickly back. I want to get back to AI because we just popped up to 92s here on AI. I'm sitting at 95s to get filled. This is going to be. This is already a really huge position. This was the worst position that I had on the day, but saving grace comes in. All right, Dr. Crusher saying Rivian short. We got into an exploratory Rivian long here and we got out for like a t super tiny little L. Sean is short. Sean is short, Rivian 2105. So that one heading to the south side quite aggressively. 2065 now, this one moving very aggressively to the downside through that 50 period on the one minute chart, but finding a bit of a balance here. Um, this is obviously, in case you're wondering, this is moving in sympathy with Lucid. Uh, Lucid is uh, it's got a buyout catalyst essentially, and all these other ones uh, in the same industry are moving as a result. Fisker is moving, uh, Neo's moving, uh, Rivian's moving. Is XPEV moving? Let me have a look at XPEV here real quick. Yeah, XPEV is moving, retracing now off that 1131 high, but all these other EV plays, are moving with it as well. Let's have a look quickly here at the time for opening. It looks, we should be opening soon on Lucid within the next minute or so. If not, it's gonna be a 10 minute halt. We'll have to wait and see, but this is how many halts now, Luca, let's count them. Uh, here we go. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're in the eighth currently right now. Wow. And they're all up halts, eight straight, up halts, we're up now 97.78% to the high side. Do we get a flush here? Does anybody want to sell this stock? I mean, I don't even know what the buyout price is. We don't even know what to gauge it on. Usually when no you trade idea. buyouts, you have a buyout price, a price per share, this and that, yada, yada, yada. Okay, now I'm seeing, here, careful here, guys. I'm seeing the top change on Lucid. I'm seeing 1511 now show up on my top. Oh. 1780 is where we're halted. So we're scheduled to go more than $2, $2.60 to the downside. This could be bad. This could be bad. And guys, this is why you have to pay yourself. Somebody was like, Luca, just buy some. I go, no, 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 absolutely <laughs> not. Uh, the long was at 10 and then on the up move. But you like, this is like, if we open at 15, because where's the bio price, right? That's the thing. Nobody knows right now what's going on with the bio price. I'm not shorting this. And uh, yeah, r huge rug. Well, F1 fan, the thing is, is that um, rugs are like, normally I wouldn't say rug. I would just say like, is there going to be like a bio price? Uh, it's yeah, going to be man, a 10 minute is, halt, guys. 10 minute halt? Yeah. It's, we're this past is, five uh, minutes oh now. Oh my God. This yeah. is like, this is, I, I, <laughs> I know, I'm at a loss for words too, Luca. I love it. And that, that's a good thing to be. Guys, wow. AI is absolutely wow. flying to the high side. Maybe Here comes $18 Rivian now. now. Short, we just took some out at FSR. 95s, I believe, yeah, where we're sitting Rivian, at 95s. Rivian. 18 is about to break. I'm still holding some of this position. This has been an absolutely monster trade for me after being the, one of the worst. Oh, 18 is getting tested. Here comes the size on 18. Can it get taken out? Let's see if it get eaten up. I'm seeing, I'm seeing decent size here at 18s, but you know a lot of it could be iceberg, especially with the rejection we're getting here. There we go. We reject off at least for the moment. I'm gonna wait through the break of 18s. I don't want to have a resting order on this one. I want it to go, and uh, you know there's only like five minutes left on the show here, but I'm probably gonna let this ride after we break through 18s. We're flying to the high side on a AI here. Do we have any levels? I gotta look on my daily to see if there's any levels we need to be worried about. We haven't been at this level, guys, since August. Okay, and uh, let's maximize this chart and bring it in. Wow, we're flying to the high side on AI. Here we go, let's zoom in a little bit and figure out where the resistance could be, okay? So I see a clear area of resistance on the 31st of August, and that's gonna be 1888. That's 80 pennies from where we're currently at here. So I'm gonna put that 1888 
horizontal trend line to remind myself that, that I'm not can't hold it longer than that. We're at 1816 now. Guys, I'm long this 1709. This has been an absolute monster trade for me. This is my second trade on it on the day. Um, Stonkonia says, where is Sharif Gobo getting the, the $15 number from? I have a tap, brother. Tap means the theoretical auction price. It tells us basically based upon the uh, balance of the buyers and sellers at that particular moment where the stock is scheduled to open up. So you have to have a particular function in your trading platform in order to be able to see that. I'm seeing that here and it's $15 at the moment. That's $2.80 lower than where uh, Lucid, let me get the Lucid chart. So technically at the moment, Lucid will open up right here, this $15 area right here. And this is gonna be the first of the down halts. So there's been eight halts to the high side. This one is the first 10 minute halt. Let's see if we get to 10 minutes or it's gonna be more. Let me see how many minutes we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're in the ninth minute right now. So I think we have either another two minutes or another minute and a half on this one. AI though is completely taking off here. Now it's an 18, 18 high. I'm loving this trade uh, and I'm gonna hold for this one, Luca. Yeah, guys, um, I this is wild, man. This is wild. Uh, Rivian, nice flush off the top there. I think Sean said that he was short Rivian. So, you know, if you think the, the fade is, is now in play, uh, you know, you could look at Lucid or you could look at some of the other names that are moving around. I know Michelle in the chat was calling out GME, uh, GME and something else, uh, looking at something. Yeah, man, this is, uh, this is interesting. Um, just a heads up, I am taking, uh, uh, you know, some off uh, uh, BZFD over here. It's back over the 50 period. Meta high I'm not day. playing these games. I'm holding a little bit of the position, but I'm just like cover, 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 cover some over here. And now I either get stopped out on the rest or I, uh, or it goes down to my target. So that one is now on autopilot, not going to pull it up anymore. We have, oh, wow, a minute left. A minute I left. I did Today not feel was, that, dude. Wow. What, I, I wow. can't wait till this Lucid opens. I need to know. I need wow. to find out what's going to happen here. Are we going to open at 15? Or, and if we do, do we just throw all the way back up? Are the buyers going to overwhelm? Are, like, what, are we going to start halting down here? Because that should be a halt. A 280 move, isn't that a halt? It's going to open. Like it'll open, open and then it'll exactly. open. Okay. Wherever so it opens, it, if it goes down the another 10%, it'll just hold. Okay, so I can't wait for this one. I think we Ten have another minute. To the Maybe to the it open. opens on the show. If not, I'm sure Neil and Sean, I'm, yeah, Neil and Sean are going to. Okay, here we go. Open. Here is a hold to the downside. 14. 14. This thing is like I a just small cap right here, now. It gets bought up, though. Uh, are we going to halt at this level? What's happening? Uh, yeah, we're going to halt at 75. It's going to be an up halt. Wow. Holy cow. No way. Wow. That is just absolutely, Go to Lucid. yeah, Go to Lucid. sorry. I'm watching on my other screen, that's why. This has been just cray cray. All right, seven, 76s, I hear on the ask, 75s. Uh, nope, no, we flushed down. Buying. Looks like we're gonna have a down halt. If we get one, here we go. This is this like a is small collapsing. cap now. This thing is like, okay, talk here about we tape go. teleportation. Yeah, I ain't touching. This is gonna halt 14, to the downside. 16, there we go. 63 is where it's gonna downside. halt, baby. Wow! Can we, can, is the party over? All the all the the sell wow. gets stock. Everybody's yelling back here. You feel the energy. You know exactly what's going on. Wow. What a day it's been. Here comes the halt. Go gray. Wow. Let's go gray. It goes gray. Now we're halted to the downside, guys. We're halted at 1464. I'll have that tap for you. I'm sure the guys to my right will have that tap for you. But we wow. are having ourselves a day, Luca. It, we're out of time, though. We're, we're, at, we're, we're out, out of time. time. Um, we're out of time. This is wild. What a day. What a Friday. Hopefully Woo! you guys are locking in those profits, making that money. This is crazy. Uh, Sean is pumped, man. Sean is pumped. We're short uh, Rivian. Short Rivian. Short Rivian. Rivian's falling. Okay, we're going to pass it on. We're past the time here. I'm Luca. This is Sharif. What a time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. Hit the like button. Thank you so much. Care, Enjoy guys. your weekend. Ciao. Hey guys, yeah, two o'clock quick recap for you. We'll get right back to it because what an afternoon developing here. We are positive across the board heading towards a positive week as well for all three of these. That's how things stand right now. Uh, all three U.S. markets back to the upside uh, this afternoon.